Welcome everybody to The War Room. This is the pre-game show for our September Officers Club Championships. We're gonna get you up to speed with everything you need to know before we go into the OCC in just under an hour. And let me tell you, we have a packed show. We are going to talk about the recently released patch. We're going to go through the bracket. We're gonna break down some decks. We've got a full, full 45 minutes for you here. And before we dive in, I would like to address the uh, the empty box in the room, uh, right right over here. Uh, that's where Darkness normally sits. We are actually going to see Darkness competing today. That means we are a man down. That means we have an extra second or two. So I, I figured why not go around and, and check in on everybody. Ollie, you're hanging out here. How uh, how you doing today on this lovely Saturday? Well, you know, Crystal, I'm always doing good whenever there's an OCC or an Open. So, you know, I'm doing fantastic Today is going to be uh, an interesting day. Like we have some of the classic decks mixed in with, you know, some crazy new stuff. I was I was testing one of them out while we were waiting here and I won two games. I I'm, I'm still not sure how, right? So, you know, clearly these players know something that that I don't. So, I'm always excited when we when we see a little bit of a shakeup uh, in the meta and, you know, that's largely due to the patch that we'll talk about in a second as well. Absolutely. So that that's one of the reasons we selected a certain spotlight deck that we're going to discuss a bit later is because as we were preparing for the show, Ollie was sitting here just staring at his screen going, I think I'm winning and I don't know why. So we're going to break it down. We're going to explain to you exactly how that deck works. Uh, we might not, we might not know ourselves, but we'll talk about it for sure. And hopefully we'll see it in action in just a little bit. Spooz, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. First time without a green screen today. So we have that one going. Um, also, the weather is finally getting a little bit colder in Germany. Um, fall has started, so pretty nice temperatures in the room since in Germany we don't have that many um, ACs in our house. So 
feeling pretty good and looking forward to today's day. Wonderful. Well, let's take a look at the bracket and see exactly who is competing here in our September OCC. So here you have the bracket. So as per usual, we have the top six finishers and then we have two qualifiers. And I think this might be one of the strongest groups we've ever had. We actually had the eighth and ninth place player qualify. So we've got uh, No and Five going up against Head. So No and finishing first in the season takes on one of our qualifiers. Uh, then we have uh, Cappuccino against Vinny. We have our uh, friend of the show, Darkness, taking on uh, Jin Lun, who was our second qualifier. Then we've got uh, a master meets the apprentice. I don't know if they're still at that point. It's been a little while, but we've got Jaken taking on Birdo, two buddies uh, going head to head there in the final quarter final matchup. We're going to be showing you Darkness versus Jin Loon as our first quarter final feature. We're going to have No One Against Head as that second featured quarter final. So you're going to see both those matchups coming up in just a little bit. Looking at this bracket, Spooz, let's start with you. Any uh, Anything specific stands out to you? Any matchups you're really looking forward to? Uh, anything that's caught your eye? I mean... J King versus Birdo is um, always an interesting story because they know each other, they're friends. Um, J King brought Birdo to the game, and we had some some tournaments where Birdo beat J King, and yeah, that's always a nice story when they both um, participate against each other, knowing so well, know how the other one plays, and yeah, that that's really a cool story to to see in this OCC again. Unfortunately, we're not going to see the match, but one of them we will definitely see in the, in the semifinals. Is, uh, is Jay King back from his world tour yet? Is he playing from home? Do we know? I think he is already, yeah. Yeah, got it. Thanks, Uzzel. This will be the first time in a minute that he'll be uh, he'll be back from the comfort of his own home and not some random internet cafe somewhere in Europe. So we'll uh, we'll definitely see the results of that matchup. Ollie, anything specific you're looking forward to uh, based on that bracket that we just saw? I'm looking forward to a, a Jay King no one five finals. Uh, that's Ooh. my prediction. Uh, I mean, like, they're on opposite sides of the bracket. Um, it's been a hot minute. I mean, looking at the decks, I feel like I feel like No. 5 really reinvented uh, a lot of his uh, deck lists for this tournament. And whenever he's done that, he's come in and, you know, had uh, tremendous runs, right? Like, back when he was pioneering the, the U.S. Poland Legion stuff, um, that, that was his era of, of dominance, right? So... Um, and, and then on the flip side, you have Jay King playing from home back to his uh, his comfort, um, you know, gotten some time to to chill out and think about cards again after traveling for a long time. That's going to be, for me, pretty huge. Um, of course, I'm also looking forward to seeing Darkness back in the competitive scene, kind of at the highest level. Um, you know, he kind of did a similar thing, right? He took a step back. He, he dedicated some more time to thinking about cards, um, tweaking his decks, uh, optimizing his strategy um, to kind of warm up for the world championship. Obviously, you know, that's when you get the motivation back for a lot of these competitive players. And it's going to be interesting to see how he does. Um, you know, it's it's been a hot minute since he played against these players in a tournament setting and you know you can you can practice and theory craft all you want but being here month after month there's no substitute for that so um yeah those are kind of the the, the main things that i'm excited for uh today but i mean like i'm i'm ready to make that bold prediction i think we're gonna see j king and we're gonna see no one five in the finals and you mentioned two things that I think were really interesting there, Ollie. And first off, you talked about Darkness, who, you know, we're getting closer to Worlds, decides to, to dust off cards and get back into that tournament scene, though he has been a part of watching most of these events and casting most of these events. But like you said, playing's a whole different beast, so we'll we'll see him competing a little bit later on. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up, you had mentioned Noen kind of reinventing uh, himself with the, the list that he brought today. I feel like almost every time we talk about Noen 5 coming to a tournament like this, we're talking about how he's reinventing himself, how he's bringing new lists, how he's getting creative and going back to that drawing board. Is that just, that's just the type of player that Noen is constantly innovating, constantly bringing something new and possibly kind of destabilizing his opponent by, by bringing an interesting mix? Um, he is. Uh, he definitely is. Uh, but I feel like I feel like most of what he's done over the past few months. I mean, even though we we always like the decks that he brings, um, they haven't been like that crazy different, right? Um, the, the 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 only thing that like 
stands out to me is no one kind of putting his foot down being like i think this deck here is badass and it it's not based on any other meta deck or you know just slight tweaks to something that everyone else is playing is when he brought that you know germany italy just value deck or, or, or even was that germany usa value deck right like all of a sudden he just brought a deck that was like i think this is gonna win i think i'm gonna just take all the good cards from draft and you know i'm just gonna outvalue everybody that comes uh, comes at me and you know that ended up working out really well for him i feel like this time around we have more of that um and i mean even in his like you know even in his brit air deck he's making changes and adding stuff and, and tweaking the core strategy of what that deck is supposed to accomplish because he probably thinks that's better and in in those situations a you can catch people off guard um, and B, Noam5 is one of those players that I feel like has one of the best eyes on when to push the pedal to the metal in any given game, right? He like, you're on turn three, you know, there's two cards on board and Noam5 all of a sudden goes, I have lethal in four turns and just goes bah, 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 and just wrecks everything, right? And you're just like, how in the world did you even think about that, right? So when he gets to play his game, when he gets to make those tweaks, um, I think he's one of the most dangerous players in cards. Absolutely. And that was something I was going to bring up. And maybe I'll, I'll ask Spooz about this. So I think Noen 5, just in the way he plays his decks, it's it's one of those things, as Ollie mentioned, kind of that vision, knows exactly when to commit. I find he's one of the most uh, confident players when he's in the right space to say, okay, I know this line. I know the direction to take. I'm just going to go after it. Uh, w would you say that's that's fairly accurate? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's always so hard to play against Snowen because, yeah, as you speak, um, he, he always knows in advance of four or five turns what he's going to do. And he also knows what you are going to do and and just adjusts his strategy against this. And suddenly you find yourself in an, in a situation where you don't want to be. And yeah, he's just overwhelming you. He knows how to play his decks perfectly. Also bringing decks that you don't usually see on ladder or that you don't play against very often. And that make, makes it even harder to adjust your strategy to that deck. And that... That is what is making it so hard to to play against no one. Absolutely, I would uh, I, I totally agree with that. He's one of those players, and and that's a lot of times in most of these games what separates you know those even those top tier players from really the ones who excel is just that ability to see more than one turn or two turns in advance, but really kind of plan out your whole matchup based on how the first few turns of a game have gone, what your opponent's bringing. That open deck list aspect is obviously uh, a big part of it as well to really be able to to kind of have that vision into the future. So. We've talked a little bit about some of the players and, and the brackets, but before we get into the decks, I do want to talk about the patch that dropped on September 7th, I think it was announced, um, because it is a, a huge change to what we've seen. The uh, super duper combo is no more. Uh, critical damage and supply shortage have both been changed. Um, Ollie, you want to give us any uh, any insight you may have into some of those changes? I mean, I think, I think, everybody, I think everybody felt it. Right, um, that combo was was stupidly powerful. Right, it was just uh, it was just crazy. You could chuck it into any deck, you know, uh, that that featured Britain, and it was just like, oh, did you develop a board over the past four turns? Nope, not anymore. Right, like I'm gonna lock it down and pin it. Um, it was that it was so cheap as well that you could just throw it out there if there was one or two threats on board. Um, you had four copies of each card in in your deck, right? Like, yes, it takes up eight deck slots in your uh, in your deck, eight card slots. But at the same time, both as individual cards and as a combo, they were so strong that you could just throw it at anything, right? Um, <clears throat> so I felt like, you know, I feel like I feel like the team recognized that <clears throat> that this wasn't necessarily the most healthy thing to have in the game. Um, credit as well to going out there, fixing it, changing it. Um, and now, you know, supply shortage has a uh, three credit cost and uh, still has, you know, get receives one damage at the start of the owner's turn, but critical damage has cha been changed. So it's no longer, you know, whenever that unit receives damage, then pin it. Instead, it's steal one damage to a unit. If it doesn't have any adjacent, adjacent units, deal two instead. I also think that 
being able to deal two damage for one credits is, you know, a cool thing. Um, this is early removal, something that Britain hasn't really had in a long time. So even though we've seen it drop off the face of the earth immediately following the patch, I think over time we're going to start seeing this or again. I'm thinking, for instance, you know, if you have um, United We Stand plus critical damage in like a Brit US ramp deck, you have a lot of answers to early aggression, right? So you're able to stave off into that late game um, until that ramp comes in. So I think there's definitely potentials for this card to really, you know, find a home in the future. I think supply shortage can still be a strong card. Uh, it's a little bit more niche on when you can chuck it out at three credits than at two, uh, but overall really exciting and interesting changes. And I like the fact that the, the Wrath Lightning was also kind of tweaked down a little bit um, in, in conjunction with this, because as we'll see today, you know, the removal of this super duper combo basically killed that credit denial deck that was, you know, everywhere and everyone was banning. But now we're just seeing the return of Bread Air. Everybody's just bringing Bread Air again. And I, I think one of the, the sticking points for Brit Air was the fact that Wrath Lightning had 5 HP. It was often really difficult to deal with um, when your opponent was playing them back to back and all of a sudden had 6 attack damage, 10 health on the board um, in fighter form that could really e easily kind of reach your HQ. It, it created a tough situation, but now that 10 HP is slightly lower at 8 HP between the two of them. And um, I think, you know, in conjunction, these were good changes. Awesome. Uh, Spooz, anything specific that caught your eye in the patch? Obviously, we mentioned uh, critical damage and supply shortage. Anything else that you think is going to, uh, you know, kind of change the the meta that we're expecting to see today? Um, having, you know, seen the deck list, seen what's going to come, anything specific you, that caught your eye thinking that, oh, this is unexpected, but based on the change or based on this patch, I'm, I'm not entirely surprised. Um, I mean, Ollie covered it basically... Um... Like like everything about around the patch, but yeah, we, we see some cards that got changed, like the 95th um, rifle regiment from from Soviets, that was a 7-5 before, is a 2-2 now, deal one damage to an enemy unit or to a, to a unit, not just enemy, and your HQ. So this card perfectly fits into self damage, and we see it in some of the self Soviet self damage decks we are seeing today. So overall, I think the patch was was good. Um, I saw that a lot of cards were changed that were requested by the community, like suggest we have a Discord suggestion channel where players can suggest changes to cards. And I think a lot of, or some of these changes are just in, if, affected by, by those um, suggestions. Overall, I think that pay, the pets maybe came a little bit too late, maybe one month too late. A lot of players were really annoyed about this combo. Um, and then probably um, a little bit, yeah, not too happy about the how what, what cards got changed. That I think not the, too many cards that got changed have an impact or not too many changes. I'm really understanding why they were made. But overall, I'm really happy that the, the Super Duper Dump combo is gone. And this is what everything that counts today. And as we see today, it just brings a lot of decks back that have been just completely outwiped just by this combo being around. And yeah, this is all that matters. And yeah, that's all I have to say to that. Excellent. So, oh, Oli, has Oli. One addition. I have, I have one, one other thing that I want to want to highlight in the in the in the patches, right? So the the P40B tomahawk tomahawk was changed. It used to be infantry units you deploy get plus one plus one. Now it's infantry units you deploy or add gets plus one plus one. When we've gone closer to the world championship historically, you know what has happened? You know what people have started playing? Soviet tokens, right? I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but you know, like that's something that comes out whenever we move closer to the world championship. And if people remember the the 2020 world championship, you had you had soviet tokens pretty much like running rampant across even the top four right so uh, you know there there are subtle tweaks being made there i think we can never underestimate how this plays into the build-up for the world championship so i just wanted to throw that one out there because i think that's a, an interesting one i think it's also an interesting one for newer players that are maybe playing token decks um or or you know spamming out the the russian infantry you know there's a there's a pretty popular deck, you know, between the ranks of like 10 and 5 or 14 and 10 um, 
that is basically like utilizing all the zero uh, zero cost infantry units to just take the front line really quickly and dropping the USAs and and um, other kind of buffs on him from the US um, side. I think I think we could see more mass deployment token esque decks in the future as that evolves as well. I love the build, big, bold predictions today, Ollie. You came right out and called the finals. You're saying, hey, we're going to see this leading to the World Championships. I, I I, believe it. You know, you've got something like the Tomahawk that's going to help support these these cards, but you're also taking away kind of one of those control tools. So we're going to have to wait and see how that all sort of settles in and, and how those those adjustments are made. But w without continuing to delay, let's, let's dive into the deck list that we have here because we picked out a few... Uh, a few lists just to highlight a lot of what we're seeing. And uh, I mean, Ollie talked about this before, the return of Brit Air. I believe seven of the eight players are bringing Brit Air. Uh, we grab Darknesses to talk a little bit about because it's one of the most standard. So Spooz, why don't you kind of walk us through what Darkness is bringing here? Yeah, sure. Um, looking at Darkness Brit Air list here, um, yeah, we already mentioned it since supply shortage and the credit, uh, the change to credit, um, the change to supply shortage. And since this is out of the game, players no longer have to decide whether to play the Credit Denial deck or the Brit Air list. And now, where this, this combo is gone, Brit Air is back on the agenda. And yeah, we've seen it a lot of times before. Um, a deck that is really, really aggressive, like you have a lot of one drop airplanes there, the Swordfish, the Gladiators. And then you have a really strong card, the Close Air Support, with that gives. Um, a British air unit and adjacent unit plus one plus one so very very strong early on when you have the right combo and hard to deal with your opponent like even if you play a, I think last week in the world championship qualifiers I played against the player that played Germany Italy control a deck that is completely designed to destroy bird air he had sudden strikes flam panzer sky barons all that stuff that is really good against this and I could still manage to win. And this just shows how strong this deck is. And I did not even have the perfect starting hand, uh, just a mediocre starting hand. But you have so much draw with the convoys, land lease in it. You have finest hour, even if your opponent is having the board. You can just play a rough lightning, blitz it out and deal five damage, even if he's having a guard. And that's what makes this deck so strong. And I think we will see a lot of Brit Air bans today. Because, yeah, I think at the moment it is still the strongest deck in the game. And yeah, we're seeing Ollie, you're, you're sitting here nodding along as well. So you're expecting the bands to come through and be principally Brit Air as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this is one of the decks that people just don't want to play against. Um, you know, with the, you know, Spooz was able to pull out the win, even if he didn't have the perfect starting hand. If you do have the perfect starting hand, like, you are screwed, right? Like, there's no other way to, to, to say it. You know, if if there's a if there are fiats coming out, there's uh, swordfish is coming out. The the closer support is coming out on turn, you know, three onto or four onto two or three units. How how are you expected to deal with that if you don't have like a full suite of of sudden strikes of the flampancers of of anything else? It's just very very difficult. Um, I think. You know, even if you think about Soviet self damage or, or any of the more jagro aggressive decks that are in the tournament, they also get you know destroyed by this because if all of a sudden you have like your jagro, you're th throwing out some 16th cav and you're throwing out um, uh, an Akita regiment or whatever, and there's a, a swordfish on board. I mean, it's just going to trade for free, right? The, the swordfish has three HP as well, so not even the Akita proc is going to help you. You need two or more units to deal with that single bomber, and even then if you manage to deal with it that'll slow you down by four or six damage to the hq within a couple of turns and then your burn rate just isn't fast enough so i feel like you know this is a, is a very strong deck it's been around since pretty much the inception of cards and and there's a reason for it so i i, I do think a lot of people are going to ban this and unless they're bringing something to specifically counter this 
Yeah, and I think I think you highlighted it really nicely there, Ollie, talking about just the the amount of value that a lot of the um, a lot of the Brit Air units get. You've got to trade multiple different bodies into it to remove it, and that's just less damage, less burn you're put into uh, your opponent's face. So it, it definitely can uh, be challenging for Jagro. And then you you also mentioned Soviet self damage, and that's actually the next deck we're going to talk about. So why don't you kind of run us through uh, the list that Birdo is bringing here? Um, as he's got some uh, some Soviet self damage, which has been fairly popular across the the board. There's quite a few of these uh, kind of popping out uh, on the uh, on the the show today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Soviet self damage. I feel like I feel like most people pretty much understand and know this deck. Uh, at least if you've watched tournaments over the past couple of months, I think this is a very interesting deck. It's not too dominant, right? So it. it it's it's fun in a way right like even if you're playing against it you sometimes get into situations where you're like oh he just took himself from 20 hp to four in like eight turns and now i just have to find that blitz unit to end the game so i i feel like this is a, a deck that's in a pretty good spot um it obviously revolves around those 456th rifle regiments that get plus one plus one every time your uh, hq takes damage um it's also got that the 34th guards uh, which get, get minus two deployment cost every time that they're in your hand and your hq takes damage that you inflict on yourself now with the added tool of the 95th rifle regiment you now have you know the winter warfare the bloody sickle um you have the yak 7 you got the 95th rifle regiment all of these are able to deal um, the the SU as well. Um, all of these are able to deal damage to your own HQ. So so dropping the cost of those uh, big juggernaut units is going to be even easier. And I'm excited to see if you know this uh, change to the 95th rifles um, had such an impact that makes this a little bit more overpowered or overpowering. Um, but you know I don't necessarily think so. Then, of course, you got the Sunrise Division. Um, those, you know, become pretty insane once you're uh, below 10 HP. You got the 33rd Recons and the Scouting Parties. Those are your draw tools. And I I really like that. It's a cool combo to bring from the Japan side. Um, being like, yeah, I'm just going to bring, you know, six 33rd Recons. And then I'm going to ping all of them and draw half my deck. Um, so, overall, I think it's a cool deck. Um, I think it's it's relatively cheap as well to build, so so this can be built by players that are maybe earlier on in their um, in their journey. As you can see there, I think there's what, it's just the Red Banner, the Yak-7, the First Rifles, uh, Naval Brigade, Great Patriotic War. These are your elites um, in that deck, Sukhov and Engineering Battalion as well, but none of these are really extremely needed um for that deck to be you know successful overall so overall i think cool deck um gonna be interesting to see how it fares in today's tournament but you don't want to play this deck up against brit air um you would just get smashed what with the long range units um from from brit air hitting your hq and you know accelerating that burn <laughs> over into lethal territory for yourself so Spooz, do you think this is part of again those those the patch changes, for example? So 95th made this deck a little bit better. Um, the the removal of the super duper combo made this deck a little bit better. But then Brit Air coming back, being a little bit more prevalent, now makes that deck a little bit worse. Is that just kind of that rock paper scissors that sort of happens as you start to introduce uh, changes through patches to to some of the uh, the cards in this uh, in this lineup? Uh, yeah, in a way. Um, but as you mentioned, yeah, Brit Air or the Super Duper Combo, both are really <laughs> not the matchup you're looking for with this deck. So it doesn't really make a change for, for players what to decide what to ban. Um, but I find interesting that the Bird was bringing list here without Shinodo, without Ura, without Counter Offensive. We, we saw in the past that the players just submitted these, these cards to sneak out special other situations like to play around the super duper combo, you usually had the Shinoto counter offensive. This is now no longer needed, so Birdo just reverted to that. What I would I would have liked to see is maybe an, an Ura, because we saw in last OCC or was it card cards open where an Ura would be really, really have been really useful and really helpful to to close out the game. I've seen some list of some players who have Ura in it, one copy. It's it's just such a good thing. Even if you don't have an and your opponent knows you have it and maybe has to make other decisions whether he knows you don't have it. And that's what I really like about having one Ura copy maybe, but I'm pretty sure Birdo 
has a match strategy here, has an idea how to play the stack, and definitely maybe being successful with it, but against Shaking could be hard. <laughs> But yeah, overall a cool deck. Um, I think as long as this deck is around, it's also hard to bring back tokens. So maybe if you want to have a world championship where tokens are prominent, first of all, this deck has to leave first of all before tokens come back. But maybe just one player has to try it out and see how it's just dominating and suddenly everyone is playing it. Or the meta shifts to counter it and that can happen as well. So yeah. I, I definitely think it takes one player to just have the, the guts to come and say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna do this, let's go. And, uh, and speaking of players who, who often bring some, some fun list, we got Vinny's Alpine list up next. Um, Spooz, why don't you walk us through this? Because we don't, we don't see Alpine all the time, but knowing Vinny, uh, he's, got, he's definitely got a plan with this one as well. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm pretty surprised that we see, I think we see two, three players bringing Alpine today. Um, and I'm actually really surprised by this because I have a feeling Alpine is not in the greatest spot at the moment. Sure, there's this new 6k guard, 7th Alpini, which can be really, really strong. But I think I, I find it stronger in Soviet Italy control, a list that also J King is bringing today. Um, but Vinny deciding to go the more aggressive line here with all these um, one and two drop Alpine units. When the snowball begins and when you find the correct start, um, it can be really strong. You can bring out or burst out some really big units early in the game and overwhelm your opponent. But yeah, against, yeah, Brit Air is, is with this, with Alpine in an auto ban, I guess, because you really don't want to face that one. But also, I think control decks are really hard to beat with Alpine at the moment. Um, maybe I'm wrong, um, but I, whenever I faced Alpine in ladder these days, I'm just completely crushing them with whatever deck I'm playing. But maybe it's just that the players are not that experienced like our OCC experts here today, and they know better how to pilot Alpine. Um, but yeah, looking forward to the Alpine matches, and I'm, I'm taking being wrong here and seeing Alpine is in a good spot at the moment, but I'm not too optimistic. Now, Ollie, when, when Spooz was talking about being surprised that Alpine is here and, and two or three times over, you uh, you seem to be agreeing with him. Any thoughts on what you know has, has encouraged Alpine to, to come back here at this specific event? I have no clue. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the main thing that I can think of is like, you know, there was some, some joint mass psychosis that happened and everybody just woke up one morning going like alpine is good again right because i i feel like there is nothing that really changed um that that should have made it happen where like like spooze talks about like that should be the preferred deck to play over like using the seventh alpini regiment in another deck um that just has more value attached to it um at the same time, I am very much open to being proven wrong. Um, I am not as good of a player as, as these players that are bringing this deck. So, you know, they, they probably know something that I don't, but I, I can I can not think of a, a single reason for, for why Alpine just all of a sudden shows up in like three deck lists in the OCC, you know. I, did they all call each other and be like, yo, let's bring Alpine, you know, we'll troll him. They're, they're going to be like, what? What's going on? I don't know. Um, but it's it's here, right? Like, it's going to be played. It, it, it might win. It might lose. I have no clue. Um, much like Spooz talks about, right? It almost doesn't matter what deck I am playing. I feel like I always beat Alpine. I feel like it's just a little bit too slow. I feel like it's just, you know... Um, I know what's happening. I know that they're gonna have to spend a bunch of their credits developing the board in the early turns, and that allows me to look for answers. Um, it doesn't rush me into making any sort of mistake or over committing to one strategy over another. Um, so I, I'm at a loss for words when it comes to this. And I mean, again, like everyone that's bringing Alpine, they're gonna ban Brit Air because you don't wanna play, play against Brit Air because those bombers are just going to pick off your alpine units and you're only going to be getting plus one plus one or plus two plus two on your units and that's not going to be enough power to to give them the, the staying power to march across the field and start delivering damage to the hq so who knows man um uh, but i'm excited i like alpine right i always had a lot of fun playing alpine it was it was one of my kind of first post commandos romances right um so <laughs> 
you know, I'm I'm looking forward to it. If 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 it do 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 well today, you know, you betcha, I'm copying that deck uh, code and I'm playing some Alpine today. Well, I, I am excited to see how Alpine plays out. I do tend to agree that with things like Brit Air hanging around, it might end up being a touch slow. Um, but but speaking of things we're not entirely sure about, let's bring up No. 5's U.S. Soviet deck. Uh, because, Ollie, you were, you were playing this and it was winning. Don't get me wrong. It was winning, but you were not entirely sure how. I... I still do not understand how I won uh, two games, one of which was against Brit Air that had like a great start, right? And for some reason, somehow, I was able to just run them out of steam, right? You normally don't run Brit Air out of steam. You just don't. Um, you know, I ended up having like two HP left on my HQ when I started, you know, healing back up with the Aspiring Research, getting Britain there, um, you know, drawing a card, healing myself for four. I, I had two Manhattan projects all of a sudden. And I feel like that's probably the big win condition of this is just dropping a bunch of nukes, right? And I mean, that's that's a crazy way to play the game because it costs so much to develop those uh those manhattan projects it costs so much to deploy them but there is an insane amount of ramp in here there's four war machines um you got three in hour of needs you got three war bonds all of these are are your ramp um the quartermasters are there they're your only draw Right, like they're they're your they're your main draw. You you got sure you got mobilizations in there, but like mobilizations they come in later. But if you if you go first with this deck and you start bombarding out your cards, you know it's gonna get be hard to refill your hand. So you gotta get those quartermasters out um, at some point. But then you look on the the Soviet side, and it's like I'm bringing three scorched earths, right? So clearly a portion of this deck is meant to slow down their opponent, right? Like once they deploy those early units, they're gonna slow down by, by putting all the operation costs onto four. It has Partisans, right? Which is Bounce. And it has the Brianski Regulars to give you slightly, you know, a little bit of guards. What I noticed was that my hand, a lot of the times consisted of Naval Bombardments, and partisans so i was able to throw a bunch of stuff back into hand and slow things down for a little bit if they made it into the front line the p47 d25 re which is my favorite thing to, to <laughs> cast you know because it's like oh he's dropping the p47 d25 re right um but that eliminates a unit in the front line so to my surprise this deck was extremely good at dealing with stuff and then once you've ramped up all the way you know, it, even the even the fifth rangers, right? The fifth rangers, they give you an option to put four four with zero operation cost and a blitz, or an eight eight with four operation cost and blitz, right? Let's say there's a four six tank in the front line. Well, for eight credits, you're able to get rid of it. You know, it's 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 actually surprising the amount of control that is buried in this deck. And then you just go, hey, I have 20 credits. I'm going to mass deployment. I have like a B-17F and a B-17 and a Mustang and whatnot. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm packing 20 damage on board and you're dead next turn, right? I, I still don't understand exactly how this deck plays. I really, really hope we get to see this deck being played by No. 5 because it's going to be a lesson for all of us because uh, he, he's built something here that I've never seen before. In this combination, it, it, it for me doesn't fill any specific role, existing role of a deck um, in the in the game, and I'm excited to see what happens. Well, we're going to hopefully, fingers crossed, see this deck very, very shortly as our first uh, quarterfinal spotlight match is going to be no one five versus head so uh thank you all for tuning in to the uh pre-show here to the war room we have got september's occ coming up in just a few moments stay tuned as we break down all the action for you right here don't go anywhere we'll see you in a minute
Welcome everybody to the Cards September Officer Club Championship. I am your host, Christo. I am joined by the one and only Ollie. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in this world. Ollie, how you doing today? Doing awesome. Uh, can't wait for today's matches. I think, you know, interesting decks. Um, the only really recurring deck that we're seeing is Britain Air. Um, I said last tournament, I said, I miss it. I haven't seen it in a while. I miss it. And people, you know, almost took my head off. They were like, no, Ollie, <laughs> we don't want it back. And I'm just like, well, I mean, I'm looking forward to potentially seeing it today. Although I do think it's going to be banned out most of the time. But, you know, other than that, a lot of variations. Um, and I feel like when we get these varied deck lists in OCCs, we normally get a good show. So I'm um, looking forward to today. Uh, absolutely. Wonderful. So we did cover a lot of the decks. We covered the recently uh, announced patch as well on the pre-show. So you can check that out on the VOD if you missed it. But to your point, Ollie, we got some uh, we got some self-damage. We got Jagro. We have Alpine. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff going on today. So it's going to be a good mix. I think to your point, uh, it's going to come down to exactly what gets banned. But I, I do agree, Brit Air is probably going to eat quite a few of those. Um, let's let's take a look at the competitors. Why, why not? Why not break down exactly what we're going to see today? Uh, so in our first quarterfinal, our first uh, spotlight quarterfinal, we're going to have Noen uh, taking on Head. So Head, one of our qualifiers uh, this time around. So one to six automatically make it in. That seventh and eighth spot are fought for hard by uh by the next uh, of the top 64 players if i'm remembering correctly um and then what we have here is actually the eighth and ninth place player did make it in to this event so we might have uh possibly one of the uh strongest brackets we've had in a little while with uh one through six seven and as one through six eight and nine all playing against each other here yeah, I mean, those players should be in good form, having made it that far on uh, into the ladder. Um, we do know that there is a, quite a bit of competition around those top six spots, so definitely players that probably put in some work trying to get there, but just fell short of it. Um, successful in playing their way through the, the qualifiers and the now, you know, representing here. I still look at this bracket. I made this prediction in the pre-show. I think it's going to be J-King versus No-1-5 in the finals. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm sticking to it. I think it's going to happen and I'm really looking forward to it. I, I mean, how, how can you argue that? How can you argue with somebody like no one who's at the top of their game, uh, Jaking, who has been at the top of their game for quite some time, uh, going head to head, you know, you, you've got the return of darkness to the competitive scene. Darkness may, may make a, a solid showing and you never know. Somebody like Birdo might decide to go and upset Jaking, knowing very intricately how they play the game. Um, there's, there's a lot going on here today, so it's going to be an exciting uh, event. I know that uh, you're going to be doing double duty. You and Spooz are going to be casting all of the action. But uh, before we get there, why don't we run through the player profiles to get to know our competitors just a little bit better? Absolutely. I think we're going to be starting with... Uh, we're starting with... I thought we were starting with Darkness. No, we're going to start with the top of the ladder. We're going to start with No in 5 here. No stranger to the OCC is no in five. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Look at man. that win rate. Look at I that know. win rate. I know. It's absolutely insane. Um, you know, it's 14,400 matches and almost 11,000 wins. Uh, it's, it's pretty insane. And, uh, you know, his most played nation is the US and his favorite card there is the War Machine, both of which he is bringing today. So, um, you know, definitely finding some uh, success in his comfort zone as well. I, I think, you know, we've, we've talked about this time and time again. No one five is one of those players um, who I think has the best ability to put the pedal to the metal and end games out of pretty much anyone that I've seen play cards. Um, so... I'm always excited to to see him, and I think I think that's probably why his win rate is so high. Because seemingly it doesn't matter what he's playing against, he just goes, you know, some something just turns on in his head that just tells him like you can win in four turns, mm -hmm. knowing, and he's just like <laughs> okay, and just goes face, and you're just like oh, all right, all right, uh, not what I would have done, not what pretty much every, any other player would have done, but it works out for him, so yeah. I think we discussed this a bit on the pre-show as well, that no one has possibly the best vision 
for this game, to be able to see the lines of play, to be able to kind of predict the lines his opponent is going to take and then uh, come through with uh, with the victory. So some great vision there. It's going to be a treat to see no one in action. Hopefully that US Soviet deck we were talking about does not get banned. We get to see that in action played the way it's meant to be played. So uh, that'll be an exciting moment as well. Let's chat about no one's opponent in the first round we're uh we're going to see head here head has um has participated in a few of these sporadically i feel like we've seen him more and uh and more as time goes on any any insight on this player you no, know, uh, you know specific insights there um other than what you can just see on the tin here um he is clearly a very experienced player we have seen him a couple of times i believe we've seen him in a top 16 of opens before as well um so no stranger to the tournament scene hasn't really broken through into kind of the elite uh, upper echelons of comp uh, competition in cards um, there are a few, uh, a select few players that have been able to do that and have been there for, you know, uh, an extended period of time. You know, No One Five is one of those players, so Head definitely has his uh, has his job cut out for him here uh, today in this OCC. But again, you know, we we always reference this uh, a 55% win rate is going to be considered extremely good in in most games, especially over a sample size of 16,000 matches. Um, head has 63.28% win ratio, and that's just uh, absolutely fantastic. And I, I feel like all of these players, you know, they 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 just know something that the rest of us don't. Um, they're able to just win a, a large portion of their matches, and it, it oftentimes makes no sense. But I'm looking forward to seeing what Head can bring to the table here, and if he's going to challenge um, his fellow Asian competitor there for you know his spot in the semifinals. Imagine that. Imagine a 63% win rate being good enough for eighth place. Now that yeah. is that is wacky. Um, we we've got our, our next semifinal. So the uh, the first player, another player from the Chinese community. We've got uh, Cappuccino here. Nineteen thousand total matches played. Now these players are doubling down on cards, especially coming up to the World Championships. Probably getting a few extra games under their belt to to test out their uh, to test their metal. Like that's that's a huge amount of matches 66 percent win rate just absolutely crushing it for fourth on the ladder last season yeah i think cappuccino they have a, a huge potential to to be among the the top four um in the world championship if we're looking forward to that they've always um performed pretty well when they've uh, made it to the occ i feel like they've been around for a while they've made it into quite a few occs they tend to win their first matchup at least in the quarterfinals um but not a whole lot of first place finishes although i believe they have one uh one or two occs so that still puts them in elite company well let's figure out how they can do to here today um you know it's going to be an interesting thing to to see they're not bringing liberation so you know not getting to play their favorite card but uh definitely just overall exceptional player. So Cappuccino will be going head to head with another friend of the show. We got Vinny on the uh, the other end here. Um, again, no stranger popping into OCCs from time to time. We've seen uh, Vinny fairly regularly. Um, anything specific you're expecting from Vinny today? No, uh, we know that he's bringing an Alpine list that we're a little confused about, but uh, we're gonna see how those play out as well as these matchups takes place. You know, I I always like Vinny as a player. Um, I feel like he can uh, he can do a lot of damage um, if he if he is in the right mood, right? Um, I I feel like he hasn't necessarily realized all the success that he wanted to whenever he makes it into the OCCs, but he's never that far away. He also tends to bring kind of his own unique takes on decks um, and his own unique decks. And I guess today is, is no exception that with the fact that he is bringing Alpine. You know, in addition to that, he's bringing the Brit Air, um, which is very meta, and uh, a US Germany frontline deck, right? That's a deck that we haven't seen really represented in a, in a, in a while in the tournament scene. It was everywhere for a period. And it does have good matchups against a lot of the decks that are available uh, to the other competitors today. So I think Vinny has a pretty good shot in making a deep run here. Um, I still won't change my prediction. It's going to be Noam 5 and Jay King in the finals. But I think Vinny might well find himself playing in the third place match here today. 
Now, now somebody who may have a problem with that statement you just made is our next competitor that we're gonna be talking about here. Uh, our, our casting partner, Darkness, who, um, and we talked about this a bit on the pre-show as well, decides that, hey, the World Championships are coming up. I, I need to turn it on a little bit. And all of a sudden, Darkness shows up, 71% win rate, finishes second on the ladder. I mean, Darkness is one of those players that when he, uh, he feels like he needs to, can just kind of turn it on, can't he? Absolutely. I mean, you you look at the number of matches, 18,000 matches, a 71.35% win rate. Uh, that's absolutely insane. Um, there's a reason why we do like having him here to cast with us is because he is extremely knowledgeable about the game. Um, and I feel like one thing that he understands better than most is, you know, value in the game and, and how to get maximum value out of each card in his deck. Now, you know, that's kind of kind of it's kind of strange to me that we see him in this OCC not bringing a single control deck. Um, he's he's basically going to be bringing a, a an Alpine deck as well, like Vinny. Um, and maybe you know afterwards I can I can ask him you know what what were you thinking? Why Alpine? <laughs> and I'm really excited to learn the answer to that. We also bring Jagro and uh, Brittley Airlines, so. I, I mean, I feel like Darkness just found, hey, you know, there are some decks that are working. I am an ex excellent pilot. Um, I am able to extract a lot of value from these decks, and, and um, I don't have to reinvent the wheel um, to, to find success here. And I think that also comes with, like, when you're grinding the ladder and you're, you're playing the ladder as much as, we seeing, uh, as we're seeing Darkness do here, then I kind of expect you to bring more on meta decks rather than kind of unique decks. I feel like the unique decks are more players that are sh splitting their time between like proper prep and grinding the ladder. So it's going to be interesting to see if uh, if Darkness is able to make a triumphant return back mm -hmm. to the OCC, you know. We shall see. And I, I would be curious to that answer for the Alpine list, because if I know anything about Darkness, I know his love of analysis. Like there is no way he's bringing Alpine without there being some sort of material reason and data behind it. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to hearing the answer to that question. As we take a look at Darkness's opponent, Jin Lun, um, from my understanding, a little bit of a newcomer to the OCC scene, I believe participated last month, but that may have been their first appearance. Only 7,600 matches. Um, I, I can't believe I added only to that sentence, but, uh, you know, somebody who comparatively is a, a little bit lower down on that experienced totem pole. Yeah, I mean, Jin Lun is showing that his uh, previous uh, appearance in the OCC was not a fluke. You know, they're here to to fight for it. They're here to attempt to, to stay, right? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's able to 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 do today right um when you get these you say unknown quantities in the occ mm -hmm. that's always always fun and especially when you're going against such a strong field as we have today i mean like he's the he's the only person that hasn't made multiple occ appearances um you know he is he is making his multiple occ appearance now but i mean we're talking like three or more um out of today's field and I believe outside of Head, he's the only, you know, <clears throat> no, sorry, Head and Vinny and Jinlun are the three players here that haven't won an OCC, right? So, mm. I mean, going up against a strong field, this is his time to prove himself, um, especially if you want to make a name for yourself and kind of uh, start getting people to root for you for the upcoming World Championship. Uh, this is it for him. Uh, so a lot on the line. And he's clearly ha got the, the passion and the skills to to make repeat appearances here. Now he just needs to finish the deal and uh, make it all the way through. Right on. In our last matchup, we're going to have, uh, I, I mean, I don't even know if we need to talk about him at this point. We've got J-King. Uh, we've seen the uh, that Night Witches be plastered all over most of the OCCs for the better part of this year. Uh, so we're going to see J-King going in. Only finished third this season, though. I mean, J-King slacking normally at the top of the ladder here. 19,000 matches played, 70% win rate. Yep. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we need to even introduce Jaking. I feel like, I feel like um, Jaking has saved, um, you know, the graphics department so much work <laughs> throughout the years, because it's just like 
copy paste last month's graphic yep we don't have to change anything J King is still there um and he's he's even re managed to remain consistently uh in the occ while traveling the world um and and visiting different countries and i think that's just uh exceptional and speaks to the level of talent uh that is in this player and you know world championship coming closer around the corner as well he is the reigning world champion and i feel like he definitely has and wants to prove that you know that title win was not a fluke so i expect to see jaking um focused and ready for any anything that is thrown at him here today it's funny as we're talking about that mark theus is whispering in our ear um the producer of the show yes he has absolutely saved us a ton of time so um <laughs> moving on we got jaking going up against fellow canuck berto burrito um again less matches played but still a phenomenal win rate now Berto was brought into the game from J King, so or by J King. So we're gonna see a pretty good head-to-head -head matchup here of two uh, two buddies who know each other pretty darn well. Yep, Berto, exceptional player. Um, we've we've had him cast, we've had him play, we've seen him in opens, we've seen him in OCCs. Um, he's won a few of them, so. Just uh, excited to see what he's able to pull out here today. I think. Um, if I just if I look at the decks here real quick, um, you know, Berto is is bringing control. He's bringing Soviet self damage, and he's bringing uh, Britain, Italy, uh, air, and that's very similar to what. Oh, I was gonna say it's very similar to what Jake is bringing because normally they bring similar decks, but it mm -hmm. actually isn't, right? So it, I was gonna say it's not very similar to what Jake is bringing. Because um, J King is bringing back, you know, Soviet Italy control, something that you know he has been renowned. He he, he was known as the Soviet control player, right? So it's going to be interesting to see now that these guys are competing up against each other with very different lists. Um, if Berto is able to take home the victory there, and that's that's an interesting um, piece you bring up because we actually have three team ammo players in the bottom half of the bracket, right? We've got Berto, we've got Darkness, we've got J King. Uh, typically, players who would probably prepare together. Uh, bring similar deck lists because they've figured out what's efficient and what works. And now you're going to see some of them go head to head with likely an intricate knowledge of both the type of deck that they're bringing and the style their, their, their opponent plays as well. So I think these are going to be some really hard fought matches. And, uh, and I definitely think there's going to be some quality head to head here. So uh, I am excited, Ollie. I'm excited for you and uh, Spooz to, uh, to start calling this action. We're going to have uh, No and Five taken on head as your first featured quarterfinal. Over to you, Ollie. Yes, welcome, everybody. It is me, Ollie. And of course, I have uh, Spooz here. Spoo's uh, head versus no one five. Uh, this is sure to be an explosive one. Uh, let's not waste any time or mince any words. Let's jump into the deck lists and let's talk about all the weird stuff going on, at least in <laughs> no one five deck lists. Yeah. Yeah, no one five really is always there to surprise us in, in any tournament he's playing. Bringing a really cool German US, I would it's a mid-range ramp style deck. Um, I think we've already seen it in a, in a in a past OCC. I'm not sure when. Maybe beginning of the year. Um, yeah, very heavy tank heavy deck. Um, also having the alliance. I think the plan is just to stack all these big tanks and get so like he's having a lot of value in his deck, like Leopold, Schwalbe, all these good control units. A lot of tanks. The alliance ramp cards to max out your credit slot and then i think the plan is just to overwhelm your opponent with a big order of buff tanks and he's also having the grive in it to just reduce the operation cost and just deal even more damage and yeah very interesting deck it just looks more like a draft deck maybe i know yeah and but i think it's really successful um it's also having pencil four three times the fw four times so a lot of good late game cards and maybe struggling a little bit with, with big guards and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure he's having a concrete idea how to play with this deck and how to outplay their opponents. Yeah, he's got four dive bombings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely crazy. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, 
what, what we could call a, a little bit more of a traditional deck, um, but not necessarily as traditional as uh, one might expect. It's going to be mm -hmm. Brit Air with Italy Ally, but there are four Canone DA 47s there. Um, there's an ATS. There is there are 26 Engineer Regiment, and there's a Naval Support. Naval Support, just imagine. I don't know. Yeah, I think he just... Yeah, he just made Brit Air even more aggressive with this list. You have the early bombers, but you also have an artillery now four times. You have the close air support and have even more targets to just buff all these OP early units. Like the Fiat, the Fiat GR42 in itself is just so strong early on when you can just drop it on turn one, followed up by a swordfish close air support turn two you can attack with the with the fear have two big units on board and then with the canone additionally you just have even more potential i'm so excited to see and with the with the 26 and naval support um, yeah i think i'm not sure if he's serious or he's just um doing a little meme stuff here because he's only having one naval support but yeah i'm pretty sure he's having a plan with it also black watch in it which is a pretty good target for the naval support Drop yeah. the Black Watch, move it to the front line, neighbor support. This is 12 damage. Um, yeah, looking forward to see that deck, maybe. It, feel, it feels like No. 5 just added, like, more win conditions into yeah. Brit Air, right? And, like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how that plays out if he took, you know, too much stuff out. Because, you know, all the convoys are still there. The Lend Leases are still there. I feel like, you know, most of the pieces are still there. But then all of a sudden there's just like, uh, hey, I can have a 6-6 six, six Fury unit in your face. Um, I can I can drop a couple of 26 engineering regiments and and all of a sudden have like an enable support and, and have like a 6-6 six, six, uh, swordfish, you know. Yeah, really crazy. What I really find interesting that a lot of players are bringing ATS today. Um, we have not seen this card in forever. But suddenly a lot of players are bringing it and I find that quite interesting and we are going to see how this works out today. Yeah. And then finally here from Noen5, uh, a US Soviet deck that I still don't uh, understand fully how how it works. Um, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that Head will ban out the Brit Air deck here and that we get to see Noen5 play this deck because it, it seemingly is all about you know ramp um, control by bouncing units um, and and getting them basically thrown back into hand protecting up with a little bit of Bryansky regulars or slowing your opponent down with scorched earth and then just relying on the seaborne invasion and mass deployments to basically find all the units that you need to win a game um, so I'm, I'm extremely excited to to see how that one plays out yeah, yeah, really a deck that it's hard to find the win condition in, right? You look at it and think, oh, okay, ramp, 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 bounce, ramp, ramp, ramp. And yeah, then it's just mostly mass deployment and maybe what you get out of spy rings. Like if you find more US research, you can maybe have two, four, six nukes in a game and maybe win with that one. But also stuff like the urine project can maybe give you a little comeback. Um, yeah, looking forward. You played it pre-show a little bit and you yeah. won two games that you thought you would have never should have never win there oh. so it, sh it should not be too bad i guess but yeah it's it's yeah. looking weird i completely agree looking weird that's what i love <laughs> you know uh, it's looking weird from nova five let's see how it goes uh let's drop on over to head here um uh, see what he is bringing uh first deck here from head is uh, a fairly familiar site it's going to be the soviet japan self damage deck he is still rocking the type 97 uh shinhoto uh plus uh, counter offensive combo so has options to really deliver a ton of damage across the field Apart from that, also bringing the 95th Rifle Regiment that, that is now um, changed so that when you play it, you can deal one damage to an enemy unit and your HQ. So uh, a lot of options there for self-damage and uh, to potentially snowball things. Let's see if that makes a huge difference in the power of this uh, deck. Do you think it will, Spooz? Might be. Uh, also interesting that there is an Ura in it. So I mentioned it in the War, war Room. Um, some people still play this variant. I think it could be a little bit stronger with the Ura, but yeah, definitely going to see how it works out for Head. 
All right, and then uh, what will be a very familiar sight as we go through the deck list today, next deck up here from head is going to be the Britain Italy Air. Brit Air there, uh, no uh, uh, artillery units um, from the Italy side there, <laughs> um, but packing two of the Marinostrums. Marinostrum has now been changed as well, so now you have to be the attacking party to reap the benefit of the healing. And I think that's a really good change because it could often be extremely overpowering, especially when you're playing kind of an aggressive deck into a, a four, six fighter that had been buffed by Marinostrum and you needed to basically give the, the opponent, you know, plus 12 health just to yeah. trade three units into it. So it's going to be uh, interesting that we see that being brought here, um, seeing as though other players sometimes just opt to skip it all together and just go for the aggression um, uh, instead. So we'll see how that plays out for Head. Anything else that I'm missing in this one? Not really missing, but interesting that Head is playing two Sea Patrols. Um, some players sneak that card in just like an Air Blitz effect when you just need that two, five, six missing damage. You can just play Sea Patrol and just put out these missing damage. A really interesting addition. I'm not the biggest fan of it, um, but I've seen some interesting or some insane comebacks just with a Sea Patrol opponent having guards and fighters in the back line, just knowing no, nothing can happen and then suddenly a Sea Patrol comes in and you still lose the game. Interesting addition, but yeah, basically you covered it, everything about this deck. All right, and then finally, it's going to be a German Italy deck here for head. And this is just the, the really deep value Germany Italy deck that we have seen uh, a couple of times. You know, it's packing three of the Marinostrums and a King Tiger, a Leopold. Um, got some discard in there with the um, with the Annihilation. Um, well, the Wolf Pack um, also has the Admirable Hipper for some added control. Um, this one, I feel like it's just a, a constant powerhouse um, in terms of decks. If you if you're able to gain control of the, the the match with this deck, it's really hard. I feel like to beat back, but at the same time, I think this deck is gonna struggle against No One Five's U.S. Soviet deck, right? Yeah, it, absolutely. I, it, it might sound crazy, but you know it's just not fast enough, and the stuff that he puts out is just gonna be—it's just gonna be hard, right? So, we'll see see if that um, you know performs up to scratch or not. Yeah, it can go vice versa, I guess. It can go this direction, that direction. If he finds early discard, I think this US um, list from from known is only having the the quartermasters for draw and if you get a wolf pack in and your opponent not having quartermasters might struggle to find draw but on the other hand you don't have too many targets for the annihilation for example only the fifth rangers and when no one is not deploying them yeah you can't do anything um also with all these spirings there's just insane stuff that no one can do um yeah but overall i completely agree a really strong control deck with a lot of good value units like Ladeshima line for a day, Ma Nostrum on a big fighter, for example. It's just insanely how good this deck can out control an opponent when he's not having the correct deck against it. Also, two decisive defense. I think that's interesting. Normally, we only see one. Um, so, a lot of protection there. But let's see what decks get banned. Ooh. No! Ooh. I have bad news for you, Oli. You're not <laughs> going. So not going to see the Soviet, uh, the US Soviet uh, ramp deck there that you really wanted to see in action. I'm also surprised why why Head is banning this, but it might be just the reason that you just mentioned because this German Italy control deck might not be too good against this. Yeah, ah. I mean, I'm I'm so sad, Spooz. I am so sad. <laughs> like it's been, I've I've been I've been doing this casting thing for a long time, and I normally spend you know an hour or something in the morning trying out what i feel like are the most interesting decks and, and you know playing a couple of games playing a couple of training matches just see seeing you know what does the draw look like what am i potentially looking to mulligan and so on and it's been a long time since i just played a, a deck and whenever i looked at my hand i was just like what am i gonna do here and then somehow won right so knowing five i'm i'm banking on you to to win this <laughs> series and, and show me how this deck is played 
in the future. But I mean, you you do ban that one, but you give Noah five access to his Brit Air deck. Um, I think Brit Air is going to be exceptionally well suited to take on the Soviet self damage deck at least. And then it's going to be two German value lists and Noah five bringing slightly different value to the table than than Head Head kind of more in the traditional control side of things, whereas Noah five more in that kind of I'm going to take the most valuable cards that are efficient to play and can efficiently deal damage similar to if I were building this as a draft deck. So um, super exciting matchups actually available here um, and it's going to be interesting to see how they pan out. So if you're no in five, do you bring your Brit Air deck first? I mean, isn't that just standard because you feel like it's it's something that can beat basically any matchup or, or do you roll the dice and bring the, the German value matchup first? Yeah, I think it's a really tough decision because with the Brit Air, you're good against the Soviet self damage deck, um, but very weak to the German Italy control deck. Um, and I think he might go for the German US first because I think you have good matchups in, in both situations. And then you just decide, yeah, I don't know. What, what do you think? What would you bring first? I mean, maybe the Brit Air is probably the fastest deck. And when you can blitz it out, get a fast win. It is 1-0 and your opponent is, is behind, knowing that you have a deck left that is good in both matchups. I don't know. Tough decision. I feel like, to be honest, you know, the more I think about it, the more heads ban here makes sense, right? Um, I feel like I feel like he's probably going to just bring the, the, uh, the German Italy deck first because, you know, even though it has a slightly worse time, um, against the the uh, the Germany US deck there from No and Five, it still has a high win potential against both. Um, and I, you know, when you when you think about it in terms of the the Ledechimas, the Lions for a Day, the decisive defense, the Yacht Bomber, the Leopold, uh, the Annihilations, like there are a lot of tools for him to deal with whatever No and Five throws out there. And it kind of puts the onus on Noen Five to to lead the dance, and we know that he's good at that. But at the same time, he he really needs to plow through a lot of stuff to to properly get to the point where he's winning the game. So yeah, it's a it's a tough one. But I mean, I, I expect the Germany um, German versus German game one here. Um, I think Noen Five is probably gonna do what you mentioned, right? Um, bring that first and turns out I was wrong. He's gonna bring Brit Air. So let's get things oh. on the way here. We're gonna jump into game number one here of this September Officer Club Championship. It is No In 5 versus Head and it's gonna be Britain, Italy, Air versus Germany. Oh, look at that starting oh, hand from Head. my good. Wow! I mean, no one also found the swordfish, uh, close air support. But yeah, the other cards found this. N oh no, not another close air support. But so many answers from head there. Sudden strike, V1 flying bomb from the deep. Even that 500. What is it? 590, 589. Yeah. Um, might give no one some problems here. Once this is in the front line, you cannot really develop a board any longer. Despite having the rough lightning, maybe bounce it back. But yeah, it's not looking good for known with this with the, with the hands we see here. No, Ooh. and not not having nice. a turn two drop either, right? Um, and now a five five on the board for head. Man, this is this is already oh. looking extremely tough. And another close air support. This is not the hand you're looking for. Usually, when you play bird air, you don't find them when you need it, or you just find all of them and don't have a unit to play it on. Sometimes. This is just Brit Air stuff. Deciding to, to pin the 5-5 five five here, but how do you ever kill it? Head just keeping on with the perfect draws. Panzer 3H, um, absolutely great to drop here. A uh, tank that is able to go across the field, take out that Albacore if needed, and gives him a pick three. And so much good stuff here. What do you even pick? I think it could be Annihilation. Yeah. It is oh man! Annihilation. Oh another, man! That's another good removal for any unit that is there. He can remove every unit that no one is ever deploying because none of the units is costing more than five, 
and that is not good news for Noon, especially with this hand. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's going to have to choose here. Do I drop something like a Spitfire, or do I drop a Swordfish plus some close air supports and attack? Um, looks like he's going to... Wow. Not triple even... close air support and take out the tank. That is quite the investment there for no in five. Wow. But Red can just hit her. You can just hit her flying or bomb. flying bomb. You have so many options. Yep, probably flying bomb better than the hipper because you don't want to give him the deployment effect again and can still play the hipper on. On a unit that don't has any deployment effect, like the Spitfire, maybe. Yeah, there comes the Bond Doritos, but triple close air support being out of the game is pretty big handicap here for no one already. Is no one five just going? I'm gonna put all my eggs in the naval support basket. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rack up some engineering battalions, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some naval supports. I don't, I don't know. At least found a convoy. But from the deep being up, a guard, guarding Hats HQ, a 5-4 on the front line. This well, is not another looking great. Yeah, it, oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. He found the naval oh, support. <laughs> a decisive defense. But yeah, usually Hats deck, let's be honest, is just designed to counter known 5 stack. And yeah, also finding the perfect hand here is not what no one is ever making him able to to win this match another aye, Bologna aye, regiment aye. as well it's <laughs> like that's 18 health just guarding the hq if he if he so chooses um and of course also take the 989th infantry regiment and just blitz that out into the front line next turn root out so many options here for head and and this is what i was worried about for no and you know he there's a lot of stuff that he needs to fight through to to make this work and now you know he sees that head is floating two credits he knows that from the deep is there um you you would probably expect something of that nature being played i believe head didn't attack his hq no he couldn't because he had to um had to move it back into the front line because of the retreat but I mean, no one five accurately predicting the from the deep, just throwing a swordfish there, and now he does have the potential of dropping a, a 26th engineering battalion and and beefing up one of those uh, Spitfire, uh, the, those Raf lightnings, losing his Spitfire, and yeah, now finding, yeah, really it's... needed that earlier in the game. Like like now it's completely useless i guess not having blitz or anything also losing one health because at the moment head is just having more units on board uh rough really rough match here for for known i don't see how he's winning this so usually when you play bird air you get this early damage in set your opponent to 14 12 health and then with the finest hour you can blitz out one final push but at the moment i don't see this there's a bologna regiment guarding the hq a board full of big units and if head is finding a mar nostrum now i think it's even more over than it currently is double decisive defense also oh my god yeah double decisive defense he's still got the hipper so he's able to effectively just throw anything he doesn't like back into hand and deny a draw i guess the bright bright side for noah five here is the fact that he does have the convoy and the lend lease um so he is able to fairly effectively refill his hand no matter what yeah, but what can he find that brings him back into the game here? Yeah. I mean, it's known five, right? That's true. <laughs> if somebody can turn that game around, it's known. But in this situation, he needs to spend the whole next turn to just draw cards, I guess. Because only ATS, convoys and land lease in hand. Definitely expecting a land lease here. Yeah, I mean, Ooh. he's used all his swordfish. No, he only has one swordfish left. He's got the fiats. He's got four of those. Um, he's used both of his raft lightnings. He's lost his Spitfire. Yeah. So the only units that he really has left is a Black Watch, some engineer, uh, an engineering uh, regiment. Um, he's got an HMS Illustrious plus um, the Empire Strikes combo um, as a potential. 
but he doesn't have a whole lot more to win. He's got one albacore. He's got three uh, artillery units. It, and losing it, that Spitfire, I think this this was just a nail in the coffin. Um, that was maybe his only comeback with, I don't know, maybe Spitfire 26 naval support, finest hour, maybe something like this. But even this is not no longer possible. So yeah, as I mentioned, I don't see how he's ever dealing 20 damage here to head. The only thing that is going against head that he did not find more Nostrum by now. But I mean, oh, also no one did not strike. not. Did not touch the HQ once with aggressive bird air. Oh my god, no. So, I mean, something could have potentially happened if the Sudden Strike didn't just come straight off the top there. That could have potentially let, let No in 5, you know, pick some units off with the Paris C. But I mean, there's a root out there as well. I guess he does have another second Paris C. Yeah, but he's only having one attack units now, and three close air supports are already out. He's having that one naval support in deck, but uh, I think this is not doing anything. Besides yeah, of defense waiting, waiting there to just bring up another guard. Two of them as well. Insane. Ah, uh, this is very, very interesting. He's used his naval support, you know, his ace up his sleeve. It's been used. Found the fear too. Yeah, even if he's having a full support line now, like look how how less HP all uh, attack all these units have. One, yeah. one, one, two. I don't know. But also, head hand is no longer that great. He's having a lot of stuff to stop known going face, but also. Not too much stuff to develop any pressure here. Hey, look, all of his support line <laughs> now has zero attack except for the engineering battalion. Uh, going from run to z from run to zero. I guess on the bright side, he's able to clog the front line. Sure, and then he suddenly oh, he strikes. Someone just needs a blitzkrieg out of nowhere, and then. <laughs> Empire Strikes, um, I think... Uh, That's the first damage. Turn 11. Or is he not going for it? Uh, let's see. I think he kind of has to, just because of the, the trade potential of the 15 centimeter autocanon from head is just too good. He decides to instead use the Monty. And I get that. I think, that's, I think that makes sense. Um, he's got draw options, so he doesn't have to wait for there to be three units on the board. Now let's see what the Annihilation hits here. Finest Hour, that's something he did not want to lose. Definitely did not want to lose the Finest Hour. That's one of the few remaining uh, ways that he can deal damage in his deck. Now finding a closer support is able to bring back the one attack on some of those uh, <laughs> air units. What a buff air, bring a unit from zero to one. I mean, there's their Black Watch. Now, if he's able, you know, if Head just doesn't find any units soon, he can start chipping away. Just start chipping away and going for the there swordfish. It there it is. The also, shows. very smartly played, attacking first with the with the bomber, triggering the counter measure there, and then playing the Empire Strikes. Arado not gonna help um, as much as Head would have wanted, but what does he find here? Comet has potential, Panzer 3L has potential. Yeah, it's 100% Comet here, because with the Comet you can start killing these bombers. Man, just I mean, imagine No. 5 would have some more close air supports here. He would be in a good spot with six units on board, but yeah. not having any left. Only having the only. It's only out here is the naval support giving unit four attack but head also having two fighters in the support line this means the bombers cannot go face yeah the second pair of C though um does have the chance to get rid of one of those bombers uh i think uh, no one five having that in hand right now is is very good
Now, not a lot of damage being taken back in return, and no one five keeps clogging the front line. Let's be real though. If there is a Leopold for head, this game's over. Oh, this is also brutal. Pumpkin. Eight more turns with this board and no one can win here. <laughs> if he's no guarding that bomber there, I mean Yeah, I mean I mean he's he's it's two two damage every turn from both that Black Watch and that Paracy. Um, Look at this board suddenly. There is another decisive defense though, and now a Marinostrum, so but remember, Marinostrum was changed, right? So it's not going to just be farming health um, every attack that hits from the, the front line. There's only the comet that he can currently play it on. I'm not sure if he's going to. He is. What was he? He's going to hit face. He's going to put him the... on a timer. Yeah, but I'm sh how much damage is no one having on board here? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a two turn timer, but this decisive defense delaying it a little bit. This is a very. Sacrificing one field, okay. This is a very odd Brit Air game. I feel. I like. did, honestly, I did not expect it to go that way here. No. <laughs> I have no idea how Nova 5 is even still in this. Yeah. Somehow running out of stuff and out of options. Two more turns. Empire Strikes. Ooh. That is three damage. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Damage here for Nova 5. Keeping it for later. Head really it's needs the to finest root out hour. Now. Oh. It's, mm, does not do a lot now, right? Should keep it. In case. Keep it. I'm not sure if if, if known finds uh, if head finds a root out here. Yeah, I could keep it alive with that for another two damage next turn. Oh, Heinkel is not what head needs. Ah, he's one. No one really win. winning this. How? I mean, no one is winning this. He's an Empire Strikes. That's guaranteed three damage. No yeah, one five. Head somehow cannot even find back. the. Cannot even find the, the Leopold now. He cannot deploy it. So I think there is nothing that Head can find here. A root, root out? out? No, root out, not even root out. Is that be enough? is having two attack plus Empire Strikes, which is another two. Exactly lethal. Oh my god. <laughs> what that was that, so man? I mean. And no one five is getting fatigue! He wins with the last card in his deck! Yeah, and also Head would have had lethal next turn. Oh my, what? This was... <laughs> this was too close for a first match here. <laughs> okay, I mean, yep. What? Okay, a JU88G6 would have won the game, right? Like, it, it would have just won the game. Um, a Leopold would have won the game. What else? A King Tiger probably would have won the game if he just played that out. Okay, he just won the worst matchup ever. So I think he's in a pretty good spot here now with this German US deck. Also, he he got the he got the comet from the Africa core, so he had another comet that he could have drawn. You know, there there were plenty of cards in the deck there for head that would have won him the game, like hands down. But, oh, look at all those Panzer IVs! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he found all three of them. Ah, oh, I found a War Machine. Pretty good, pretty good. And the Fifth Ranger, so we could see a good turn three here from no one. Definitely. Yep. But also had having some good stuff here. The um, Red Thorn, Bloody Sickle. Yeah, the double so, 34th guards is pretty oh big. Oh my god, we might see an early double 34th. The warfare. Are you ever going for this? You can play double 34s next turn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this will be another interesting one. 
Known with the fifth ranger, blitz out potential next turn. I'm not sure if he's going for it. Is he he's just gonna go? He's gonna he's gonna kill the 456 that played the double 34th on turn three. Okay. Why and not? Throwing down the gauntlet and saying, "Come at me." Got starting hand here. Got mode activated. He had an insane starting hand last match and another good one this match. Let's see if he's if he can win this one. Oh, good one. Deciding to go for the 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, but that's and that's huge for Nolan 5, because that's a two-for-one trade against those two 34th guards. He can he can take um only six damage. Oh, look at this even dive bombing, setting yeah. the attack to zero, keeping it at eight health. Dive bombing really paying out here. Really cool synergy. One credit dive bombing, and you can still attack with the 4 4. Wow. Pretty good. That's and very interesting. And now Head kicking himself, getting rid of that 456. He could have been just slightly more patient. Yeah, especially because he could have guarded his, eight, uh, his 6 6 then. Yep. Another oh. dive bombing! Oh my god. Are you serious? Definitely going for it. No in five Doing it at eight, eight. three cards <laughs> negated like six cards or five cards from head there. Just no in five things we are seeing here. Red Dawn. Do you even want to do that? I think you have to. Giving his unit in the front line three attack. Down to 10 now. Soon. Wow, this fifth it's ranger far. did so much work. Wow. He even found the Yak Bomber now. I'm I'm still just I'm still just confused as to how just no one five was able to perfectly use his entire deck to somehow find a win in that first match. Yeah. <laughs> really impressive. He was patient enough. I think at some point in the match, after the first three, four or five turns there, I would have said, oh god, my opponent's having such a big board here. Guards, units in the front line. No way I win this. But no one, was, I think, was really confident in still winning this, and he did. And I yeah. think, although had had another insane starting hand this match, I think no one can also win that one. Yeah, that those fifth, uh, fifth rangers. Um, yeah. We're, I think we're going to see a lot more of them uh, moving forward. Also, the addition of dive bombing and it just perfectly played out in this match as if it was just designed for this is pretty impressive. Another scouting party here from Head. A lot of scouting, so he knows that there is another fifth ranger and the Panther 38. GG? GG. Oh, yeah. Plus the comet. And the yuck kills himself. That's it. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Ah, I mean, your prediction? With this impressive win here, I mean, no one really the top favorite for today. Wow. Even more impressive than the second one that this first match was just insanely. Insanely patient. He did not have a lot of stuff left. All his units at some point had zero attack. But yeah, it's just known five. He still wins. Who cares? Yeah. No, I mean that was that was crazy. I've that that Brit Air game was a very intriguing Brit Air game, right? And the those cannons, they came in handy, right? Um they were threats that drew attention as well, and just the number of things that he was able to put out. And and I mean let's not he took a point of fatigue damage, right? He 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 Killed him at the final possible turn. He had just enough damage yeah. to finish the game at the final possible moment. Otherwise, he would have been eliminated next turn. Um, absolutely fantastic series there between No and Five and Head. And bodes well for today's uh, series of matches. But for now, let's throw it over to myself and Christo to bring you into the next series.
I, I'm, I'm like kind of without words, Ollie. You know, um, we, no one just never ceases to amaze. Um, that that first hand opened up, and both you and Spoo sat there going, "Oh, Head's got this!" Like, look at that opening hand; it's stellar. And then Spoo's just mentions a couple turns into that game. If anybody can pull this out, it's no one. And sure enough, wins. Like you said, last card in their deck, takes the victory comes back and just shows why no one's really at the top of their game right now. Like what, what an amazing series that was. There are players that probably would have surrendered the match before ever reaching that point. Um, yep. But I feel like, you know, no one five kept his uh, composure. I also do want to say, I feel like head got unlucky on his draws later on in the match. I mean, sure. Maybe that was just variance catching up to him because he did get like almost the perfect starting hand uh in many ways but there were cards that he could have drawn that would have closed out the game um for him uh during those final few turns you know he had another comet available he had you know another fighter available that would have blocked some of that damage and you know given him power to finish out the game so unfortunately for head was not able to find those um, fortunately for Noah and Five, he just kept his cool and was able to win that. And then in game number two, um, Head just went, you know, full pedal to the metal, um, you know, dropping that Red Dawn, eliminating his 456 rifles on turn number three, just so that he can drop two 34th guards. And what happens? One fifth Rangers plus two dive bombings, and all of that early aggression was negated by Noah and Five. And at this point, if you're ahead, you're pretty much dead in the water, right? It's going to be so hard for you to claw back from that. You're going to need to find your scouting parties, your 33rd recons plus winter offensives to really restock your hand. And uh, in the absence of that, ended up just not working. Plus, no one five found his comet, right? Was able to deal yep. nine damage and and have that yak seven finish uh, head uh, off. Um, really <laughs> punishing that self damage aspect of that deck and. You know, excellent play. Um, I, like I feel like Noen Five is in rare form. I feel like he is he is uh, here to play today, and I hope that Cappuccino does not ban the U.S. deck in the next series because I, I think that that could even be a, a more interesting matchup to see him play. Oh, spoiler alert, Ollie! We haven't even looked at the bracket yet. Um, but as, as we bring that up to talk about the other matches that went on, I do want to, to your point, give a shout out to Head because I think going into that second game especially, I feel like they had a, a pretty good idea of what they needed to do in that game. Came out, guns blazing, figured this was my route to victory, um, and no one just able to shut them down. So uh, there you see no one moving on to the semis. 2-0 overhead. Cappuccino and Vinny, hard fought matchup, two to one. Cappuccino moving forward. I think Ollie, you talked about it a little bit earlier as well. Cappuccino typically does pretty well in uh, in their first kind of win, first matchup. Typically take the win, but gonna have a tall order to go up against No and Five there. And then the surprise of the tournament so far, Ollie, your prediction out the window. Birdo two over J King. We are not going to see a J King no in finale. Uh, maybe, maybe Birdo takes his place. Fellow Canadian just swaps over and goes <laughs> head to head with no in. We'll we'll find out shortly. But um, I mean, obviously that one's a surprise. But any any thoughts on those other two matchups? Um, yeah, I mean, you said it well. Cappuccino tends to do extremely well in their first series um, in in any OCC. I think it's more often than not they make it into the semifinals, but. Uh, my, I'm, I'm really surprised. I to see Birdo 2 OJ King. I, it, it's not that you know, I don't think he has the capabilities of doing so. I just, I feel like, I felt like that things were lining up well for J King to really, you know, get back to his dominant ways. Um, but obviously not really finding the success that he needed um, in those games. Of course, we didn't see them, so maybe it was um, poor draws, maybe it was poor decision making, maybe it was just a bad matchup of decks, um, something that I wouldn't have necessarily predicted looking at the decks uh, kind of uh, beforehand. So, yeah, very, very interesting. But now we're going to get to see Darkness take on Jin Lun um, to figure out who's going to be the last member of our semifinals there, and uh, I'm really excited for that matchup. Well, I know you've been sipping on your monster, keeping you going, because you're going to have more talking to do. No rest for the wicked, Ollie. Uh, back over to you and Spooz to break down this next matchup.
Welcome back, everybody. It is I, Ole, and of course, with me is Spooz. We are going to bring you this series between Darkness and Jinlun. Um, quickly, before we go into the decks, Birdo, 2 owing uh, J King. What do you think about that one, Spooz? Yeah, pretty impressive, but also surprising to me because I think even matchup wise, J King had a good shot there against Birdo, in my opinion, um, bringing three or two good control decks and the US frontline deck, which should also not be too bad against Burrow's lineup. But somehow, um, I'm a little bit sad that we did not see it on stream, but I would be really um, willing to know what happened in their matches. Why 2-0 against Shaking is something you don't do every day. <laughs> no, absolutely. Well, let's jump on into the decks here for this matchup between Darkness and Jinlun. Starting with decks from Darkness, um, a very familiar site here off the top. It's going to be Britain, Italy, uh, uh, Air. No Arties in this one. Um, you know, I've, I'm wondering if, uh, if, if no one had been rocking this list, if he would have been able to win against Head. I'm not sure, uh, yeah. but... Uh, other than that, a pretty standard Brit Air deck, right? You got the Ultra there, you got the HMS Lustries, you got the Spitfires, the Empire Strikes, um, bringing in Shelling as well, um, and the Sexton for that additional control. These are two cards that we've seen uh, no in five acts in favor of uh, other options. No ATS in this one. Um, anything else that sticks out to you, Spooz? No, just a very basic Brit Air list. I, I'm always wondering why, or not wondering, but I, I find Mar Nostrum not that great in, in Brit Air generally. It's only good against the, the Jack Room matchup when they have Signal Regiment early on, and yeah, just to give you a little bit healing against their burn. But yeah, some players play with Mar Nostrum, others prefer the the Maki, for example. But yeah, not not as crazy as we've just seen Known Five's Brit Air deck. Um, just very basic here from darkness yeah all right next up it's gonna be another classic here from darkness uh that is germany uh jagro uh japan germany j aggro japan aggro whatever you want to call it it is uh another staple of the competitive scene has been around for a while and these uh, these two decks you know brit air plus uh, jagro kind of two of the longest living decks in cards um, it, very interesting that Darkness is bringing both of them and that both of them are still finding success. It is your uh, typical formula, 15th Cavalry Regiment, um, Bicycle Regiments, and, uh, and uh, t for your turn ones. Um, comboing that with Panzer 35Ts, potentially with some Bevelswagens in hand. Um, I think the biggest change that we have seen um, in this deck is the the full adoption of the type 94 tk in here of course that giving you um the ability to pin and or destroy units from your opponent but other than that just a highly in your face aggressive deck that then caps out with feigned retreat you want to pull that relatively quickly so that you're able to flood the board turn after turn and really pour the pressure on your opponent um, anything that I'm missing in this one, Spruce? Yeah, I just want to mention that I think it's uh, I still can can get over it. Darkness, a player that is usually known for playing control decks like Brit US is his most favorite deck. Um, it's the only player that is bringing Japan aggro today. <laughs> How is that <laughs> even possible? I mean, something is really strange here today. But other than that, you just covered everything very well. Yeah. All right. Well. Final deck here from Darkness, um, Germany, Italy here, and it is not, you know, the hyper Germany, Italy control that you might expect Darkness to bring, but instead it is Alpine. Yeah. For anyone uh, unfamiliar, Alpine is basically um, when you play multiple Alpine units, you get plus one, plus one on the second unit you play, or third, or however many. Um, based on the number of Alpine units already on board, this deck here packs a whole host of Alpine units, um, the Kaburg's Pioneers uh, among them, and can really quickly develop an extremely powerful board. It is, however, slow to deliver damage over into the enemy HQ, which can oftentimes be its downfall. Yeah. All right. You need you need early units and the snowball effect. Otherwise, and also against special matchups, you are just a little bit too slow. Also, Darkness is not playing with the new seventh Alpini. 
um, some of the other Alpine players are playing it. I think it's it's a little bit too slow in a conventional, more aggressive style Alpine deck, which Alpine usually was, I guess. Yeah. All right, well, let's bring up the Brit Italy uh, deck here from Jinlun, uh, another familiar site, very similar to the deck that uh, that Darkness is bringing. Um, we do see a lot of the same cards there. The option to go for the Mirror Nostrum from the Italy side. Um, I don't think we have to talk too much about this one. This has become a, a staple and very familiar to most p players. Uh, same thing can be said about the next deck here being brought by Jinlun, which is going to be Soviet Japan self damage. He is uh, opting for the Shinodo um, uh, counter offensive combo, so that is going to be available for him. No Yura in this one. Um, slight difference to what we've seen from some other decks. Anything weird going on in this one? It doesn't look like it. No, um, not really. Not even, no. not even bringing the 95th uh, rifles. So this is just uh, the Very old basic. school yeah. deck, right? All right, and then finally, Jinlun is going to be bringing... A very heavily value uh, control favored deck. We did see this one in the first series of the day as well. It's going to be Germany, Italy, um, bringing two human torpedoes. Um, uh, uh, an interesting option to to bring there from the Italy side. Not something that we see a whole a lot of, I suppose. Yeah, maybe it's a good addition to Brit Air. Better than Sky Barons, a little bit more flexible, like Sky Barons only targeting air units, but with the human torpedo. And as the airplanes are mostly sticking in the support line, it is another good removal against air lists or airplanes in general. And I think that might be the reason. Also interesting that Jinlon is playing the 7th Alpini Regiment, that new guard that was introduced in the latest skirmish or the skirmish before. Um, also King Tiger in the deck, yeah, very control heavy deck, um, careless talks for the early aggression units, also lurking danger. What are the countermeasures in the deck? Decisive defense mostly. Um, yeah, careless talks from the deep. Oh yeah, careless um, talk, well. I just yeah. I just talked about it. <laughs> yeah, a very, very cool deck and yeah, looking forward to see the 7th Alpine Regiment in action maybe. Yeah. I think this card is really strong when your opponent is not having good answers. Like it's having an old Mar Nostrum included, not just healing when you attack, but also when you attack into it. Could be really strong. All right, as we get uh, the bands up on the screen here, uh, and this is a very familiar sight. Both players are saying, <laughs> get Britain out of here. Get it yeah. out of here. I don't want to deal with it. Brit Air uh, not going to be allowed for neither Darkness nor Jinlun, which means that we are going to get Jagro into Soviet self-damage, and we're going to get uh, Alpine into Germany control. And I think, you know, Jagro into Soviet self-damage is among my favorite yeah. matchups to watch because you know the whole ticking of the signal regiment and pings and burn and all that stuff going back and forth um those normally tend to be extremely entertaining to watch uh, so i'm hoping we get that one and then you know all bets are off in my opinion with the the germany versus germany um or even you know germany versus self damage um you know alpine versus self damage from jinlun let's say to be an interesting matchup if we get to see that one yeah, I completely agree with the Japan versus self-damage. We've seen so many cool games with this. I can imagine it being so hard for the players to calculate how far can I go with the self-damage before I die to the burn. And also the, the, the Jaguar player, how fast do I have to be? I mean, they mostly just spam out all their units and hope the opponent is helping with fatiguing the HQ of the opponent. But you completely said it. it we had so many nice games, it's so entertaining to watch and so many stuff is happening, so many red numbers popping off there from <laughs> any card interaction and really good to watch these matches. But I can completely see, 100% agree with Darkness Bands here. He really does not want to face Brit Air with the, with the Jaguar list, especially with Mar Nostrum in it. And you also, with Alpine, you don't want to face Brit Air, so 100% agree with that one. Um, on the other hand, Jin Lun, yeah, I mean, we just mentioned it in the war room, Brit Air just being the most strongest deck, deck um, and yeah, why would you not ban it? Alpine, exactly. you don't ban um, Alpine, and I think he's in a good shape against Jagro with the German Italy control deck, so also makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think I think that makes sense. I think I think like... I think it's also, you know, Jagro and Alpine. These are both decks that you feel like you know you can beat. 
right? Like, even if you don't beat them all the time, even if there is a chance that they win, you you know that you can win against these decks, right? Um, whereas I feel like the path to victory is probably harder uh, against against Brit Air, especially if you get your Brit Air banned out from underneath you, then, you know, you don't really want to play Jaggro into Brit Air, you don't want to play Alpine into Brit Air, you don't want to play, you know, the only deck that you might want to play into Brit Air there is the, the Germany-Italy uh, control deck there from Jinlan, but even yeah. then, that doesn't always work. Um, yeah, we saw it in match number one, right? Even with a yeah. perfect starting hand, and no one had a really, really trashy starting hand with triple close air support in the first two turns, and only one Swordfish. Everything did go against him, but he st could still get or pull off the win. And this just shows how insanely strong this deck is. And whenever you have a chance and you don't have maybe a lineup with three decks that are good against Brit Air, you should just ban this and don't deal with it. Because it's just so frustrating sometimes to play against it. And yeah, just have it out of the way and play the, the, the matches a little bit more, yeah, basically like units against units and not let's just deal with <laughs> with the, all these air yeah, units <laughs> units against units oh. i like those matches um that's that's one of the reasons why i like alpine because alpine is very much just like i'm gonna do all my fighting through units you know like if i'm dealing damage i'm attacking with a unit i'm progressing with a unit um i like watching those games i like playing those games um, and and I'm really curious to see if there's going to be success found uh, with the Alpine deck here. Uh, as we we just waiting for the players to get the match started. Uh, that should hopefully happen any second now. Yeah, unfortunately I did miss the skirmish event. There was one where you could only play units, right? And no orders allowed. Unfortunately I could not play this because I was on vacations. But also the players on, on the Nations Cup last year, we had one game mode where players are, were only allowed to play units. And it's just a completely different game with completely different deck strategies. It's so interesting to watch. And it it feels like this should be cards. Like mostly playing units, only some sneaked in orders. And yeah, with, with some decks, you have just the opposite feeling. It's just too much removal and you no units sticking on board. That's sometimes a little bit sad to see, but... It is what it is. All Still right. have some entertaining matches here. Speaking about this, Darkness versus Jindun. First match here. What do we have? We have Soviet self damage against Jagro, uh, oh. which I think is always <laughs> a fun time. Oh yes. And uh, Jinlun keeping two Winter Warfares there in his starting hand, uh, which I think is uh, really good for him. Um, Darkness not with an optimal oh, starting hand though. Not really. Also Jin Lun with the 33rd here, good synergy with an upcoming Winter Warfare there later. Not just killing all units from Darkness, but also giving him one one draw there. And Jin Lun really with a, strain, uh, with a strong starting hand here. 456 in hand, the Red Thorn, which is a good removal against the Signal Regiment, I guess, together with the war Winter Warfare. But Darkness's hand really, really bad here. Um, we might see the first Winter Warfare maybe, but not necessarily. Since that infantry unit has to go to the front line first. Yeah. Just I think probably just see the second 33rd and move to the front line, maybe. I'm not decided to go for the Winter Warfare anyway. Or not. Seeing as though he still having another in hand, that's that might be the reason why he did it. Yeah. Uh, drawing a lot of cards there as well, right? Drawing three cards from that Winter Warfare, so not a, a terrible uh, play. But now, Fange Retreat being found by Darkness, and I feel like Darkness has a good hand to rip the Fange Retreat um, relatively early. I mean, there's yeah. not a ton of cards there that he you know necessarily wants to keep. He's not sitting on like the bombing raid plus desperate measures or, or some other stuff. So definitely expecting it on turn six here. If he's not finding something insane, I'm not even sure what it would be. Not even the shitten would be that insane to not play faint retreat on six. Oh yeah, signal regiment might be an, an argument, but finding it early is really what darkness wants here. Yeah, I mean he's finding it as well um, after. Jinla has already played uh, the Red Dawn um, and, a, and a couple of other removal cards. Yeah. 
He also has an extremely powerful turn five here, right? He can drop the key 83 and the signal regiment and just prepare for the faint retreat on turn six. Um, and the key 83 is a big body to, to drop on board that, that Jinlan will have to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And Jinlan's hand is honestly not too great. Did not find a single of these six sixes that he wants to have in hand with this deck. Only a Shinoru T80, so he's only having stuff in hand that just damages his, his HQ. So, and this Signal Regiment might actually cause him some problems. And Darkness missed kind of three damage there with not deploying the first Signal Regiment. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure he's having a plan here. He's, he's probably just afraid of another Red Dawn, I'm pretty sure. He wants to get more value out of the first signal but he has to deploy it now when he wants to play the faint retreat next turn yeah absolutely and uh, again i think he's think he's in a good spot to play the faint retreat right um we've seen players sacrifice better cards than are in darkness's hand right now to the faint retreat gods so i would very much expect that to be coming in next turn absolutely 100 percent. we're going to see it because the mitre regiment is not worse just delaying the, the faint retreat one more turn. Also having the key 83 in hand. I mean, Jinlan not really having a chance to kill the key 83 as far as I see. Shinodo only dealing no, not even enough credits for that. Oh, really tough spot here. I think Darkness, although he's only having three cards in hand with a faint retreat, can make a huge comeback here. Especially with the signal regiment on board and all these mass output of units coming out soon. But that is a good board also from Jinun already. When this goes to the front line. Do you think Darkness I think, can play the French retreat here? I, I think I think we just saw one of the cards pop up that stop him from playing the faint retreat. Yeah. And that's the other type 94, right? The fact that he can double surprise attack and get rid of one of those big units, um, then he's able to blitz the Mito. No, wait, three. Oh, he doesn't have enough to blitz the Mito in the front line, unfortunately. But, I mean, just put the key 83 in the front line. You don't really need it anyway, because you're going to get the draw um, <clears throat> that you need from, from Feigned Retreat. So you can double surprise attack, just throw the key 83 in the front line to soak up um, one of those advancing units and um, have the Befelswagen block it as well. And then you're pretty well set up to um, rip the Feigned Retreat next turn. Yeah, I, I, don't I also like, I like this line, honestly. He really needs to deal with stuff first, and he got rid of two units that would potentially grow and grow any further. Um, yeah. But still not having good answers against the 6-6 six, six and the 5-3 now. I guess he does mitigate the risk slightly of there being another Red Dawn that just takes the key 83 out from the front line. But I feel like that would have put two bodies in the front line blocking it. Um, might have potentially saved him some damage, but... Now, this is a very, like, how, how can you really justify ripping the Feigned Retreat here when you have 11 damage staring you in the face and you have 12 HP on your HQ? Yeah, you can't, knowing the opponent is having... Is he having Winter Offensive? No, he's, he played three so far, right? All out. Now he has lethal on board, right? Yeah. Tough spot here. That type 93 is not doing a lot. Can get rid of the 5 3 SU there. But there's still 6 6 and 3 2. Oh, Akita, Emido. Oh, <laughs> it's like these games, right? 6, uh, suddenly 6 HP. No lethal yet for. Oh, with the Shinodo, he has lethal. Oh, yep. exactly lethal. Not not much that Darkness could have done there, but yeah, look at this. Jinlin also down to 6 HP, and with a good top deck, Darkness maybe could have also won there with Signal Regiment on board. But yeah, not this time. Jinlin taking the 1-0 lead here. Jackrow not really that successful in that match today. But yeah, no, could I mean, have also it was gone. tough. 
Yeah, yeah, also the start from Darkness was not perfect. Not any one drop Blitz infantry. No 35 T's, no Baffles Wagons. I, th like... I think at some point he maybe should have dropped the signal earlier when he knew that red, red, one Red Dawn was already out. But yeah, you can't blame him, I guess. You really want to get the max value yeah, out of the he, signal. It, and That would have been an extra two damage for him, um, which wouldn't have been enough to win the game anyway, right? Um, he, he needed to... He needed Jin Lun to run into issues um, you know, tempo issues so that he would have space to drop the Feind Retreat, right? I feel like that's the only way with these particular hands as the game played for Darkness to have come away with a win. And now Darkness kind of with an uphill battle here. Jagro against German Italy control. And as we can already see, Jin Lun with the Modern Rostrum in hand, decisive defense. Decisive defense also so strong against Jagro. But maybe he's finding more good stuff here. And Darkness this time with a 5th Cavalry Regiment at least. No Befehlswagen additionally, but 22nd for the draw. Way better starting hand than he had last time. The only other Type 93 is turn 1, which is usually not the optimal play. Finding two Type 94s as well, meaning that he has those two surprise attacks, um, able to deal with potentially like the first guard unit to come out of this size of defense or um, anything else that Jin Lun plays to protect his HQ. And also Type 94, what makes it really strong is the zero operation cost, because now he can st still deliver two damage to face and still can deploy the 22nd infantry. Securing him a draw here. And Jin Lan really needs a root out soon. This is going to be a decisive defense, yeah. pretty much for sure, right? Yeah, the question is what are you doing here when you're darkness? I mean, at some point you have to pop it, right? There's no way you. What are you waiting for? Like, if your opponent's having a root out, your board is gone, anyways. Oh, I mean. You use double surprise attack, you pants for 35T, you deal 3 to face, so you're still taking damage. And I mean, look at look at Jin Lan's hand, right? There's, there's nothing quite yet. He still needs to wait two more turns before he is able to, to effectively deal with that board. Um, he can wolf pack next turn. He has nothing to, to really... Um, put Marin Ostrom on or anything like that. Verbal Wind, that's going to cost four to get up into the front line and attacking. Um, dropping the type AA gun, I think that's pretty smart from Darkness there. Type 93 delivers five damage to face, moves the 22nd infantry up into the front line, is now threatening a whole Ooh. host of damage. Can and find still... another decisive defense, but. I think, I think Jinlan's only running one. Is he? That would be... Yep, he's only, only running one decisive defense, and yeah. that's game! Wow, <laughs> that was a fast one. Uh, yeah, I mean, his hand was just too expensive. Yeah, I found all the late game stuff. Mount Nostrum, two of them, but not any unit to play it on. Yeah, that's the big downside with triple Mount Nostrum in the deck. I yeah, mean, usually I'm... you it helps you finding them. But yeah, without any units, they're also not helpful at all. Wow, that was... <laughs> what was it, turn 4? Yeah, it was turn 4. Oh, turn 5 for Darkness. He did go first. Wow, that was... Yeah, it can happen. I think also this this control deck from Jin Lun is a little bit slower than the variant we've seen from Head earlier. A little bit more late game base, but yeah, it can just easily be overrun by, by Jagger as we have seen. So now Darkness has to play his Alpine deck and Jin Lan with sticks with the control deck. And I think Jin Lan in a way better position now. Like Alpine is not that fast as we've seen from Jagro. And sudden strikes and all this stuff is really helpful against Alpine. Fearless talk there right off the bat. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's talk root out. Not that great against Alpine, but also also helpful in the early stages. Like when you Oh and a sudden strike and a from the deep. Oh yeah. That is uh that's looking like uh head's hand from, <laughs> from game number one. And look at darkness hand. He's having 35T and one three credit Alpine unit. That's it. Not the best position. Nope. Yeah, good way to keep the from the deep for later for for Leopold or any Ju maybe. Like everything that yes. can dark the darkness can deploy on turns three here has three or or less health. So good way to just play the the careless talk there and keep the from the deep. Although you waste one credit. Yeah. Now what's gonna what's the from the deep gonna get? Is gonna get the Panzer three H? Looks like it. I mean, Darkness still gets the draw, so not the end of the world. And he's not losing an Alpine unit, um, so I guess that's also kind of a positive. Yeah, completely agree. But now he has to carry the 5-5 five, five in the front line. Yeah. Found the Nachschub. Can go 131st into 132nd, uh, 36. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. On that line four day can even kill the 5-4 and trade the 3-2 away. Oh, my God. Everything going against Darkness here. Yeah, and Sudden Strike not powerful enough to take care of that 989th Infantry Regiment. Uh, Jack Bomber, however, can. Can throw it back if he were to so choose. Um, 35T can play... also just kill it. Yeah. yeah, and he can play the Nash up, right? Um Gain some credits back. Not that it's going to make him back enough credits to do anything more this turn, but at least he has gotten rid of one of the threats on board. Oh, don't hit the Enigma. Don't hit the Enigma. Okay. Sudden okay. Strike. All right. That's really the best good. card that Darkness could have hoped for. Um, By far, yeah. Now he gets to refill oh, his hand. Huge Massive Enigma, draw. Yeah. yeah. And now he's finding all his uh, smaller Alpine units there. And even deploy two of them and move the three to the front line. Or he just goes for Heinkel. Uh -huh. What is he looking for? He has a Leopold in hand. No. Kills two of the units. I would have liked to see more third Alpinis because they both would have got plus one, plus one more than they do now. Yeah. But I mean, he has a lot of options now. He's definitely looking for something. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe a comet? Ah, going for the U boat, probably. Might see a good old U boat soon. What can Jinlan do here? Not too much. Do we just see another wolf pack? Yes. Oh, Leopold gone. That, I mean, how bad is a Leopold here? Can help against 7 Alpine Regiment, but I think this is what Darkness is developing his U boat into for the 7 Alpine Regiment. I think he's just going to bounce the FW now. Uh, the 5-5 the five five with the FW. Yeah. Both players are relatively low on cards, however, and not a ton of card draw. Only really Panzer 3H. Um, sure, Africa Core replaces itself, but um, not a ton to really cycle through the deck. Um, opting to instead go for the line for the day and continue to develop his research. Yeah, and look now at this 50 annihilation. 50. Oh, God. What is it gonna hit? <clears throat> Got lucky with the first discard there with a the sudden strike, but now it will definitely hit a good card. I think FW a little bit better than the research. Oh, he took the Panzer Sug! <laughs> oh, oh, the Jack Bomber got discarded! 
Keeping, oh my god. Keeping the research in hand. The cards gods did not reward Jin Lun with killing the research after he picked the Panzer Suck. Like, is there no justice in this world? <laughs> Panzer Suck, nice. Yeah, what can Darkness do here? He can play U-Boat on one of his own units, but... Oh, oh this is difficult. I, uh, I mean, yeah. I think he just has to play it slow here, right? Um... Looks like he's going to do it. Destroying oh. one of his own units, discarding two. But the Panzerzug is still alive. I think that was questionable. I mean, I guess he is looking at the potential of another annihilation. I mean, we we only seen one from Jinlun so far, right? In Tiger incoming. No, no King Tiger. Killing the draws is, I think, equally as important at this point, right? Look at this play here. Nice. I like it. Giving yourself another optional draw next turn and also denying draw for Darkness. And Darkness stick with the 35T and a Pini Regiment now. Oops. Panzerzug. Panzerzug. <laughs> <laughs> And then the GU88! Oh my Such god. Such a good card! Yeah, he's doing it! Yes! Oh, I like it. Bam. We just saw a Panzer so get played. I am happy. And the 22nd Infantry, not what Darkness needs at the moment. Uh. Darkness... Does he have two Enigmas? Not that Enigma is going to save him, given the hand size of uh, his opponent. But yes, does have two Enigmas. Darkness just passes turn, yeah. Oh, this is not really what he wants. It is not. Oh, and at all. Let's talk. <laughs> just imagine getting killed by Panzer. It's happening right before our eyes. Not even killed from the Panzer Zug. Nine, the Comet dealing the final damage there. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Darkness is really in a tough spot here. This deck is really strong against Alpine with all this removal stuff. We saw some good wolf packs, Annihilations, and yeah. Slowly but surely, even Darkness had a good um, Enigma, but even that was not good enough. He drew six cards from it, seven cards. But yeah, this control deck just being the absolute hard counter to Alpine, I guess. I mean, I feel like we just we just saw the weaknesses of Alpine in front of our eyes there, right? Um, if you're going to bring Germany, Italy, why aren't you bringing that control list instead of the Alpine list, right? Like, I'm not sure. Um, maybe it has a better win percentage against Jagro, and if there's more Jagro in the field or something, like, it, it works better. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm a little bit lost as to why you wouldn't bring Germany, Italy control over Germany, Italy, Alpine. Um, yes, especially when you're Darkness, right? And you're very familiar and good with playing control decks. Maybe you wanted to play, to, to, to bring three aggression aggression style lists, but then why not bring the, the Hummer deck maybe, which is way more aggressive as German main nation. We don't know. Maybe we're going to ask Darkness um, in the back background and then know the reason why he brought Alpine there. All right, but at the same time, uh, congratulations to Jin Lun, who has secured himself a spot in the semifinals here. He's going to be taking on, I believe it's going to be Birdo Burrito there in the lower half of the bracket, meaning that our other semifinal is going to be Cappuccino versus No One Five. Let's throw it back over to the host desk with myself and Christo.
shout out to Jin Lun for defeating a heck of an opponent in darkness two to one and moving on to our quarter finals. Um, I, I mean, Ollie, you were just talking about it with Spooz, that Alpine deck just kind of comes back to, to bite darkness a little bit. We saw the double ban of Brit Air, nothing surprising there. Unfortunately, Darkness still kind of fell into a matchup that was uh, was quite difficult for, for him and his Alpine list. Yeah, um, I mean, Darkness a little bit unlucky in game number one with the, with the fact that Jinlun just had a really good progression of plays throughout the entire game. Um, he was never really stuck. I mean, sometimes with those uh, self damage decks, you can you can get a little bit stuck. You don't have a 456. You don't have the Bloody Sickle or the Winter Warfare when you need it. So it, it makes you skip one or two turns in effect um, where you're being more reactive than proactive. None of that happened for Jin Lun in game number one, meaning that Darkness just never had the space to play the Feigned Retreat. Um, that you know, ended up costing him game number one, but game number two, able to slide in, you know, with the lethal under the credit cost of basically Jin Lun's entire deck. Uh, but the, that speed just wasn't there in game number three with that Alpine deck. And it was also it was also a rough, rough draw, right? Like none of the third Alpini regiments were being found there right off the bat. He wasn't able to basically do the old, you know, turn one, play a card, uh, turn two, play another unit, get that plus one, plus one. Um, possibly even played the Gebirg's Pioneers that snowballs the credit cost a little bit, um, wasn't able to make full use of the Nashup, you know, developed the research all the way up to the U-Boat and then didn't really hit either of the cards that he really wanted to hit, right? He didn't hit the Comet, he didn't hit the Panzer 3H. So uh, just a, a series of, of unfortunate events. I mean, I do see a world where Darkness can win with that Alpine deck, but I feel like it's just... Um, it's a lower win percentage than a lot of other decks that I know he's able to pilot extremely well. So, um, yeah, but you know, well done by Jin Lun, recognizing that it didn't need to to be afraid of the Alpine deck and, and uh, banning out Red Air, um, playing those games um, well, picking the Panzer Suck, making it work. So I'm I'm feeling uh, feeling optimistic for for Jin Lun's future in this tournament. Absolutely. And let's bring up the bracket to discuss Jin Lun's future in this tournament because the semifinals, they will be taking on Birdo Burrito in the bottom, uh, who had uh, upset Jay King, one of his good friends, 2-0. Uh, but next up, we're going to have No One 5 taking on Cappuccino. So uh, again, two solid players who have been here before. No One really on top of their game. Cappuccino having a nice victory over Vinny in the quarterfinals. Uh, fingers crossed, Ollie, that we're going to see uh, Noen's U.S. Soviet deck that we've been waiting for forever. I, I wonder if other players are just looking at this list going, I don't know what this is, I don't know how it works, and therefore I don't want to have to try and play against it. Probably. Um, I mean, <laughs> I... I don't know, like exclamation point decks in chat that will give you access to the entire deck list. If you guys are, you know, close to, to full collection or have some wild cards to spare, go try that deck out. Um, it's an interesting experience um, to say the least. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm just hoping that we get to see it, but would not surprise me if Cappuccino bans it out um, as well. Be just because it is such an un unknown quantity, right? right? I feel like in some cases you might even just be like, you know what, I'll just take the L against Brit Air and beat him twice on his other deck, right? Um, but, you know, we'll see. I think Cappuccino is uh, a player that that they're not afraid of anything, so so we'll see if uh, if they let that one through. And then on the bottom side there, Jinlun versus Birdo. Birdo, of course, fantastic player, looks to be in great form as well, um, having having beaten out Jay King there, uh, two to zero. That's no small feat, uh, especially you know when I feel like I feel like Jay King is in good form right now. Mm -hmm. um, so you know just. Even more credit to Birdo for, for uh, getting that 2-0 there. But, you know, Jin Lun just showed that he does have a powerful deck lineup to play with. Um, let's see if he's able to carry that success with him through the semifinals and, and make it into the finals of an OCC. I think that would be uh, an extremely impressive feat for him to accomplish as well. I think, I think that bottom half of the bracket is going to be really exciting because you have somebody like Jin Lun who just 
you know, had a huge mountain to overcome in darkness in the first round, went ahead, got that victory. Birdo getting the upset 2-0 against his friend Jaking. I think both those players are probably riding a high into this next matchup. And I think that, you know, sometimes in an event like this, momentum can carry you far. If you have, you know, that, that big victory, you're feeling confident, you, you can, you know, you can make it to the finals. You can get into uh, a really good scenario. So I'm, I'm very curious to see both of those bottom players in the bottom half of that bracket. Curious to see where they end up because, you know, there's a good chance you do face no one five in the finals. And that is going to be a tough feat for whoever makes it there uh, to go up against him. But uh, speaking of no in, we've got you and uh, and Spoos, Kasten. Noen versus Cappuccino to determine who will be our first finalist here in September's OCC. Yep, welcome everybody to the first semi-final series here today. Um, it is, of course, myself and Spooz bringing you the action this time around, and it's going to be Noen 5 versus Cappuccino. We're going to take a quick look at the deck lists here before getting on into the action. But as a refresher there, here is the what we could call the draft list from Noen5. Um, we saw him effectively win a game in series number one using only dive bombings and uh, fifth rangers. So <laughs> yeah. still a ton of value in play to see from this deck. Uh, but, you know, other than other than calling it the draft list, I mean, it's just... It's just a supremely powerful, high value, high effectiveness deck of cards. Yeah, absolutely. And you just summarized the first or second match of the first series perfectly. It was just fifth Rangers and dive bombing winning in the game. And yeah, I, I want to see more of this deck than just this. I think it has way more potential with the FWs and Panzer Fours. Just an overall very strong list and a good pick looked so far here for Noen. Yeah. And then next up, um, it's going to be Noen 5's uh, Brit Italy air deck. And uh, a little bit weird, right? I mean, there's no shelling, there's no sexton, there's no ultra. Um, you know, those are cards that we've come to kind of uh, expect from these decks. Um, there's no gladiators either, right? Um, it's just the swordfish, um, and he's got the albacores, but then he's got those Fiat CR42s, and he's got the Canona DA47s. 48, That's eight units that are all one cost coming from the Italy side, and in game number one of today, we saw that work out extremely well in his favor. Yeah. All right, and then finally, we have the the much spoken about deck here um, that seemingly doesn't have a, a clear win condition. Um, it is US uh, Soviet, uh, bringing a ton of ramp with the war machine, uh, with the an hour of needs and the war bonds. Um, he is packing those two mobilizations for draw. So he's able to draw six cards, but most of his draw is centered into those corner masters. Um, he has some discard protection with the M4A1s, but then he's just got a ton of research. He's got the U.S. military research to potentially guarantee himself uh, a way to those Manhattan projects, but three spy rings as well. And I feel like, I feel like the win conditions here, they're hard to spot, but there are many, right? Um, it's like full research win condition. It is. Uh, a seaborne invasion, mass deployment, uh, it, it, win condition as well, but it's it's kind of hard to see it because it's not something that we're usually you know used to, and even the partisans, right? The partisans can come in clutch when you have enough credits to take a massive target. You know, maybe there's like a tiger or something. You know, an eight eight yeah. tank that can't be pinned on the other side, and you're like, well, I'm just gonna yoink that throw it across the field, hit eight damage to your face and put it back into your hand. And you're going to be so slow to really deliver the effectiveness of that unit that I'm going to capitalize on that and win the game. So super interesting deck. Um, and I hope we get to see it. But Spooz, why don't you take us through Cappuccino's deck since we haven't really looked into these uh, so far. Yeah, I would like to. Um, so Cappuccino brought today and was very successful in the first match against Winnie 2-1 with, with his lineup. Um, the first match is a US-Germany frontline mid-range deck. We've seen it a long time ago everywhere around um, and then suddenly it disappeared. Um, looks like it's back. Um, J King also brought a deck like this today. A deck that is centered around controlling the frontline, 
and buffing your units with we can do it and then just overwhelm your opponent um but also benefiting from having the front line there with the shermans that give you draw and overall a pretty pretty solid deck and it's cool to see that one back in in action i think the fifth rangers kind of give it uh, gave it a comeback in in the current matter because this card did some work today and it it looks very very strong interesting is that cappuccino is playing triple through the breach um a card that i have not seen in a while um i'm i'm questioning what this is against because against with air it's it's not good against that because all of these units have three hp but yeah there might might be a reason to to put in that early removal maybe even against alpine because against alpine this is really good it's good answers against the works pioneers and all these one drops and two drops alpine units that come on turn one and two that might be one of the reasons but overall a, a solid deck and it's cool to see that one back today like why are people tacking against alpine spoos what happened i, I don't, don't know, know I, I, fun fact all alpine U, uh, players um are out already so <laughs> <laughs> probably not the best idea to bring alpine today but yeah let's jump over to the second deck that cappuccino is bringing um a deck that i would call a super fast heinz um looks like it's just the basic fast heinz lineup with all these pencil twos and uh Greif. Yeah, fast Heinz. <laughs> and then you have Soviet as ally, and your only units are the 554s regiment, that 1-1 one, one with zero deployment cost and zero, zero operation cost. And then you have double Blitzkrieg in the deck. Uh, just a very aggressive lineup that can put out so much early damage. And I Three want to... Iron from the north? Yeah, yeah, Iron from the north. I don't know, this deck is here to just overwhelm your opponent on turn one, turn two. Just build a huge front line up to turn three and then just play Blitzkrieg and it's over. That's yeah. the game plan, I guess. Once you Win lose the front four. line, when you are up against the front line deck with this deck and your opponent is playing Red Devils, it could be hard to come back there. Yeah. But once you go first and establish a good board, you can pull out an early win, I guess. And yeah. Looks like it, it worked quite well in match number one against Willy. Yeah. And third deck is, yeah, we've already seen this a few times today. It's just bird air. It's everywhere. Also bringing in Mar Nostrum. Also playing ATS. And I think Cappuccino is one of the few players here that is also playing Wellington. Yeah, I, I mean... Other, yeah. No, I'm saying he's playing Wellington, he's playing Sexton, he's playing Shelling, um, he's pay playing the Ultra. Um, all of these are, are, he's playing the Gladiators, right? Um, so all of these cards are different from No and Five's deck list. So even if we were to potentially see a Brit Air versus Brit Air matchup here, the decks are in like different enough so that it would potentially be an exciting matchup to watch. Absolutely, yeah. It's, I think Cappuccino's list is more a little bit more control based with with all these, as you mentioned, Shelling, Sexton, and yeah, no one's list is just full aggro and spam out damage and yeah, just kill your opponent. Don't care about controlling the board. Well, we have the bands at the ready here, and there is going to be no Britain allowed in this series as well. We've come to expect these bands. No Britter, no Britter. That means we get to see no one fives US stack. Maybe. Wait, why? No, you, well, can, you can play yeah, the other deck and lose twice with it. Yeah, so. it's true, it's true. Uh, it, it, but please. we have a chance we see it. Last we, match we did not even have a chance. Now we have a chance to see it. Hope we just get it out of the way in game number one. I like, I just, I want to see the brain that created that deck play that deck because it is confusing to me. Actually, I think we might see it first because with triple um, Scorch Earth, um, he's so good against Cappuccino's US German frontline and Germany's Soviet super fast Heinz. It, Scorch Earth is just the nuts against it. And then you can just ramp, 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 mass deployment, and hopefully kill Cappuccino. I think we might see this deck first. If I would be known, I would pick this one first, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, 
that's that's the way my test game went against Bread Air, right? Um, I was being absolutely slammed on the board, but then a Squirt's Earth just slowed down the damage output enough for me to take over the game again, and that seems like a good plan uh, going up against both of the lists that Cappuccino has access to, right? So uh, there's also, you know, there's strap bombing in there. Uh, do, do you know what I thought about um, earlier when we were doing the pre-show? How long has it been since you saw carpet bombing, Spoos? In like in competitive matchup, it's a it's a lot. Yeah, I mean we had we had the super duper combo around, so that was way better yeah. than carpet bombing. But even today, we did not see a single copy of of carpet bombing so far. I mean, the Brit yeah, Air um, Empire Strikes is way better, and yeah, Brit Control is just not present at the moment. As long as Brit Italy Air is so dominant. So yeah, no carpet bombing. Not even in in any other control. It's like Soviet when Britain is is the ally. It's just too expensive and not doing too too much at the moment. I mean, I remember um, there was a period shortly after we introduced carpet bombing as uh, as a reward for players as they completed like the, the final unlocking level of Britain, where in the reviews we would constantly get like negative reviews from people that ran into carpet bombing. So they were just like, this is this crazy card, you know, just airplanes come from the sky and drop bombs all over the place and everything gets killed. And, you know, people were just like shocked talking about how, you know, insane this card was. Um, people, even at the higher levels of player were like, man, carpet bombing is so oppressive. We need to get rid of it. And then just boom, disappeared. I haven't seen it in a, in a tournament deck or a high level deck in like a year. Right. Um, I just I thought that was interesting. It's just a random yeah. thought that popped into my head. I just, you know, we used to see it all the time, right? And even against like big boards, you would sometimes see back to back carpet bombings just wiping out a lot of resources and a lot of investment. But we just we haven't seen it for for such a long time. Um, yeah, I, I, I wonder... think it, I think it's it's just too expensive for what it's like to to do or for what is is reason why it's in the game. Because against Jagro or fast Heinz decks. Um, there it's good removal. These units have three health, but it's turn seven where you can play it. And <laughs> against these aggressive decks, you're dead by turn seven if carpet bombing <laughs> yeah. is your only way to deal with the board. And yeah, against all these other stuff, this German frontline, uh, this US German frontline deck, where all these or lots of units have four health, all this, also the new fifth rangers have four health, a lot of buff Brit Air units have four health. And yeah, their carpet bombing is just not good at the moment. Shelling is a way better option as dealing one damage, denying your opponent's aggression, and then you can find better answers than, than carpet bombing. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. I'm gonna go after after this tournament, I'm gonna go make some decks with carpet bombing and bring it back, you know. But the players are in the match, and indeed, Nolan 5 is gonna be bringing the US deck here first. And there we see it on the other side, Cappuccino, the super fast Heinz deck. I love that mm. name. That's such a cool name. Um, I wonder why they would mulligan Blitzkrieg. Like, yeah. it seems like you would just want to have that. But, you know, I guess. I'm also oh. wondering, isn't that what's the, the purpose of the deck? Just having the Blitzkrieg and three, four units in the front line? Hmm. Maybe we missed the print of this, this deck and there is another another style to play it. Maybe you're more relying on the fast Heinz, but better have the Blitzkrieg in hand than looking for the fast Heinz. Yeah, no one five ah, But Heinz. also looking for the Befehl. Oh, that might be a reason. I mean, <laughs> that's wow. that's looking like a powerful board turn one, Spooz. Uh, can't disagree with that one. But Brian's Irregulars already stopping all the aggression here. Not any way to remove it for Cappuccino. Clem can play the Grive. But and then imagine, start imagine chipping if they away. Had, imagine if they had Blitzkrieg next turn. Sure. Yeah, not going to happen. That's yeah. crazy. Um, no one with the most expensive hand I've ever seen here. <laughs> Mass deployment, partisans, no war machines. Really happy or really glad that he found the Bryansk. Otherwise, it would be even worse. Yeah, uh, but I mean... He's got two more of them. He's not found any of his scorched earths. He's not found any of his um, uh, any of his uh, other damage uh, abilities or or uh, ramp either. I wonder um, if Cappuccino's just dropping the flam panzer here for for tempo, or if he's going Heinkel. I I can tell you, like 
looking at no one's hand now, this is exactly how I felt when I played this deck. I was just like, what am I supposed to do? But then somehow I won, right? Like, but I don't see how he's winning here without finding Scorchers. I mean, that's a big... There it oh, is. Oh, what? <laughs> there it is. Okay. Speaking about Scorched Earth, and that slows Cappuccino down so much now. Yep. Even with the Pursuit, all of them have an insane amount of... And Grive on board, still have two Operation costs. Now he just, he just ramps. You know, it's like ramp. Then ramp and then he starts be... shipping away with the P-47, slowly yep. but surely removing all these threats on board. Actually, I think this might be might have been a reason to not keep the cop uh, to the the Blitzkrieg. Because when you know that your opponent is having triple scorched earth, you know you never get enough damage out early on to bring in an early Blitzkrieg. Better find units. Because the big problem with Noan's deck is it's having zero AoE. So you cannot kill all these units. You can only kill unit by unit by unit. And that Last is what lines. Cappuccino can abuse here. Yeah, but how good is this fast Heinz? <laughs> I mean, I, I can move the Martyr is, and buff too, but I'm getting familiar feelings here, <laughs> right? I'm just I'm looking at this and I'm just like, uh... but then again, like Cappuccino doesn't have the credits to really deal any damage or do anything. I mean, he could deal three damage to face if he wants to, but. That's not really sustainable in the long run. He's not going to win by doing that, I think, because the over time that P47 is just going to take over. Um, there's the Partisans option now for knowing 5 as well. He's going to have a V1 Flying Bomb next turn uh, to, to take out two of those units. Somehow it works. Yeah, Cappuccino, he cannot even attack with the Heinkel. He needs to attack the P47 with it. Just delivering three damage, and that's your turn. And in the meantime, no one can just deploy another P47, trade one unit away with the other one, and suddenly you're just left with a 1 1 in the front line. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I know! It's weird. It's weird. But like, I maybe this deck was just like, huh, what can I do with Scorched Earth? You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> It Let's slows build a deck down. around Scorched Earth, yeah. 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 Kill the Martyr, kill the Panzer too, or even the Grife. Not sure what's better here. I think you just, you just kill the Grife. I mean... Probably, huh? It's just so much potential with the Grife with zero operation costs, yeah. And this Panzer two in the front line is not doing anything. Even if it finds Blitzkrieg now, it's not doing a whole lot there. Can only attack with one unit. Yeah. Wow. This is... I can feel the pain of Cappuccino here, honestly. Look at this, this red 12 there, and you know, oh, I will never deliver 12 damage here soon. He's able to deliver one. <laughs> um, yeah, the Panzer 3F, it does give blitz, allows him to push it into the front line, but, you know, there's there are options. There's another P47. Ah, come on. Uh, there's a V1 flying bomb. So some answers P47. here. No. That P47 is a great card. It absolutely is, and especially in combination with the Scorch Earth. Looks like because your opponent needs to spend so much credits to get to the front line, and then there's just a P47 waiting and saying hello and bye bye. Oh god. You definitely have to get the three F. Yeah. And And you take out like you can take out the Heinkel or something if you want. Um Doesn't Or just go face. Starting to chip away here. Still a long way to go, but also Cappuccino needs to find their way back into this match. Panther Cappuccino... 2 is not really. Cappuccino is slowly getting to the point, though, where, like, they have enough credits to potentially push, like, two 
Panzer 2As from hand into the front line, into a Blitzkrieg, and somehow deal a bunch of damage, but... Yeah, it's far from over here. It's looking very dominant from Noen, but as you mentioned, it just needs two, three Panzers, Blitz them to the front line, play Blitzkrieg, and the game is over. So Noen 5, not really safe here. But still a way to go until that is happening. Keep in mind, Noen 5 has only found one piece of his uh, draw. Like, uh, one piece of his uh, ramp, I was going to say. I would have loved to see a fast Heinz here, maybe. Don't fully understand that play. He gave him P47 back now, can get rid of the 2 4 and kill the whole front line or the Panzer, uh, the Flam Panzer. Maybe Cappuccino miscalculated the credits here, I guess. It would have been smart to, to push the back with the Pursuit, get the Panzer 2 to the front line, pay a fast Heinz, and then deliver 7 damage to the face. But that play was... I don't understand that one. I'm, I'm pretty sure this was a miscalculation. Because now there's just another P47. And Cappuccino in an even more... Or even worse spot then. Not even killing the 2-4. He's got the flying bomb to do that. And he's able to attack as well. Able to get rid of all tanks. No, nope, opts not to. <clears throat> Interesting. Hope that the four operation cost is just enough to not make it a threat. The comet could come out um, and start chipping away. That that would apply some pressure. What do you pick here? Panzer 2A and hopefully... I'm still surprised that the Spoils of War has still not been played yet. Uh, tries to move it to the front line for a lucky Blitzkrieg shot, maybe. I would just attack. Like, if you move it to the front line, it's getting killed anyways and you don't get any value out of it. Yeah. If you want to operate it, just attack into one of these. But all these options not really great. Spamming out tanks, and I mean, at this point, Cappuccino's just saying, like, I need some bodies on the board. But there are some research options um, for Noen 5. I mean, he can find the US research, he can smoke screen his HQ, uh, you know, he can find the British research, he can heal. Um, and, and he can do both of those things while attacking with all of the fighters that he has on board and effectively allowing him to, to clear most of what is on board at the moment. A yeah, scary situation here for no one. Like if, if Cappuccino can manage to find the Blitzkrieg, no one loses here. So the, the task for no one now is whether to find death charges or to remove as many threats as possible from the board. And how is he doing that? I would have loved to see him kill the 2-4 earlier. Partisans. Oh, he just blocks the front line. <laughs> yeah, this is also a good way to keep your opponent away from playing a Blitzkrieg. <laughs> Can't Blitzkrieg if you're not in the front line. Not even to the front line. Right, makes it with one, uh, potentially. Yeah. Potentially Deliver two. one more damage, but keeping the unit on a smoke screen, but also playing into a strat bombing there from Noen. There's the US research. Um, I mean, still, we haven't seen any ramp, really, from Noen. He's played, what, one war bond? Or, or, uh, that's about it. He's got a mass deployment there as well, if he needs to kind of ripcord out a bunch of units at this point you really have to play death charges three tanks or you just look for strat bombing in your 
in your deck. Everything else is just too risky to lose to the to the Blitzkrieg here. And that's what no one is doing probably, yeah. Yeah, using the Quartermasters to cycle through his deck as well. I'm probably going to play that War Machine also. Now he's at 15 credits and... Oh, now he finds all the ramp. Yeah. And Cappuccino Bye, still having Spoils of War in hand. Did not even play it when he had credits floating. Did but he? I mean, this is dangerous. This is a dangerous situation now for Noah 5 because oh. there's the Blitzkrieg. Yeah. I mean, yes, he's got his uh, HQ smokescreen at the moment, but he only has two units on board and he's got, what, five units against him in the front line and he needs to take most of them out. Four units. And there's the fast Heinz. Needs to find something good out of his other spy ranks. So this is not good enough. What is he looking for? A seaborne invasion, probably, huh? Yeah. Did not, Did find, not find it. it. This is not good enough. Nope. Other spy rank. Is it good enough? 15? No, this can still operate enough units there. there it finds it. Unit. But that's only one turn. <laughs> that's one turn, yeah. What are you doing after that? Using radar to try and heal up a little bit. And then playing depth charges. Has to pray for the Seaborn. He has 16 credits, Seaborn costs uh, 9, but he doesn't have any draw in hand. I mean, he he could quarter masters and, and in our need, but that's going to put him below the the amount that he needs to, to Seaborn. Mobilization, he still needs to rip out you know, some cards. His hand is full. Probably just Scorch Urs and then... You know, overdraw one though, right? Yeah, yeah definitely overdrawing one. Could play he... two Scorch Urs, but... I mean... Can't, right? Has no, to play mo mobilization now to find the Seaborn. Seaborn only out here. And Briansk can help. Cappuccino can op only operate three units next turn with the Blitzkrieg. And he can blitz out the fifth Rangers with zero op cost, and he can take out the 3 4 or take out the 6 1. Yeah, definitely going for the 6 1 here, maybe. This is still not enough damage. It's only 13. <laughs> if no if I wins this, I'll be amazed, right? I, he still has so much work to do here. Still chances with the Quartermaster's War Machines to find the Seaborn. Yep. But then there's the Comet waiting, right? So th there's no way that no one is winning this now. That's true, that's true. Comet will just end up the game. Wow. It's yeah, such a weird big... deck. Yeah, it's it's really the downside of the deck. There is no carpet bombing in it. Yeah, even the worst Seaborn in the world. Comet's gonna end it. <sighs> There's no carpet bombing, but I, I mean, I feel like there were also, you know, there were also some questionable choices being made earlier on, on both sides, right? Um, but... Yeah, I can fully I understand the, 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 or not fully understand, but I can find a, an, an understanding for not keeping the Blitzkrieg there and better find units first. And then with, with the Heinkel and Spoils of War, you can try to find Blitzkrieg later when you establish the board. 
But yeah, no one made some really questionable plays at some point, not getting rid of units with with four health that he could easily easy kill with the deployment effect and then just wasting the flying bomb on that. Uh, Flampanzer there instead of other units. Mm, I mean, I like it's known he has an idea, I'm pretty sure, but for my understanding, those plays looked really strange at some point. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like he didn't fully utilize the P-47s in terms of their trading potential once yeah. they were on board, right? Um, and he was pro probably thinking like, oh, I mean, it's going to be, it's fine, you know, it's going to be, um, the, the Scorched Earth is going to take care of this and he's not going to want to operate that. But it allowed Cappuccino to continue kind of building that presence um, and, and get to the point where... He, he had enough tanks. But maybe again, maybe this just is a little bit weak to the amount of tanks in Cappuccino's uh, deck, right? Um, yeah, so it looks like there's there was unlimited amount and also unlimited amount of units. Not too many orders, but unit after unit came out. And yeah, without any, any order that can target a lot of units, you just find yourself in a situation where no one was, was there. Through the breach value on the fifth rangers here. Yeah, it might also be a reason why it's in the deck. Like a lot of your units have, or not a lot, but usually when attacking fifth rangers, stick there with two or less health, and then so the breach can easily just finish them off. But yeah, Brian's doing a lot of work here. And no one already had eight credits. And found the US research. Additional ramp plus the potential to give his HQ smoke screen next turn or one turn after. Or whenever he needs it. So do we see the first Sherman here? Probably. I would expect so. Yeah, it just too good to not do it, especially with... uh, why not attack with the whirlwind? Just, mm. just didn't take an extra damage there. Yeah, this is a good question, honestly. It would be a two now. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's planning on hitting it with the uh, Sherman next turn or something. I don't know, but... But, yeah, still makes no sense. I could bring it in through the breach range when you attack with the Wilberwind, and then none of your units is receiving the three damage. So, yeah. Um, Slight misplay there. Now, what is no one going to do? Is he going to go uh, evolve that research? I mean, he's, he's at the awkward 10 credits where, you know, using war bonds isn't necessarily what you want to do. Instead, it looks like he's just going to pop two levels of that research. Um, this this puts him, like, a couple turns away from, from having access to those uh, Manhattan projects. Yeah, actually, two turns. Yeah, you can go Manhattan next turn and can still operate the the Sherman and the M4A1, and that is really good for for no one here because the nukes are insanely strong against Cappuccino's deck. Usually, floating the board with units that have three health or more, and these nukes just killing all the stuff. The problem could be if there are a lot of Shermans and Fifth Rangers that got buffed by. We can do it then one nuke is not enough to kill those units. That is true. Do you remember the old nukes? They're I do. Cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they were really nice. So, what is Cappuccino doing here? You're like, Cappuccino is burdened with choice this turn. <laughs> He's just like, what do I do? Why did I not attack with a bubble then? Those face. Um, well, no one is not playing air defense or stuff like that, right? That Cappuccino could have played around. No. 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 So, uh, even. Yeah, maybe just too fast. Too fast played there and did not see that the Wilbur could also attack. And there are the nukes. 
Nukes and four damage taken off the field there. And next turn, he's going to be at 12 credits, so he's able to war bonds and drop a nuke. But, I mean, Cappuccino is able to blitz out, you know, four damage to face. Um, if he so chooses, he's able to um, play one Panzer 35T plus a week and do it. Not that that's going to really save him. to empty his hand a little bit and then go for the draw and two oh, hellcats double hellcat and strat bombing yeah and no one is besides the spy ring and the potential to get the raider out of the brick research not having a lot of healing on the deck this could be a 2-0 for cappuccino here and that makes ollie's prediction completely wrong today yeah yeah and it really looks like it. Like it very naval well bombardment, not really great against the Hellcat. Scorched Earth also not helping. Oh, Seaborn. Seaborn. That Seaborn can help. Can indeed help. He could Seaborn plus... Uh, but I mean, first the Marines and the existing Hellcat on board have the potential to trade into whatever comes out of the Seaborn. He also has fifth Rangers, so plenty of ways to victory here for Cappuccino. Yeah, not especially next turn, but for sure the turn after. Naval he... Bombardment, really? it's not going to be enough. Uh... Oh, that, that California is huge. He throws it back into hand to force the overdraw. Uh, but yeah, you said it, that, that California is, is pretty big. And also that, that, that unit usually has one attack, but now where the, the, where the California is adjacent, suddenly has three attack and no one cheated out two units with eight attack in total out of and the Seaborn. Usually you only get six attack. And you got yeah. a California. This was the best outcome ever, I guess. I think there's... And yeah. He only needs to deal three more damage because he's got the nuke. Yeah, it's insane. It looks like with this outcome, no one can actually win this. We can do it. Coming out, that's gonna keep him alive. <clears throat> but I mean, he's one, one HP. HP. Yeah, and he still needs to kill. Cappuccino still needs to kill the California somehow. And there is a fifth ranger, another threat that can go as an eight eight to the front line now. Yeah, that can go as an eight eight into the front line. Um, it does, however, cost the entire turn to do so. So he's not gonna get the attack off with the, the second California if he opts to go for that. Why? It's only eight credits. No, it's twelve credits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would have but I mean, been. he's he's gonna he's gonna have to go for the zero off cost four four, right? Um, you know, he, he's not gonna get it out as an eight eight because it would have he was one credit short of that. And then boom, it works somehow. It works, Spooz. I can't believe it. Like, also look at the hand size of Cappuccino. But this Seaborn was just too good. Without that Seaborn, I think. Cappuccino would have won that, but that that was the most ridiculous C1 I've ever seen. Also with the with the yeah. cheat there, getting getting eight attack out of it was <laughs> compared to the first C1 we saw, there was a one one and a five five. I think Cappuccino would have easily dealt with that, but the California and no third breach in hand for Cappuccino. No one five still in the match, one one now, and now know. we have. German US. Yeah. German, German US, US versus that mid-range deck again. And I think I think to a large extent, this is probably a more difficult deck for Cappuccino to deal with than the US deck. I guess also, apparently I wasn't that confused um, when I was playing that that US deck from No. 5. Apparently it's just really wonky, right? It just puts you in weird situations. Um I'm still not sure if it's a good deck or not. Like honestly, I have I have no clue. But I mean, it's gotten him to the the third game here in this series, and and let's see if he's able to close it out. Dive bombing. Well, dive bombing. Yeah, dive bombing. Really underrated card in my opinion. In these situations, is good. And just remember the first match from Known where it was just insanely good to deal with these six sixes and keep your eight eight at eight health. 
and no one with a really decent starting hand here. Found the war machine and fifth rangers in hand, so we can already blitz them out next turn. But also Cappuccino. Whoa, what is this hand? It's a good hand. Um, Absolutely. Cappuccino. A lot of power on the board already. Four damage threatening in the front line. Got red devils and another 30 second infantry to threaten from the back line. Now, no in five. He's just going to do no in five yeah. things. He's going to ramp. Um, he really needs to go to Leopold as soon as possible. That's where he's going for the ramp. He can still start the trade Doritos next turn. Ooh. Ooh, that 99s is huge. Going for that... a Hellcat and then Panzer 3 maybe. One credit short to having an 8-8 eight, eight here. Yeah. I think Hellcat, Hellcat plus War Machine makes sense here. Oh, just dropping the Panzer 3L, putting more power on the board, allowing him to trade whatever might come next. It would still be one credit away from the from the Leopold, so definitely yeah. agreeing with that one here and can use the fifth Rangers next turn, but that's a lot of stuff in the front line here for Cappuccino. No one needs more answers. Can get rid of two units. But the only good thing that is going for no one here is that Cappuccino is not having Blitzkrieg in that deck, am I right? Uh, he does, he does. He has a copy. Does he? Yeah, he, he Oh yeah, him. one copy, you're right, yeah. But another Hellcat, that's four damage from the back. He can deal six damage. He can leave no one five on one HP and he does have a strat bombing in the deck, right? Or on 2 HP, sorry. Really, really tough. Not Deciding not to go for it, keeping it in hand. Red Devil's also very annoying. Yeah, and... They're going to get Leopolded back. And, I mean, we know that, but like... Yeah, I would have liked to see the Hellcat, honestly. Especially since next turn is Leopold's turn, and no one 5 needs to spend his whole turn to deploy Leopold, and then you can just deliver another 4 damage with the Hellcat. Now this Leopold is just too oh, good. No, that was so smart. He traded out the 4-2-0 op cost 5th Rangers, which would have been able to block the front line and protect the Leopold on that turn. That would have that would have thrown so many wrenches in his plans because he would have he would have not had the credits to throw out the first Marines, kill the 4-2 the in the front line, and do the Hellcat, which would have given um No and Five's Leopold at least one turn of free reign. Definitely want to see the Hellcat next turn. Do you? What do, What else can you do? Wait. Yeah, these Red Devils are good to stall the front line, but... No one 5 really rolling the dice there. He's, he's trying to make sure that he's able to put something in the front line in between his Leopold and a potential Hellcat. Because just the, the Leopold would have not been... If he wants to win this game, he needs to, to keep his Leopold alive for a couple of turns. That's just... I feel like something that he needs to do. Yeah, I could already drop it next turn if he wants to, because now he's at the 11, can at least move one unit to the front line. Ah, uh, tough one. No one really under pressure now. Every decision that he's doing from now on, he always has to take into consideration that Cappuccino's just blitzing out the extra 8 damage here. And that is really the situation you don't want to be in. Like Cappuccino's in a complete different situation here. They can just... Cappuccino pulls the yeah. cord, deploys the Hellcat. Now that Hellcat is going to get traded by the 38T. And then I expect we should see a Leopold. Alternatively, I mean, dead alternatively, no one five could clear the board, now. right? Yeah, he's yeah. dead to strap bombing, right? He can clear the board the with his ones. own Hellcat. Uh, yeah, and have a few units in the front line. I think, or two units in the front line, even. 
that's that's really a better situation than just deploying a Leopold and move one unit to the front line. Yeah, also, you... Does no one five have anything that can heal him in this deck? I, I'm not sure if he's playing. Um, no, he can do it, but no, he he does then... not. Probably he has not. no healing. So right now, this is a race to find strat bombing from Cappuccino, and no in five needs to effectively just end the game, preferably yesterday. That is not happening with that draw, at least. You just like hit okay. face and drop the Swalber? I think so. Like, Leopold is not the play here. You don't want to give your opponent the fifth ranger back. And Schwalbe is a lot of damage that can potentially come out of this. Other, on the other hand, you just give your opponent a 5-4-2 a in the front line and a, another... You get rid of the sky train and just hope your opponent is not finding strat bombing. Oh my god. And he needs to deal with both of these units next turn, right? Yeah, that's the big downside. It probably has to sacrifice the Comet, but even the Comet is now no longer good enough. He needs to Leopold now. Yeah. Oh, dive bombing. Not good enough. It has to be Leopold. Schwalbe goes face. And now a Hellcat, Fingers also crossed. enough. Blitzkrieg, not what he needs. That yeah. There's 13 damage on the board. This is gonna RTHQ be no HQ is under smoke screen. Oh, it's under smoke screen! First Marines! Uh, oh, if you oh can still my God. deal with the board. Cappuccino really needs the threat bombing now. Cappuccino, I mean, both, we know that that 6 uh, four, 4 Sherman is gonna die. Um, that 3 4 First Marines can be traded out from the Schwalbe. Uh, he does even have a dive bombing if he wants to to do like to protect the HP on his Smalba. But anything that is able to blitz across the field at this point from Cappuccino is going to be enough to take out Nova Five. Plus, he's got strat bombing as well. Uh, it's going to be interesting. How many how many cards does Cappuccino have left in his deck? Uh, can we see that? Yeah, also the problem that no one is having here when Cappuccino is just playing... Oh, 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 there it is! Okay, wow. Probably the best strategic bombing Cappuccino ever drew in, in their life. <laughs> wow, this was really a nail-biter. Cool. I, almost, any other, almost any other card would have not been enough for Cappuccino to win there. Uh, so I mean, close. I forget the credits that they were on exactly, but I mean, he potentially could have played the Sherman with a PIR in the front line to get two more pulls at it. Uh, I think he was down to like at least the bottom 20, 15 cards of his deck. So, wow, that was so close. That was that was just one turn away. Like if, if he didn't have that first Marines in hand, no one five would have ended the game with the 13 yeah. damage on board. I mean, not not um, necessarily, because there was a we can do it, and he could heal up to sixteen or something like that. But yeah, I, I see your point. It was everything aligned there for Cappuccino, and with the strat bombing top deck in the end, wow. <laughs> he had the, he had the comet as well. So even with the we can do it, it wouldn't have been enough. He had oh, thirteen. Uh, he had, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had I seventeen damage. He had seventeen I for damage. Forgot about the comet. Yeah, you're correct. Wow, congratulations, Ooh. Cappuccino. Hard fought victory there. Uh, a couple of nail biters of a match that happened in that semifinals, but that means that No One Five is going to be relegated to competing for the third place. And apparently, I curse people when I predict that they're going to make it to the finals. Neither No One Five nor J King are going to be present in the grand finals later on, but Cappuccino sure as hell is going to be there. So. Well, let's throw it back over to the host desk uh, where I believe, no, we're going to cut to a small break before we come back with the second semifinal here and, of course, then the third place and the grand finals. So we'll see you in just a few seconds. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Jinnor bringing just... Brit there, and Birdo bringing Soviet self damage first. That is interesting. Isn't that really bad against both decks from Jin Lun? Maybe, but maybe not. No, not look not at... against the Soviet self damage, but. But I mean, look at the look at the, the starting air? hand. Look at the starting hand. He's got two red dawns to deal with some of the early planes coming out. He's got a Yak Seven to deal with uh, some of the bombers that might come out, and the hand from Jin Lun not looking too hot. Another Red Dawn as well. A lot of the early removal being found here from Birdo. You just play the T80 here, right? Uh, mm, I mean, against Brit Air, it's good to have any unit on board that you can afford, but I think, yeah, Yak 7 may be a better option. Because this cannot be targeted by the Alba Core. The T80 could have been targeted by that and then would just die the turn after. Yuck is giving you a draw and is good against these swordfishes. Uh, oh, I would have loved to have the 456 earlier. Yeah, but I mean, now at least um, he has some cards that allow him to benefit from dealing damage to himself. He's able to play the 456, the Red Dawn, one of those swordfish. Yeah. And uh, feel kind of fairly good because the Yak-7 is going to be protecting um, his HQ from receiving any damage over the top. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, he's just going to remove them both and play the 34th guards, which is also something that he can do. <laughs> yeah, otherwise he would have been pretty weak against close air support play there with one bomber on the board and one potential Fiat or another one-drop follow-up. So just get rid of them. Also sets himself to 10 health now, which is not optimal, especially because Jinlan is having Spitfire and Finest Hour combo already in hand. Yeah. Still a few turns to go, but once this is coming out, could be hard for Birdo when he's not finding more than that one guard there. Yes, uh, but at the same time, he does have Great Patriotic War, and next turn, Sunrise Division is going to be active, right? Um, but look ooh. at this Spitfire and the Yuck is keeping reducing <sighs> the HQ health. So you play the 456, he's probably gonna bloody sickle the Spitfire then. Um, and push up the 34th guards. 34th guards can, of course, be negated by that Spitfire from Jin Lun. This is the problem with Soviet self-damage. I mean, we talk about the early damage potential of Brit Air, and Birdo has just taken it upon himself to deal 11 to his own HQ in the first uh, four turns, first three turns. Yeah, and the problem is now his good matchup is no longer present. Like the german Italy matchup, you usually want to play against Brit Air, and now when Jin Lan wins... There's no longer the option to play into that, and he has to fight with this German Italy mirror or just stick with Soviet control into that deck, and I'm not sure how, how the matchup is there. But so far he could guard up here, denying to go down to two health. And also applying a little bit of pressure to Jinlan now. Also not having too many answers against that 6-6. Six, six. So we can pin it with the albacore, trade the guard it. away, maybe. Yeah, uh, and I mean, even then, like, well, at that point, he's still, it's still tough for Birdo to trade out that Spitfire, right? Because he's going to have to sack his Yak into it. He's still two turns away from pulling the Great Patriotic War. Um, This is tough. And close air support additionally, giving that Spitfire one more health. So it's out of Yuck Winter Warfare range now. Or Sickle range. I think this might be game. Almost game, at least. Um... There is... Is there one chance? Scouting party? No, I need to play just the 33rd Recon. 33rd Winter Warfare and find a Red Dawn. 
It's not gonna have enough credits to do anything now. I don't know. A red thorn would help, but did not find it. That's it. That's game number one. Yeah, but he already used what two or three two. of his red dawns? Yeah, two. Three, I, I think, think he used three. I feel I like. I thought he traded the two HMS Illustrious Bombers away, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, not too many outs there, but I think this was the only chance at this point to to win there, or to not die at least. And yeah, that Spitfire played on curve for Tempo there, really doing its work. Birdo, 1-0 behind. Yeah, now, I mean, I, I really have to... I really have to put a question mark on bringing Soviet self damage into the first match yeah. there, knowing that Jinlan is probably going to be bringing Brit Air. Yes, you do need to win against it eventually, right? Um, yeah, and, even and you... even when when Jinlan is bringing the Soviet self damage first and you lose it, you still have the good matchup to turn the match after. You can still play the German deck into Brit Air. But I don't see why he's bringing Soviet self damage here first and risking that that Jinan plays Brit Air and then you have a really, really bad matchup. So I don't. I mean, at some point you have to play Soviet self damage against Brit Air, but not when you're playing it the other way around. Then you can. I don't know. Really strange. But. but I mean, we did just see your really strength. I mean, we did just see the strength of Brit Air, right? Um, you know, Jin Lun was able to find what he needed. Um, Birdo possibly looking to fall back on that great patriotic war. Just unfortunate for him, he just didn't make it to turn number six. So he wasn't able to get some uh, some healing out of it. Um, and potentially, you know, set up a, a counter-offensive of a sorts. Um, seeing as though he... he had a 6-6 six, six in the front line that Jinlun would have probably not been able to keep pinned forever and putting both uh, both of them down on to six, uh, 12 HP would have put a two turn timer onto Jinlun but now Birdo Burrito sticking with his guns uh, opting for the mirror matchup and uh, he's found two 34th guards here in his opening a mulligan um, and two bloody sickles so uh, good ways to to reduce the the cost of those um however red banner not really doing a whole lot for him and ideally he would want to see some units come out of jin lun um early on which i don't think is going to necessarily happen yeah that's a big downside of the sickles you have them you can reduce the cost of these units but your opponent's playing the same deck and early game units are 33rd raccoons and i'm not sure if you want to sickle them really and no. give your opponent additional draw uh, really a downside but this t80 might just help reducing the cost of these six sixes did birdo just find three of them yes wow. he did this could be a huge turn and here's a t80 um we, we really need the condensed view here of uh, the two screens mulligan is over so oh there we go nice Jinlan also found two of them. And yeah, with a way better start with the 33rd and scouting party. Wait. Plus the man. sickle in hand. Also found 33rd. So both with a similar starting hand here are almost equal. This could be yeah. an interesting one. Birdo opted to just just check, you know, just just pass on turn number two instead of playing the 456 rifles or um or doing anything of the sorts, and that's probably because he expected a Red Dawn to potentially just come out and trade them. So he wanted to have other targets on the field for him to Bloody Sickle as he snowballs them out. But I mean, and looking at his hand, right, he's going to be able to play the two, 456 plus uh, double Bloody Sickle next turn, um, and proc the T80 damage, which will put all the 34th on zero yeah. Uh, deployment cost so a huge turn coming up here for Birdo Burrito yeah absolutely you deploy the 456 double sickle your T80 and then you can deploy 334s I mean no longer since the enemy 33rds are in the front line you don't have enough space so many 34th guards 
Can you make Jinlan overdraw? Not really worth it, I guess. Plus three, no. Ah, uh, my god, both players have three of these big units. I think in the end it can just come down to who's having counter-offensive or not. Eventually. So, I mean, in, in lieu of counter-offensive, what is Birdo bringing um, in return to, to counter the additional, like, win condition that counter-offensive is, right? Yeah. Is he not just... Much, I guess. He's having the 94s in the deck, which is not doing a lot. Um, I think deck-wise, Shin Lan may be having the edge here with counter-offensive in the deck. So what to do? Get rid of one of these. More draw. Yeah, deciding to to give Jinlan the overdraw. She no to go. Oh, that's huge. It's a good good overdraw to see. One less threat that Birdo has to be worried about. I mean, there's still one left. I think Jinlan is playing two copies. Jinlan can Red Dawn, but he doesn't have any other... Um... Oh yeah, he can SU as well. Um, so he's going to be able to get all those 34th guards out this turn as well. Helping Birdo also. And there it goes. Both players... Oh, this is even having Blitz, but cannot utilize this. Since he's not having enough credits now. And I expect the same now from Birdo here. Red Dawn, the SU. Um... Right, the raccoons out. Yeah. The Recons, not the raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of those raccoons! Get out of my trash! Yeah. Stupid raccoon! <laughs> oh. Great patriotic. How is that paying in that matchup? Uh, playing, huh? Yeah, definitely going for the SU here and then just flood your support line. And then we have a very similar situation on the board. Hmm. I mean, I mean, I think there there is a chance that you know Birdo is wondering right now. Like he's dropped three thirty fourth. I have three thirty fourth. I also have this 456 that is getting bigger. How do I make maximum use of that? Because that's his only real edge on the board at the moment. Look at this, both equal in HQ health. Birdo just having one additional 4-6 guard. Wow, how are you playing this match now? Jin Lan with the advantage that one of the 6-6 six six is a 7-7. Seven seven. And Birdo having that guard. Oh my god, this... So, Birdo's task for next turn has to be make that 4-6 four, six, a 6 attack unit. Yes. And, or 7, optimal case. And get rid of that 7-7 seven, seven maybe, and then trade these others away. I mean, he has maybe. the bloody sickle. He has the bloody sickle. So he can he can bloody sickle the 7-7 seven, seven and then just triple trade. And then we also will see has the 6... Red dawn, so he can set himself to 10. So he can also... Push out the sunrise division. Oh, but the counter offensive. Oh, what? Jin Lun is this unit it. now 100 100 or what? <laughs> oh, it's gonna be massive, that's for sure. I cannot we operate might... it. And you also 18, help Bird. 11. Oh, that is eating a lot of stuff now. It's just eating the other 456th. Right? He can he can trade everything, and, and he can them. he's gonna trade his entire backline against I mean, that Birdo entire frontline. Can line. deal with this stuff. Birdo can kill all units and still have units on board after that. Yeah. Here comes the red thorn. You having enough credits for that? We're done, then one of the six, six attack units. Kills he that leaves one. himself he leaves himself with two units on board. Yeah, look at this. That counter offensive did not do a lot. It was a lot of attack, but only giving it the unit plus one health was probably not worth it because even 
he could not use it, utilize it since there was not enough credit. So I'm not sure how good that counter offensive was. Now the counter Red Dawn coming out, taking out the 8-3. Um, I would assume something along the lines of the first rifles coming out along with this. Or... Or what? Sunrise Division is going to be active here for Birdo. Yeah. And Jinlan only having first rifles as a real good unit there. No way to buff that 456 any further besides T80. Ooh. I think Birdo at the moment at the in a better spot here. Still having that 6-5 on the board. And an upcoming Sunrise Division. Plus Scouting Party. What can Jin Long do here? I mean, just drop everything and everything you can and hope for the best. Oh, wow. That's so much potential draw now for Birdo. Yeah. If he needs to. And, I mean, it's a tough situation from Jin Lun because he, if Birdo pushes that 34th guards into the front line, he's going to need both his backline units to trade into it. Um, so a lot of power coming out for Birdo at the moment. Oh, I want to say I'm, we're not going to see the Yak-7, but Birdo still deploying it when being at 8 health. <laughs> That's a big yeah, boss move, the, I would say. He's got the Great Patriotic War. Yeah, sure, um, sure. Which is, is going to be his emergency break here in terms of uh, mitigating damage. Yeah, knowing that one Shinodo's already out and one counter-offensive, I think he's not too afraid of any Blitz counter-offensive to my HQ here. So yeah, you can go a little bit lower, maybe to four health here, and then just drop the Great Periodic. Now, what will we see from Jin Lun? Is he going to take out... He's going to get the from the people instead of taking the three damage himself. Might use that to help him trade out the 34th. Um, would allow him to push the first rifles up if he wants to slow down the Sunrise Division. Now, oh, is Jinlan having... I know some players play the five-year plan in the decks. Jinlan is not having that, so it should be really hard to come back here with the amount of draw in the deck. And only in T80 and one guard is probably not enough to deal with what Birdo is bringing to the table here. That 9-6, there's still a Yak chilling. He's found another 456. He can even trade with the Yak and then double 95 into the guard, but wait for it to do probably like next this. Time. I like this. Finds the Naval Brigade. The Naval Brigade tends to be a crucial card, especially in the mirror matchups between these two decks. Sunrise Division now, not under 10 HP, so it's not going to be a 9-9. And I think that's pretty huge. And that's the engineers, uh, Engineering Battalion uh, kind of coming back to bite him a little bit in the ass. Yeah, not just that. Also using from the people earlier instead of Red Dawn directly. That's exactly the 3 HP that he's having too much now. But... I'm not sure if this really makes a difference here. I'm sure having a 9-9 on board would be way better than just a 3-3. But Birdo still so much better positioned here. Birdo can now bloody sickle the second rifles and use the 456 to trade out the engineering battalion, keep a guard up on his HQ while taking three units into the front line. And we know... There is no real direct damage from across the field uh, built into Jin Lun's deck, so uh, an extremely kind of decisive position. Uh, can also opt to hit with the 33rd Recon. Um, there's plenty of options here, Birdo. Yep. Using effectively using the 94th <laughs> there to, to eliminate the T80 from the back line and um and buffing both of his 456 rifles. Oh, and I think this game's over. Yeah. yeah. 
expertly played uh, by Birdo to to get into this position, and both players having extremely strong turns when they dropping when they're dropping you know three thirty fourth rifles within a single turn. I would love to see a five player plan now from Birdo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not over yet, but I'm not sure what Jinnan can top deck here that not makes him die. Birdo can just... wait, what? He's thinking about... I mean, he could trade out the 1-3, denying it to be a guard and still setting up lethal. What? Okay. Yeah, he's just playing it safe. Oh, he's just playing yeah. it safe. Making sure yeah, why would you hurry? His, does not leave his HQ unguarded at any point. And at 4 HP, both HQs... The and surrender. Birdo's still in the tournament. That was an extremely well-played match by Birdo Burrito. Um, I have to say, he really thought through the way he traded against Jin Lun's pressure there. Um, of course, you know, that counter-offensive created a massive 18 and 11 unit, but Birdo was able to effectively utilize the, the damage options that he had in hand to give himself such a favorable trade that he was left with two units on the board um, as opposed to Jin Lun's one. And I feel like that was the true turning point of this, yeah. was recognizing the importance of that trade, really thinking it through, and Birdo played that to perfection. Yeah, I think that was the point maybe where Jinlon just just threw the game away. Not really threw it away, but it really was a turning point. He he wasted that card there without applying any pressure on Birdo, and Birdo could easily trade him out and just found himself in an overwhelming position there. And yeah, from Jinlon could not really recover from that one. And now Did, did we get the wrong bands or did Birdo uh, click the wrong deck? That's a good question. Is one of two, one or one of two of those things happened in this one? We did not expect to see Britain here on Birdo's end. Both players not doing anything makes me think that Birdo probably picked the wrong deck. Yes. So is it just rematch now and? Yeah, no, no, nothing has been played, so yeah. I assume that uh, the remake is uh, in the cards uh, right now. Yeah. Um, well, this can, of course, happen, you know, cycling through the decks and ending up uh, selecting the wrong decks there. Uh, I had this happen a couple of times. Always unfortunate when it does happen, but um, I, I believe the bands should be correct there and that Birdo should be playing his uh, Germany-Italy deck into the Jin Lun's uh, Soviet self-damage deck. Unless a wider problem has occurred and uh, somehow the bands were miscommunicated in a way, it, that, that could have wider ranging implications seeing as though that might have influenced you know, the order in which people bring their decks to the table. Um, yeah, maybe... I also think if Birdo would have with air available, he would have played it match number one. Knowing that Jinlan has Soviet self damage and Brit air left, I think he would have gone first with that. So, yeah, probably pretty sure that that was just the wrong deck pick there by Birdo. Sure, what do we expect from the correct matchup here? Birdo with German, Italy control, where is the Soviet uh, self damage? It I think it could be quite hard for the German control deck. Like all these, I mean, it's good with the sudden strikes against the 456, but the six sixes, you don't have too many answers. Lion for De La Deshima. You know what? It's all gonna be about the raccoons, Spoose. If Jin Lun can make good <laughs> use of his raccoons. <laughs> uh. No, I mean, I think I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough one. Um, I mean, just the, just the amount of control that is offered from the German deck there that Birdo is bringing. Um, I think there's uh, there's elements to it, like the Jag bomber can be a real problem. I think the GU88 um, can be a big problem. I think the the Leopold can become a big problem. Now, if Jinlun, however, gets you know a crazy um, a crazy situation where he just 
blasts out three thirty fourths. I think that's going to be a big problem for Berto Burrito, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I definitely think there's ways in which both decks here in this final matchup can win. Um, I think it it's largely dependent on what resources they are given. And then these few minor decisions in the early to mid game uh, that are going to end up uh, snowballing either to victory or defeat for either player. Yeah, I think the key card here is the 34s. If Jinnon can find two, three of them and find early ways to reduce their cost, it is hard for Birdo to deal with this. On the other hand, when Jinnon is not having that and Birdo can develop all these wolf packs and all these guards it could also be hard so uh, it's a close one depending on who's having the better start might have a different ending there yeah i mean there's things like you know the annihilation that can take out the 456th right um root out can be detrimental to the 456th and um, sudden strikes can take out the 456th and um, reich research and v1 flying bomb can take those out as well However, once you're dealing with the 34th Rifles, even though they cost less to deploy on Jin Lun's side, they're still considered a 6 credit unit. So all yeah. of these um, tools to, to deal with them are, are effectively not available. So what remains available is going to be La Decima and Lion for a Day, and then just pure attacks, right? Um, and I think, I think the fact that Birdo is bringing two of the JU-88 G6s might be a huge factor in this because if he's able to let's say trade you know a couple of, trade one of those 34th guards out with the ju88 able to play it out for himself and use that to trade effectively into another one a large portion of the heavy heavy infantry units that jinlun is going to be relying on has been negated by that trade back and forth that process right so this is also one of the reasons why i think the ju88 is the best card in the game I think it's like I there's no card that I hate be play playing against more than that plane. <laughs> Completely agree, especially when you're playing Brit Air and suddenly this thing pops off and yeah. And you're thinking, how do I deal with this? Okay, you have a rough lightning, but other than that, you don't want to trade units into this because then you're helping your opponent and Exactly. It can be really annoying. I completely agree. I would not say that it's the best unit, but it's one of the most annoying to face for sure. I feel like, you know, I lose hope whenever I see it, Spoos. I just, I just go, oh. <laughs> but you know what doesn't make me go, oh. the fact that we're in game and it's game number three here between Jin Lun and Birdo Burrito and Birdo rocking the correct deck at this point in time. He has uh, chosen his uh, German Italy deck appropriately. Um, and Ooh. on the flip side, Oh, the U16s could actually come in handy here, right? Because there's a lot of orders coming out of uh, Jinlun. So, interesting. Yeah, and Jinlun with a very, very bad starting hand here. Did not find a single 34s, did not find 456. Not so great. That SU is just getting eaten by a lot of removal tools there from Birdo. And yeah, Yak 7 can be in a way to find better options. A Sendai Regiment, oh my god. Oh, and there's Sendai? Yeah, I did not, uh -huh. even, did not even realize it until now. Wait, that how's that? coming clutch. That U16 is triggering, right? When you activate it now, Jinnan is drawing at the beginning of the turn, then this U16 triggers. Is it? I mean, there is no other play anyways. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's triggering. Or is it when your opponent... Ah, it's when, when he's playing an it's order, right? It's not... Order. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I mixed it up. I thought when... Ah, this other one was... What was that other card? Lightning Strike? This is when you draw a card. Ah, yeah. Mix that one up. Sure. But Bologna Regiment really strong here. Keeping that SU away from the HQ. Yeah, um, and, and having two of them as well um, is fairly big here for Birdo, finding them early. Yeah, but other than that, what is the plan after that? It's having one from the deep. This could be good to catch 
one of the big 34s, but as we see, there's none of them in Jinlan's hand. But this Leopold, this Leopold could be game deciding later, I'm pretty sure. If we make it to turn 10, I mean, Jinlan already down to, to 16 HP and a lot of his options, you know, if he drops another SU, he's down to 13. If he uses a Red Dawn, he's down to 13. Um, if he drops uh, something like a, a 456 plus a scouting party plus, uh, well, he's not going to do that. That turn um, doesn't have the uh, appropriate. Oh, is he trying to set up for a Sendai turn? Is it not going to hit with the SU and then just try and set up for like a, a Sendai? Oh, okay, yeah, he's going to um, hit. I mean, Berta would always attack there, so definitely has to do that. And yeah, but I mean, that's going to cost Berto half his turn, right? That's that's sure, but can also have the research, and then suddenly your SU is gone, and you're still facing a three six guard. You probably set up a winter offense, a winter warfare here, I guess. Yes. Getting yes. rid of that, and also buffing your guard, move it to the front line, maybe. Or you can even play a second one. Scouting party. Or scouting party. Offensive. So many options here. Scouting party. Uh... Probably the better option because it gives you more tools to play with. And yeah, there's the first 34th. Cost not getting reduced. Was this changed? Uh, no, I mean, he he drew it um, after the damage was applied, right? Yeah, usually when you play a sickle, for example, I remember that the cost got reduced. Interesting. Maybe, maybe you changed it. But I was always wondering why it got reduced when it was drawn after. But yeah, it is what it is. It's still six credits and makes even more sense like that. But we're not just floating five. <laughs> and I mean, it makes sense. Um, from the deep, can I capture one of the 456? Uh, an SU is going to be coming out and uh, nothing, no order is going to be played. So no discard. I was wondering why we would not play Bologna and U16. Hmm. Line 4 day was found. Tja, what do you kill now? There's you probably at the moment the bigger threat, but that frontline guard can also become pretty huge soon. Yeah, especially with uh, a Winter Warfare in hand, <clears throat> that is probably going to get played here. Um, it's going to draw him two and allow him to drop a 34th at two credits. Sukov being... Sukov uh, gone. Can live with that. He can live with that. That's true. I mean, on a Sunrise Division, it would be insanely good. I yes. know it's Soviet unit, right? So um, It's Soviet unit, yes. Yeah, then so... the 34th would have been a good target there. But... Yeah, this or 456, or there comes the first 6-6. Six, six. And Birdo, and hoping Birdo's for Birdo's under pressure. Here. Yeah. Birdo's under pressure. He has a Heinkel, he has a guard. He's taking his 34th down so that he can get the sunrise division out and he's got a sendai remember that he's got that sendai that can totally catch Berto off guard here in a couple of turns because Berto doesn't have anything to play he just has the bologna regiment i think that's it for Berto. um i don't see anything that it can really keep jinon away from winning here he's just moving all units up next turn The Sendai is going to come in clutch here for oh, almost, almost for sure. Ledechima is going to be able to deal with one. I'm not sure if Sendai is coming out this turn or next turn. Is there any way to deal additional? Damage? Can kill. You can Red Dawn um, and Naval Brigade plus move up. Oh, opting to go for the Sendai instead. Dealing five to face, I would assume. 
and threatening a massive amount of damage. 20 damage in the front line right now here for Jin Lun. And turn 10 just cannot come soon, soon enough. It just... That's what I said, you know, like, are we even going to get to, ten, to turn, turn 10? So, Birdo can play Ladeshima on the sender, giving him two guards on board, but... That is still not good enough. JU88, that's not what he needs. That's not it. He needs to find something else with Spoils of War, but I'm not even sure what. <laughs> I think there's nothing in the deck. That 9-9, nine -nine, how is he killing that 9-9? Nine -nine? With the Sudden Strike. Sudden Strike would have been an option. Because it's Decisive a Decisive right? defense? But, like, that's only one guard? And he's only going to eat one hit? And that's it, that's game. Birdo just doesn't find the cards and exactly in the same way that we saw Darkness sneak under the credit cost um, of of, uh, of the decks of, uh, was it? Yeah, Jinlun, um, of his German deck earlier on. We see Jinlun sneak under the credit cost of Birdo's uh, Germany control deck. And Birdo, you know, look at his hand size. That's two, four, six, that's seven cards in hand, none of which are cheap enough or effective enough to deal with the early pressure coming from Jin Lun. And that means that our finals are going to be Jin Lun taking on a Cappuccino. And our third place matchup is going to be uh, Noen 5 taking on Birdo Burrito. Really looking forward to that one. But Congratulations. for now, yeah. yeah, we just give it back to, to Jin, Jin Lun. Yeah, we'll throw it back to you and Crystal to... on the host desk. <laughs>
I mean, Brit Air is still prominent, and I would consider this an aggressive deck. And I think players, yeah, it's it's just, I don't know. It is sometimes like that, and sometimes you cannot really predict it. I mean, we we saw that that the supply shortage combo is gone, and I and also Darkness kind of expected more like aggressive decks or brought aggressive decks today, and yet. Yeah, it's still a long way to the world championship and i'm excited to see how how the matter is evolving onto this like when everyone is just playing aggro control decks become a little bit more prominent and maybe we will see this one in the next occ and maybe after that we will see ramp being very strong like players are getting more and more greedier with the decks again but at this point we are still in a very aggressive meta and we see this today like if you don't have the correct starting hand even with a control deck and have a lot of 10 drops in your hand you're just without any chance against those deck what i think we can agree on is we probably won't see too much alpine in the next <laughs> occ um let's bring up who knows? It's true. Let's bring up the bracket. Let's take a look at what we've got left here today as we move towards that bronze medal match, that third place matchup. Noen taking on Birdo. That's going to be an excellent series. I mean, Noen, top of his top of his game, Birdo playing well. Um, I think that's going to be a great one. And then we've got Cappuccino versus Jinlun in the finals. Um, I suppose you're pretty good with cards history here. I believe neither of these players have won an OCC, have they? Cappuccino or Jinlan? I think Cappuccino won an OCC before. Um, oh. Jinlan, I don't think so. I think he Jinlan is not. But Cappuccino, yeah, was... I did not believe has as well. But I could also be wrong. Wait, That's why I have I... my I have my list right here. Give me one second, and we will have it for sure. That's Cappuccino, why I... December twenty one. Oh, okay. So it's been a minute. It's it's the been a little while. First and only OCC win. Yeah. Perfect. So got a couple of players looking to really cement themselves as we head towards the world championships. Let's get to that bronze match though. No one five taken on Birdo Burrito, Spoos and Ollie. It's all up to you. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the series here and I am not muted this time around. Let's go. Already a really good start to this best uh, out of five for third place. Um, Yes, right? Yes. So I'm, I'm just wondering if your microphone is sounding different, but could also just be in my my headphones is it? here. No, no, I, it might have only been because you've been further away from your microphone. Oh. I, it shouldn't be coming through the webcam. That should be good. Oh, no, it was just that you're far too far from oh, the microphone. Okay, okay, it's better okay. now. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, we got all that sorted out. You had to just you had to create some issue for me, you know, not no no successful transitions allowed in this one. <laughs> but we are here for the third place match. Uh, it's going to be between Birdo Burrito and Noen Five. We of course did just see Birdo Burrito uh, play up against Jinlun, so we will. Um, in my opinion, we don't need to go through all the decks here again. I think we're going to be seeing them. I think the big thing that everybody needs to be aware of is that there are no bans this time around. That means that both players are going to have full access to their Brit Air lists. We're going to be able to see Noen 5's Britain Italy Air deck again, where he's packing those four uh, artillery units from the Italy side um, against the more traditional Brit Air deck from Berto Burrito. Soviet self damage on the side of Berto Burrito against Noen 5's uh, US uh, Confusion deck. I'm just going to call it like Confusion. I don't. I still don't understand how that deck functions. Uh, we've seen it played twice, still don't know. Uh, and then finally, um, Noen5 has that um, uh, Germany-US deck that we've seen be extremely powerful, bit bit fall um, for him earlier in the tournament versus uh, Birdo's uh, Germany-Italy deck, which we have seen you know a lot of good success with, but not against extremely aggressive decks, which neither of Noen 5's US or Germany decks are. So I think in this matchup, Birdo Burrito could find a lot of success with that uh, Germany deck. What do you think, Spooz? Yeah, in fact, that Germany deck has not been too successful today. I think we saw one win and two loses, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, it, it, we saw some matches where there has been a lot of un, a, a lot of not so useful cards in hand, like the Tiger and and the Leopold early on and your opponent 
just flooding the board. <sighs> I'm not sure. I think no one could have the, the advantage here deck-wise. Especially with this US-Soviet <laughs> deck that Birdo should not have too many answers for. I mean, how can you answer when you don't know the question? Yeah, even, even that. that's, that's, a, that's a good point, yeah. That's the big thing, right? You're like, what am I stopping here? Am I stopping your ramp? Nope, can't do that. Am I stopping your research? Nope, can't do that. Am I stopping your score strength? Nope, can't do that, right? Uh, it's 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 weird, right? Uh, yeah, especially with the with the self damage deck, it's I think it's very hard to deal with that deck. Like the Scorch Earth, really denying all your pressure, and then you have the potential nukes and all this early damage mm -hmm. you just put to yourself. So usually at turn seven, eight, just all these self damage players find themselves at ten, twelve HP, and that's yeah. in range of two nukes, and then you're just dead. So it, I find it quite hard to play against it, but and also that German control deck we saw it earlier. Um, all these control tools having not too many targets, and then um, no one can just use all these spy rings and find good research value, and maybe win with that one. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the matches. Definitely want to see that Brit Italy deck from no one again with this Canone and the black watch and naval support i want to see that deck in action so much um hopefully going to see it and i want to yeah. i want that's that's one of those decks that i want to see like pop off right i, I want to like i let me caveat that right i kind of want it but i also kind of don't want it because i feel like if, <laughs> if we see it pop off in this tournament Everyone's just going to be like, yeah, I'm going to run this one, right? And you're going to be like queuing up on ladder later. And it's just going to be like one credit in Italian artillery everywhere. <laughs> you're just going to be like, oh, no, no, no. And why did you do it? Um, yeah, this card no. is such a smart addition, actually. Um, usually you have these three swordfishes and three gladiators. But yes. gladiators are being stopped from guards. But with a canona... Uh, it, artillery is, is not being stopped by anything in the game and it's really smart addition and making that deck even more aggressive together with the fear you have so many strong one drops and then just two or three um, close air support and your opponent can't do anything yeah i mean the change to close air support definitely made this more viable um as well so uh, I mean I agree I think I think it's super smart, and I'm wondering like I've <laughs> I've said this for a long time and up until this point I haven't been correct, but I mean I feel like there should be a very backline heavy deck out there that isn't necessarily Brit Air that works and you know maybe maybe you add in some two pounders right like two pounders are also cheap artillery units and they operate for zero yeah. right. Um, they could also be be buffed. Um, they do have a little bit less uh, HP than the the Italian counterpart, but like when combined with the cards like the second Parisi, can be extremely effective. So, well, <clears throat> let's see how No in Five's uh, confusing deck works against uh, Brit Air here. Um, seeing as though that is the first matchup that we're going to be looking at in Berto. Finding one of the fiats early, a, a finest hour as well, that can be extremely powerful um, for turn two because of the zero operating cost on the fiat. Yeah, and the big problem from known stack here is that he's not having any draw. So as long as Birdo can push out early damage, eh, he's already having the Spitfire finest hour combo in hand. Turn eight, turn eight can be very scary there for for known. But. There is but a Bryansk, and there's Bryansk Irregulars in hand that might stop a lot of aggression there from Birdo. Oh, but the Paris Ooh, never mind. Paris Fiat. I would love to see the Swordfish. Why? Because mm -hmm. if there's Bryansk Irregulars now... Oh, wait, no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's hey, still the... dealing three damage to the Swordfish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you, you get the guaranteed um, yeah. thing of a bop, um, plus one damage on the fiat because you are the first one to play a unit. Yeah, completely agree. I thought that it would only 
Yeah, yeah, it makes no sense. I thought that Swordfish would survive when it was pincered with second parasy, but could not even play the second parasy now and attack. So yeah, my thought makes no sense, and this is <laughs> definitely the correct play there. So I mean, let's say let's say Perdo goes a little bit greedy now, and plays the Swordfish plus close air support. I'm not sure Going... if that is really greedy. What do you want to keep it for? I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, no, if I'm just going to rip the Scorched Earth and that's going to sit dead in the support line. Could also just do second para and maybe get instantly rid of it. Because one of yeah. the units is dying anyways. Um, and having second para C. Because now you make yourself really weak to... Ah, yeah. Can also see that play. But it's still... Turn two. Um, and it means that, you know, if no and five were to rip the Scorched Earth now, it would not be a very effective one. Um, this means that he can play the Swordfish, um, and he can close air support, um, and he can keep both of his units alive. Exactly. With four health and Bryansk only delivering three damage back, it's very good. Thinking about even the Paris. Paris yeah, I don't know. can even do that. Doing it on the swordfish. Now we're probably. I mean, it's no if I. He might as well just throw out an, an hour of need to try and be credit efficient here. Um, that's going to give him a, a nice partisan's turn next turn as well, um, where he should be able to basically steal the the fiat and uh, trade it into um, the. Uh, well, other the, way around, you steal the swordfish and trade into the fear, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can do either way. Yeah, yeah, other way around, the swordfish is not dying. That's fine. If you partisans the fiat, it's not dying, but no, yeah, you are absolutely correct. Seven damage, damage that you don't really want to have early on against Brit Air. Ooh. Did Birdo give a did Birdo give away the Spitfire? Yeah, he, he did. put it back in the deck, right? He wants to have more early pressure, but there is the partisans. He's gonna he's gonna partisans and trade. Yeah, he's gonna basically block the four damage from being applied to face and leaving the swordfish up. Probably thinking that he's gonna be able to use the scorched earth to slow down the damage output even further here from Birdo. <clears throat> Birdo with double land lease in hand. Oh, that is good ultra here. So no, now not really having an answer against the swordfish. That is very likely keeping shipping away here. Would you ever play a Tempo Sexton here? Probably not. Not, right. It's just too much uh, value, the deployment effect there. Yeah. Catching fifth rangers all that M4A1. Uh, I think I think here, fifth rangers, eight eight <clears throat> could be an option. Um opting to go for the four four and dropping the, the M4A1 as well. I like that. Um means that it's really hard for Birdo to yeah, top deck a raft lightning and negate his play. So Yeah, what are you bouncing here, even? Sure. You bounce the tank. Yeah, you bounce yeah. the tank. I think you do that at least because I mean that that has five HP. It's harder for you to deal with. Um, that four four is just going to move up for free next turn anyway. And if you bounce that into the support line, you're still going to be suffering from. <clears throat> I like this. I like this line a lot better from Birdo, yeah. right? Just continue yeah. to push damage. He don't need to draw from Monty. He's just trading here. He's doing this there. Next turn, he's killing it and bouncing the M4A1. Um, I also like that line there. He's not caring about drawing from Monty. He's having two land leases in hand. And uh, that was a good catch there from Noen. Definitely seeing that that ultra there from miles away. And now Sweet. advancing the research without and? caring about Ultra any longer. And ramp, I think. 
No. Give me it for Not the quarter masters. Yeah, his hand is not that great, and I think he's waiting for Quartermasters to... Also, he's at 9 credits, would go to 12 next turn. I think he wants to go above 12 to have more options with the nukes. Maybe just advancing into nukes and play them at the same turn. Yeah. Stuff like that. Gives him just more options. But yeah. now the, the Raph Lightning play um, can make a ton of sense from Birdo. He can also establish the Sexton because there's only a single threat left on the board for him to negate. <clears throat> and continues to keep his Swordfish alive there and another set of Spirings. Now the question is, what do you do if you are knowing 5 here? Do you go for Spiring, hope for the German one? No, does not get the German one. So continues to progress his research into advanced US research and pops the scorched earth, meaning that he is forcing Birdo into a choice here. Do you operate your units or do you develop the board? Birdo can, however, deal five damage to face. I mean, even with that scorched earth and <clears throat> the limited amount of answers that No One Five has, he can deal five damage to face this turn. It's still gonna take all of next turn for No One Five to get those uh, Manhattan projects allowing him to only need to find one damage from, for instance, the Empire Strikes. Ooh, there comes the Spitfire, and no one in trouble. I mean, you can part his ends and kill at least the Sexton. Unfortunately, he can attack sword. twice. He can attack twice. He can... He can... He can kill the Sexton, and, and he the, can kill the Swordfish. Yeah, yeah, but, but the, the Spitfire is, is not dying, yeah. Exactly, right? That's the problem. But yeah. he's still having the Sherman that can operate next turn when the Spitfire just comes back. The only problem would be second finest hour on that Spitfire is is lethal for Birdo. Isn't it going to be lethal anyway? Doesn't it go back with Fury? Yeah, but he kind Birdo of blitz just... it out, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it gets thrown into hand, of course, of course. HMS Illustrious, that's going to be four damage from. Interesting the Empire that he does strikes. not kill the swordfish. Like any Empire Strikes is just one additional damage now? Look at this Empire Strikes, HMS Illustrious, how much is this? That's going to be. Five damage. It's going to be six damage. Six damage with uh, him attacking with, one, with both. With... Yeah. No, but he can only attack with one. No, he's can you can detect with both. Okay. Yes. Yeah. He's having in nine credits now. Ooh, I don't know. But no one five has made this decision consistently throughout today, leaving <laughs> up the the four uh you know, the scorched earth units. Two more damage now. Very but I feel like I feel like if Birdo had just pushed five damage to face um, and just not played the Spitfire, I think this game would be over. I think so. But I mean, it, it's probably a lower percentage play um, and you know a wrong decision to make, but would have been close to over, I think. Yeah, but this now... Raider comes in huge here. Five damage. Five seven damage. Not enough. Oh, it could be enough with HMS next turn. Can he do HMS close air support? How much is he that? Can do, he can do HMS ah. illustrious plus attack with two. That's five. Um, he can do close air support on them and deal two and two. That's two four. Plus five. He can deal nine damage. Um, he's one credit off being able to, uh, to deal ten damage. Or twelve damage, effectively, with the Wrath Lightning, I believe. <laughs> he's looking far away here. I think he's just... He wants to set up... He just wants to set up the... Yeah, the HMS Empire yeah. Strikes is lethal next turn. Yeah, he wants to set up that and guaranteed lethal. There's not much that no one can do against this. There's nothing he can do against it. 
he does not have any healing available in his deck. Um, he does not have anything to stop the the uh, Empire Strikes uh, being played. So I think this is definitely just going to be the win from Puerto Burrito. He played it patiently. He played it extremely well. Didn't take any unnecessary uh, risks. And this is going to be three damage Empire Strikes. HMS Illustrious Combo is just going to be enough to close out the game. And Puerto Burrito goes and takes the lead in this series against Noen 5, 1 to 0. Loses access to his Brit Air deck, um, whereas Noen 5 still has access to his, along with both of his other decks. Do remember, this is the best out of five here for third place. The winner will walk away with $200. The loser will walk away with nothing but a great story to tell on how they were among the top four players and cards for the month of September. But of course, a lot to play for here and it's going to be interesting if you are Birdo burrito what do you bring next do you bring the soviet self damage deck uh we will get this answer questions right away um no nope. bring in germany germany to control no and one sticks with this deck three games later spooze i can still not tell you if no one five's deck is good or not, I I uh, don't know. I'm uh, see, he's picking it always when he's having it away, right? So I I I'm pretty sure no one thinks that this deck is really good. Um, I'm not convinced so far, and I think no one has one more game to convince me of the opposite here. You have right there. Okay, starting on his research. So it seems from watching him play this, research is a central theme to this deck. Right now, he's gonna war bonds. He's gonna have the P forty seven D to take care of that five five once it pushes up into the front line. P forty seven. It's an amazing card. Yeah. It's also so annoying because you have to not just invest credits in deploying that unit, you also invested credits in moving that unit to the front line and then there's just this guy waiting and removing your unit. So annoying. Especially Pretty against waiting. infantry units. And there is our favorite unit here. JU88 uh, and no one. Uh, not having too many as you can blitz an eight eight to the front line. I like that. I really like that. Um, it it's not annihilation time just yet, so you know it might not be a bad shout. Can, however, just get retreated with the um, thrown back into hand with the admirable hip, admirable admiral hipper. Yeah, and the turn after it's a good annihilation target. So. Blah. What can... Alternatively, he can he can also just ramp. I mean, he has so much ramp. I feel like it's just greedy not to just get yourself to 12 credits as soon as possible. Um, you know, he can quartermasters and ramp. It's a Brianska regulars. Perfect. Play those as well. No. Oh. Ghost face instead. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I want, don't want to get this guard stone, right? So actually, Birdo can steal the P47 if he wants to. I'm not sure yeah, if it's root out. worth it, but what else can you do there? Wolf pack, but there is a quartermaster on board. You're probably helping your opponent even, because then he can ramp and is not risking the overdraw there. That's true. Oh. Tough choice. Birdo definitely waiting for turn 9 there to drop that Schwalbe into all these P47s that might come there. Yep. Yeah. Going like for the steal. He's killing the Quartermasters first. Also not too bad. And, nine. I mean... No one's draw. It's difficult for no one to, to trade into that JU88, right? He doesn't want to give him a P47. Um, 
pretty sure but, he's not here. I think he's just going to continue the research. And Honestly, Bruno has I think nine we, cards. We, we won't see the fifth Rangers played from known in a while, I guess, because this is the only valid um, annihilation target. And I'm pretty sure no one don't want to give Burl that chance to get a good annihilation there. Yep. And now can... Berto, he can he cannot hey. steal this. There is not room in his hand. It could have played it other oh, way around. Oh, it is the research. Whoa. It is the research. Disaster Ouch. for no one five. Ouch. Needs to find new researchers from Spiring now. Yeah, that was nine credits invested in that card and the absolute best card that Berto could have hit. And Berto does it in this order as well so that he has space to draw another card next turn and doesn't continue with a full hand. And already that JU88 delivering a ton of value for him. And now what do you do if you are no in five? Do you give him the Annihilation target? By playing the Briansk or the Fifth Rangers, um, you know, M4A1, have... I guess, or you just advance a research on the depending on what it is. Oh, oh he finds another my one. god, but there's another wolf pack and there's an annihilation. There's more options to discard advanced research, but he's able, he's able to take two steps forward with this research this turn if he wants to. Yeah, this JU is only having three attacks, so it needs some time to ship away 20 HQ health. So no one just advancing the research here, dropping the Brian's Irregulars. But we see finally a target here to get rid of the Sudden Strikes. Like a lot of his cards yeah. could not be played earlier, but finally can make space there. <laughs> Come on, the Masters. Only How do you like five. fighting against your own units, no in five? <laughs> so no one could play party sense on it and then ramp again, just as a theoretical case here. <laughs> so it's yeah, not, not really without any effect on the board besides the two attack, but it can open. He's gonna go for he's gonna go for the Manhattan projects. Uh, two cards are harder to uh, discard than one plays an m4a1 as well um that is likely going to be the target of uh, an annihilation i would expect no nope. um, i think you cannot target this with orders oh you can't yeah that's true it's a big upside that is true they're really strong they, they, they did not just give known five draw when they and no one make uh, what was make this card they also cannot be targeted for annihilation and pretty good here in this spot what does wolf pack hit oh what does it hit the other uh, m4a1 sacrificing dju before it's dying to the nuke there it comes Burrow is not having this is 10 damage I mean, there's a root out that is dealing with that. And for A1, what is down to seven? No one is one damage off after the nuke. Going for more Nostrum, I expect. Or is he just going root out? Is non five having. Ah, oh, he's still having strat bombing. No. Yeah, he's yes. having strat yes. bombing. Yeah. And Hellcats? Having Hellcats? Nope. U16, uh, able to discard. He knows there are orders coming next turn. Another Marinostrum, uh, potentially allowing him to, to Marinostrum a, a big target like the Svalbe. Um, and healing for a bunch. Some uh, decent options and some more card draw. All good options here for Birdo. Um, Depends on what he wants to accomplish, which one he will choose. So if no one top decks threat bombing, he's winning here. Yes. Uh, Does not. Watch Earth. Oh man. 
Yeah, honestly, how is Birdo ever distributing 17 damage now? I mean, I think we're gonna just see, yeah, we're gonna see no one just ramp. Um, it's gonna give him two cards next turn. He's got the Seaborn Invasion, he's got the mass deployments. Um, now, Panzer 3H, uh, what does it bring? It brings with it a Jag Bomber and a Lion for a day, um, I would say, and a Lurking Danger. He has from the deep still, does not draw it. <sighs> Panther G cannot be targeted by orders, so. Oh, and there's a P47. That is a good way to get rid of Panther G. Yeah. But... Oh, wait. Birdo. I thought Birdo would have another Mar Nostrum, but he did choose a different card. Yeah, he chose would the be huge Panther on the Panther G. Yeah, that would be plus seven and would make it harder for no one to kill him. And what is it? Oh, red research. Yeah, only strat bombing so far. Distributing the missing three damage here. Ah, uh, yeah, what the match is this again? Do you progress either one of the research? Do you play a Scorched Earth? Do you throw a 4 4 body in the front line? I think we are never seeing the fifth rangers here, as long as Annihilation is around. If we see it, we might use it on some frontline stuff like this to get even some value out of it before it's getting killed by Annihilation. Yeah. But so far the P47 should take care of that panther. And Birdo really needs another Mar Nostrum now. To get out of threat bombing range. Yeah, he does have options to protect his HQ with the Bologna Regiment and the decisive defense, but that strat bombing, that ever looming threat mobilization coming out, he's oh. looking for it, he's found it. Burrow needs answers now. Well, he might get it in the form of uh, an annihilation target. Yeah. He has one out of one out of eight. Yep. Chance to hit it. Ooh, wait, what? But I mean, he's he's also uh, dead to that plane, right? Yeah. So that's gonna be yeah. game. No F5 finds a win, win with his weird deck. <laughs> with the confusing deck. Without confusing deck. Wow. Yeah, but. Honestly, I'm less and less impressed by this German Elite Control deck. It is just not having enough good units. I mean, there are situations when there is a big King Tiger in the back line and Schwalbe sitting there and Leopold. I can see it being very strong, but I think the mid game feels so awkward when your opponent is playing it perfectly and not giving you good options with your annihilations and stuff like that. It feels weird. But yeah, 1-1. Yeah. One, one. Still everything possible here in this series. Yep, one, two, one, and now we are gonna see oh. the Soviet self damage deck against No One Five's uh, Germany USA deck. And No One Five finding a, a pretty good starting hand there with the War Machine into the hour of need um, for his ramp needs if he so chooses. Birdo found two four hundred fifty six, and as I see, and. I, I, SU, my god. Not ISU, just an SU. Yeah, and a 34th guards as well. Um, two of them, right? Two of them. So, this rifle regiment plus the 95th rifle regiment coming out um, is going to be able to, to beef it up a little bit. No one continues to uh, grow his credit count, though, is able to deploy that FW190A next turn, giving him a 5 5 body on the field that is able to trade effectively um, into what Birdo Burrito has to offer. Because so far, no real self damage options available for Birdo. Yeah, only the 95th so far can deal one damage to the guard and then receive one to the HQ, move that unit up. But yeah, then is this big FW coming in next turn from Noen and Birdo probably having 
troubles to deal with this. Keep in mind as well, no one five has that dive bombing, so he's able to almost regardless of the attack buffs that Birdo puts on some of these units, able to effectively trade against them. I can definitely see him also just potentially going for a Panzer 38T and another ramp. That wouldn't be the most terrible thing in the world, especially because you've now seen Birdo not play any Winter Offensives, not play any um, other self-damaging cards, even like a Bloody Sickle on one of his own units, um, opting to even not go for the Panzer yeah. 38T. I think what? that's questionable. Why? That is interesting indeed. Now fighting the Panzer uh, 4 F2 though, and I think that's huge because he's able, able to bounce that SU back into hand. I think the the reason for not playing 38T was that there was a potential Red Dawn in Birdo's hand yes. and it would just be too much damage. With this play you force Birdo just, if he wants to Red Dawn, he has to do it on his own units. That might be the reason to not deploy it last turn. I really like the how random the alliance is in the deck. Um, just as if the units are not big enough, no, just yes. buff them additionally with with the alliance. Uh, I like. So also, just one copy. You know, it's just yeah, like... yeah, yeah, just one copy. Oh, yeah, I have no, one slot. What do I take? Oh, let's Why take not? the alliance. I mean, he can. He could play. Might yeah, dive, dive bombing. bombing that gives effective trading. <clears throat> wow. Keeping the war machines here because he's at 11. He would play it now, he would waste one credit slot for later. Yeah, but I mean, look at that damage that is being wow. pushed into the front line by Birdo. It's what, 13, 17, 22 damage being threatened and a whole lot of trading that needs to happen here for Nolan 5. He does have the ability to trade all most of that stuff out, right? Most of it being the key word here. Um, only three units on the board. Um, he does have the alliance though and the ability to attack with all of them. So he, he should be able to navigate this mostly successfully but he is getting dangerously low and we know that that soviet self damage deck is able to sneak in all sorts of damage here and there yeah but i think no one has a chance to stabilize here if he's surviving that turn there's a good chance that he's able to turn that around maybe that alliance for sure is so important here without the alliance he would be dead but alliance Giving him a chance to maybe stabilize. I mean, Birdo played zero Winter Warfare so far, right? Yeah, he's going to take eight damage. Yeah, and triple Winter Warfare left means whenever Birdo finds the other two missing Winter Warfares, no one is also dead. Scouting party, Winter Warfare. Looks like uh, Birdo is thinking about trading out the FW. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Smart move, <laughs> leaving no in five on four HP, and the no need it just keeps on coming. Panzer oh, is also four, good. also good. That will keep them alive. alive. Yeah, able to play another FW as well to draw another card, and um, can also offer the Panzer three H. Has three options. We don't see them, but I like the card pack. It's a beautiful card back. Yeah. There's a little Leopold. That's and the stabilization that he needed. As we know, Birdo is not <clears throat> having Shinodo. Um, not any Blitz units. So the, distributing these four missing damage is quite difficult for him now after that Leopold came in. Is he able to find a Blitz unit through Red Banner? Oh, that would be huge. No. Oh. No, no, there is no 8 credit Blitz unit. Leopold gonna get insta-dropped. Everything goes back to hand. Oh, and Birdo pretty sure not liking to see that Leopold. And look at this now. Yeah, there was that one point that the Lions trade 
was just the chance for Nolan to come back and then finding Leopold from the Panthers 3H. The random alliance that he got on, you know, draft yeah. pick eight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's one of the things that he got in draft once he was like, you know what? It, it really played well when I did it in draft. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. Yeah, Birdo. I mean, he, he found the guard. That guard keeps him alive for one turn. If for one Nolan turn, though, is um, not able to find another bounce card. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's no real reason for him, or no real way for him to deal with that Leopold, right? I forming. Surely Nolan, Nolan can... just goes face face here with the, the Leopold, and you know, and play he started can... forming on the seven six, yeah. uh, six seven. And, and still having it out. two units on board. Yeah, this is... This should be over. Dive bombing, Spooz. Hey, such an important card, into the, uh, card today. We've seen so many insane... Wait, what? Oh, yeah, okay. Also not bad. That's even one damage more to face now. Yeah, yeah. Look. I'm always forgetting that dive bombing also deals one damage. I'm not sure why, because I, maybe I'm just thinking this card would be even more broken than it than it looks here. But yeah, really underrated card. It's really game deciding so far today. And yeah. Yeah, no one five with the lead now. Turning the game around, four HP was enough to take home game number three. And now he has a chance to close out the match and finish third in September's OCC with his Brit Italy deck left. Like, oh, and Birdo, Birdo's really convinced that Soviet self damage somehow is good against Brit Air, I guess. Yeah. I'm I mean, he, sure only has access, he only has access to his uh, Germany Italy control deck and the Soviet self damage decks, so... Pretty good opening hand and uh, an abysmal opening hand here for No and Five. I mean, Albacore second Paracy could be pretty strong. Like Paracy on a bomber is really a big problem for Birdo, especially when he's not having any red thorns. Yes. And looking at his hands, he his hand is not having any of these. This is what I was expecting from Noen, him not playing the Albacore there. Because he's afraid of the Red Dawns. And because he passed on turn number two, he now can't Paracy and trade out that SU. He can only pin it. That will allow yeah. Birdo to progress some of his cards upfield and now start potentially dealing with the Bombers. Yeah, I mean, I can see the argument keeping it in hand to not give your opponent the red dawn value, but look at the situation now. I mean, having close air support here can still play Paracy, but... He's got the Blackwatch. Blackwatch is going to come in huge here, I think. Um, close air support yes, allowing him to trade. Winter Warfare. Giving the 456 3 attack now. Can get rid of that. Swordfish there. Can additionally deploy 134s if he wants to. I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of deploying the T80 because I feel like you want the mobility to. Establish your front line fully against these bombers. Yeah, I can see that one. But the 34th is definitely more power on board and more of a big threat that you want to deal with. So maybe it does draw out a second Paracy um, into the 34th combo, which wouldn't be bad for Birdo. That would still give him a good way. Yeah, and it does indeed draw that out. <laughs> He's second Paris, he's his second Paris. <laughs> nice. 
So there's at least one more unit dying there from Birdo. What is oh, it? What is this sickle? Nice. Okay, now none of Birdo's units is dying. All pincer effects gone. Wow, that sickle was the perfect draw there. Yeah, and I mean, it works out extremely well for Birdo that he played 34th guards. If he had just played the T80, that probably wouldn't have drawn out that attack, um, plus the second Paris combo. So I'll eat my hat and uh, say Birdo was absolutely correct in the way he chose to play that. Yeah, really smartly played, actually. Looking, look first if you find something interesting that helps you. And in this case, it perfectly played out or paid out. And yeah, I think a lot of players would just go for the trades there and lose one unit, but Burrow shows not to do so. And finds himself in a very comfortable spot here. Known, lost both Parisi so far. And a pretty huge board here. On the other hand, that Monty, <laughs> as annoying as always. Yeah, but there's just... nothing to follow it up, right? There's no shelling, there's no uh, sexton, there's yep. there's not a whole lot. So, I mean, I guess what Noen5 is hoping is that he's able to make good use of that um, of that Spitfire, effectively dealing a ton of damage and, and, and putting Birdo Burrito at risk of, of self-destructing and then using the, the finest hour plus any of his other um, um, airplanes to, to deal the missing damage. Um, it might work out okay for him because he's able to guard it with the Black Watch. Um, yeah, could make a big difference here, that Black Watch. Birdo in a tough spot. I think he cannot really play the five-year plan. Just put some... Too low on HP health and also oh, it's really tough. That Monty really catch Birdo off guard here. It's the problem with infantry, right? It can be very, very slow, especially against AoE pin. You know. Mm. Uh, opting to just pass his turn. No real reason to pull any of these cards out at the moment. He does not want to further damage his own HQ, given the damage potential that's on board there for No. One Five. Um, you know, there's potentially like a double close air support into twelve damage um, from that Spitfire plus um, three damage from that Fiat. So there is a realistic potential that No. One Five could be setting up a fifteen damage uh, or more turn here. So I think well played there. By Birdo recognizing that and just holding back for a little bit. Now that Spitfire is extremely vulnerable to Bloody Sickles and Winter Warfares, both of which are plenty of in the deck for Birdo. So, yeah, Birdo also doesn't... to the 90, 95th, which yeah. is exactly waiting in Birdo's hand. So, I think Birdo, Birdo doesn't hate seeing that. Um, that 4 5 456 is also going to be able to trade out the Raft Lightning leaving only a Fiat and a second Paris in uh, the support line there for No and 5. Very important to find a guard there. Take out the Fiat. Yeah, even with the B80, uh, the T80. And now with the threat Ooh. of the Fury um, Spitfire gone, Birdo starts deploying uh, his self-damaging uh, units again. Also with, wait, with Great Patriotic War, you can set him to 12. But yeah, Rough Lightning is going to bounce the 6-4 probably. Otherwise it would be lethal next turn. Yeah. Playing the ATS instead of trading out the T80. Uh, I think he's pretty optimistic that he's going to deal 3 damage somehow. I'm not seeing how. I mean, maybe his thought process is, oh, I really do need to find card draw. 
but there's so much card draw in Brit Air in general that I would expect him to find it regardless. Yeah, and also, what does he want to top deck here where he can get use of ATS? Like, I can see HMS Illustrious Empire Strikes, but there's, there's a two card combo, and he's already yeah. having none of these combo pieces in hand. On the other hand, killing the T80 would not change too much since two of the guards would have been buffed anyways. Is this going to be lethal? No, it's not going to be lethal. I don't think so. I feel like you just you get more value out of just hitting face with all of them. What a board. What a board. And Monty Some gone. raccoons. Some raccoons. <laughs> And knowing that Monty is out and no shelling in in no one's deck, um, I don't see him winning that one. So no, I think this is game Mali Black Clef. Clef. Game number five coming up soon. It looks like it. Um, he is able to trade out that 6-4 if he so chooses. That's going to cost him three credits. He can block one attack uh, or two attacks there with the, uh, the Black Watch. Um, he has a Fiat as well. It does not get the plus one additional damage on it though. But the pressure is non-stop here from Berto. Yeah, I think there's nothing that no one can top deck here. Not even land least and he's only having three credits left and... I don't see a three credit sh credit option here that stops a six six and a five three. In the front now with end. Monty gone, at least. Yeah, exactly. Monty is out, and that Canona. Canona always showing up late today. Very late. And that can... means we're going to game number five, Spooz. Berto versus No One Five. What a grueling series this is so Wah. far. Both players showing a tremendous play in in expertly navigating the, their opponent's decks. Um, Birdo now being very successful with his Soviet self-damage deck um, against the, the Brit Air deck there from Noen. And, and I would say that's largely due to the fact that he showed a lot of self-discipline as to when he used the self-damaging effects and when yeah. he did not. So yeah, exactly. really well played by Birdo. Could not ask for a better bronze match here. Five games. And this one is going to decide who's taking home cash price today here. And who's just going home with nothing. Oh, all no right, one with a way. Canona and Swordfish. Yeah, they're all there. There's only one sudden strike to deal with them. They're going to continue coming out now. Another canon. And a swordfish. So now two units deployed in the back line that are able to deal damage without taking damage back. Um, the second pair C can come in on either one of these dealing with that 5-5. Five five. Also just continue to develop the board maybe. Can do. Pretty sure. No one is hoping to find a close air support soon here. Um, now, Birdo not going to be deploying anything into that. Wants to make use of the Admiral Hipper um, before allowing him to effectively negate that second Parisi combo. Um, after the court juicy. giving. I think you take the 15 centimeter auto canon. I think so. You're not going to, you, like, yes, you have some countermeasures, but you're not going to find the value from Blom and Voss. Leopold is too far away. I think you take the the 15 centimeter autocanon. I think that's the biggest threat that you can put on the on the board um, post your hip return. Um, you can do it in conjunction with decisive defense um, and and more. So, Yeah, Blom and Voss is having one more HP and stops bombers. So, yeah. mm. But the, I can also see the line picking the auto cannon there, but it's a close one, I guess. Definitely going to see the hipper. Oh, but he throws back the canona. 
But that still means he's going to take two ticks from the second pair of C in the front line. Yeah, that's still five damage, potentially. But no one decides to look for more options here. Yeah, this is a very good option there. Close air support. And this will be huge on three units in the back line there. Ooh, good annihilation. Oh. Birdo can drop a guard and play from the deep. But I think he's also not expecting too many units next turn from Noon. Since it's the perfect setup for close air support or any other yeah. buffing stuff there. Maybe you play the Blominos. It's gonna Blumen be Blominos decisive defense, maybe. Who knows? Alright. Well, it's a it's a it's a decent line of play there, but the finest hour coming out on top of everything else um does have enough credits to both play um closer support and finest hour and attack with all three units in the back line so that's going to be what two four seven damage uh, on units in the back line um can make it seven damage on just the artillery and the bomber um, retreats and value found from the from the deep there for Birdo, and now yeah. Ju eighty eight becomes a very viable option. Did not expect that bounce there. Honestly, would have loved to see close air support and then start chipping away on the Bologna, but maybe it's was not too much. Enough pressure there for no one. And there comes the Blumen boss. Oh my god, another close air support. Yes. That, uh, it's unfortunate though that the close air support, you know, is, is only going to put the Fiat in range to kill the Blumen boss um, and not the, the Swordfish. Yeah. Unfortunate for knowing that is. Yeah, he, he can finest hour. Both, right? Yeah, I mean, he can play finest hour and another closer support. Uh, take out the blum and loss. Um, Looks like he's opting to do that. And, and hits the Bologna Regiment. No. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Both. Yeah, yeah. I'm always forgetting about zero operation cost somehow. And that is a very good board. But Birdo only two turns away from Leopold. Two turns away from Leopold and has an annihilation. Hits the Black Watch. Uh, I mean, decent card for him to hit, but the naval support, that's going to be 9 damage, uh, 11 damage potential right now for no and 5. Two turns for Leopold, it can be an eternity. Nothing the JU-88 is going to stop from attacking because there are no bombers that no and 5 is relying on at the moment. Oh, this is close. Decisive defense could come in clutch here, of course. That does absorb the damage from one attack. Yeah, so not lethal when he's dropping decisive defense, JU. Deciding to go with naval support now. Now, if he drops the JU and a decisive defense, I think I think No One Five is gonna see right through it, right? He's yeah, just yeah. gonna attack with the the uh, he's just gonna attack first. with the Pharisee first and then yeah. go over his head. That's it. Marinostra no longer works when an opponent attacks into it, so that's gonna be game. No in five will now secure himself. Oh, just imagine attacking with the canon first. Yeah, he's gonna secure <laughs> no. himself. The third place of the Officer Club Championship in Puerto Burrito unfortunately walks away in fourth place.
Uh, congratulations to Noah and Five. What an amazing series that was. Uh, I, there's not too much left to say about it. Just both players played tremendously. Um, they swapped aggression and matches back and forth. And in the end, No One Five is our third place uh, finalist here at the Officer Club Championship for September. We'll throw it back on over to yourself and Christo to take us into the uh, prep for the Grand Finals. Booze. That was a heck of a well hard fought bronze match. I, as much as, and, and a huge congrats goes out to No One Five, I have to feel like Birdo still must feel pretty good about that series, knowing he was going up against, you know, one of the, the best players in the world right now after he defeated J King 2 0, then, you know, going to five against No One. He has to feel pretty, pretty good about this performance going towards the world championships at the end of this year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Birdo is, is really a really good player and we all saw how close the series was. Um, five matches, three, two, very close lose there. Um, but yeah, Birdo is, is really a, a phenomenon for me. He's just out of the game for some months and then he just comes back crushing an OCC and yeah, fourth place, still very, very good and, and better than, than most of us have achieved in the game. Um, really impressing beat J King round one that that in itself it's is already an achievement and yeah no one also congrats to rank number three um really we just showed a little bit unfortunate in the in the semi-finals there um but he just showed how good of a player he is how good he can pilot um his decks and yeah good third finish here i think he's he's taking that cash money for for granted, or not for granted, but but he likes to receive it. That's what I want to say. Absolutely, that is, that is a, a well fought series. And you know what? It's funny when Ali and I were talking about the player cards earlier today. You were looking at players with like a seventy percent win rate, and that's wild because you do have so many factors, right? When you're you're matching up against your opponent, you could have bad draws. These things happen, and. Um, you know, having something like that go down against no one in the semis where, you know, came out of that with a loss, but bounced back, won a, a very good series against a very good player, just goes to show that he is very much consistent in the way of being a very strong player. And I think that's going to continue to show as, again, we get towards the, the end of the year in the World Championships, he's proving to be a force to be reckoned with. So uh, we'll be keep keeping our eye on Noen for sure as we continue to go through these OCCs and get towards that World Championship qualifier. In the meantime, why don't we take a quick look at the updated bracket here um, just to, to see where we're at and see exactly what is going on right before we head into our grand final. Um, so Cappuccino versus Jin Lun coming up in just a couple moments. There you see Noen defeating Birdo 3-2 to two in that bronze match. So, um, Spooz, now that we've seen it a few times, going into to that series, you said, okay, Noen has one more chance to show me that this wacky deck is, is actually good. So has he sold you on it? Are you a believer that this deck might actually be worth giving a go? I, I still can't <laughs> tell it, honestly. Uh... I think I have to give it a try myself and just see how it goes, what is possible with it. But it is looking really strange and not how you're used to watch cards matches and, and what your usual opinion about decks is. And I mean, he was quite successful with it. He, he won a few games with it. That proves alone in this competition that this deck is viable, at least. Um, oh, but it's really, if it's really good. Um, I'm not convinced yet, 100%. Fair enough. We'll have to have Ollie run it a few more times after we wrap up the stream <laughs> and see how it plays out. All right, Spooz, I know you're 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 jazzed up for this grand final. I know you've been uh, talking all afternoon, but uh, we got one more for you. We have got Jinlin versus Cappuccino 
for the title of the September OCC champion. Back over to you and Ollie to wrap this thing up. Yes, hello everybody. We are here to bring you the grand finals verse, uh, where we're going to see Jin Lun take on Cappuccino. Cappuccino, they have won once before in an Officer Club Championship, but have been oh so close on multiple occasions. Jin Lun, on the other hand, still searching for their first OCC win. This, much like the semi, uh, the third place match, is going to be a best out of five series. Um, both players having access to all three decks. That means that on the whole, we're going to be having um, you know two Brit Air decks. We're going to have two German decks. We're going to have uh, a Soviet Self Damage deck, and then we're going to have a US mid-range frontline deck um out of these decks spooze what sticks out to you as uh, some of the most entertaining matchups that we could see here entertaining matchups um probably the brit air mirror <laughs> um but i think that speaking about um decks and and matchups here i think that jin lun might have a little Let's call it disadvantage with a German Elite deck that was not too successful today. Um, we saw a lot of loses in the last one, Birdo, in the final match there. And Cappuccino not bringing that deck, but super fast Heinz deck and Brittle Air and US German Frontline deck. I'm quite optimistic that Cappuccino is taking it home today. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's an interesting one. Okay. I think, you know, I think Jin Lun it definitely has a, a chance to take it home um, for themselves, but we'll have to see. I think I think Jinlan has shown us a lot of uh, really good, um, shown us a, a lot of really good plays today. Um, but of course, when it comes to the finals, uh, there's always the matter of nerves, right? You you can never discount nerves. Um, it's also going to be late in the evening for these guys, so. Uh, we'll see. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, take a little bit of a moment and go over the decks for these two players because we do have a couple of moments before we jump into all the action. We'll start with Jin Lun's decks here, and that's going to be his uh, Britain Italy air deck, right? Uh, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing too crazy here, right? Of course, contrary mm -hmm. to. Uh, contrary to the deck there from uh, Noen 5 uh, that featured the artillery units from Italy, there's no such thing being found here. However, there is a Marinostrum um, and a little bit more control, like you have mentioned a couple of times with the Shelling, the Sexton, um, and uh, the Ultra. Um, what do you think? I mean, we didn't get to see these mirror matchup uh, in Berto uh, Noen 5 uh, when they were playing, but which one of these uh, decks do you think is stronger? actually well oh, that's hard to say it, it, it kind of depends on the matchups but i have a feeling that no one's deck is maybe a little bit worse maybe it depends in the mirror it can be better i guess like you have more turn one options and in the mirror it's really important to establish an early board and deal with the stuff that your opponent is deploying um, in other matchups, I think stuff like Shelling and Sexton can be so valuable that, yeah, you cannot really say which deck is better. I just think in a mirror, the no one's variant is a little bit better, but generally Jin Lun's version here should be better against the wide range of decks. All right, then the second deck here from Jin Lun, it's going to be the Soviet Self Damage. But as we have seen him play it today, uh, a couple of things have stood out. One being the Shinodo combo still being in there with the counter offensive. Um, counter offensive not being enough um, as we have seen earlier today. But the Sendai Regiment uh, coming in clutch, however, um, in, in some matches earlier. And I think that's a very interesting addition to have in this deck um, that makes Jin Lun's version of it just a little bit more special. Yeah, it's also... Because usually in this deck you don't have good removal. You have to kill units with your units or like like big units. You Sure, you have uh, stuff like Red Dawn or Red or blood, Bloody Sickle. But the Sendai gives you a good edge on, for example, if your opponent just do, does a big counter offensive and you don't have anything on board, usually you're just screwed then with 
Soviet self damage. But Sendai is a good option to just get rid of this unit. Um, interesting choice and paid out so far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's nothing too impressive. But it's. I, I did not see it um, until it was deployed the first time. Um, so interesting tech there against specific techs, I guess. Then we have the final deck for Jinlun. It is uh, Germany, Italy, uh, very control heavy deck here. We've seen it uh, fall flat a couple of times a day. And you know what? I've realized we haven't seen the 7th Alpini Regiment played once, uh, but we've seen a deck with yeah. it being played a few times. So you're right. Yeah. It's an extremely powerful card, but doesn't seem to find the proper situation to come out in a whole lot of matches, at least not based on what we've seen today. Yeah, we've seen it in, in hand of a player, I guess, but we've not seen it in action so far, unfortunately. Maybe we, the card just waited for the finals to to, <laughs> to shine. <laughs> Some of the people like, I'm not coming out until the finals. Yeah, just try me. My time is in the finals. <laughs> well, uh, we'll see if uh, Jinlin is able to find better success with this deck than uh, what we have seen in uh, many other games today as we swap on over to the deck lists for Cappuccino, starting with a very familiar site there. It's going to be the Britain Italy uh, air deck. Um, slight variation here from what Jinlin is bringing. Um, Cappuccino, they are including the ATS. Um, but apart from that, things are very, very similar across the board here. Yeah. Also, Wellington kind of unique there, but the yeah. rest should be very similar. All right. Now, a very unique deck to Cappuccino, uh, a deck that we have seen perform uh, pretty decently. That is the Super Fast Hines, <laughs> which I, I love as a name for this deck. Um, uh, a tank-based uh, Germany deck with a backup from Soviet in the form of the 554th Rifle Regiment. I guess that is purely aimed at delivering more units into the front line early for a potential early Blitzkrieg, as well as just establishing that control of the front line uh, early on in the game. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. To leave the front line open for your tanks to, to get in there and then play the Fast Heinz or if you have a good shot there already the blitzkrieg early on and then hopefully not too much your opponent can do against it yeah i mean but even even late game wait we, we we it's not even about this combo we saw against known five that this deck can also be strong in late game when you can develop a big board and you just wait and be patient and just kill your opponent later it it's not just too aggressive it is also good in the mid game and late game yeah, I mean, you just have to look at the pure number of tanks, right? It has the, yeah. the Greif, that's what, one, Panzer 2A, that's five, um, Horrible Winds, that's seven, Befelswagen, that's nine, um, Panzer 3L, that's 10, Stug 3, that's 11, Flampanzers, that's 13, Martyrs, that's 15, Panzer 3Fs, that's uh, 17, right? Um, and we don't even get to continue counting all of the things, but it's over 20 tanks, I'll tell you. And the games are afoot. Cappuccino versus Jinlun. And Cappuccino starting off with its with with their last deck that we did not get to review, which is um, still a classic deck. I mean, most people have seen this one, which is a, a, the USA mid-range frontline-based deck. And uh, kind of big difference there is that they're running through the breach. Yeah, and look at this through the breach value right now on this fiat. Through the breach value. Talking about that. But we should definitely make a series out of this when Oli is just counting cards in specific decks. I, I enjoyed it a lot, honestly. You like it? Yeah, it was cool. It's going to be a new podcast, Spooze. Yeah, <laughs> let's do this. Send me your deck list and I'll count the number of tanks <laughs> in them. <laughs> we have 5,000 <laughs> orders. So, well, I like but... that. That's the Red Devils in the front line. Yeah, that is a Red Devils in the front line. And, and uh, you know, going up against Brit Air, that's where you want to be with your units. Absolutely. Also, double 35T definitely helping to get rid of stuff that might come there. Ooh, but seeing the Chelling in Jinla's hand there and Cappuccino going wide with a lot of 1 HP units. Yeah. 
Jin Lun's mouth is watering right now. He's just like, turn five. It's going to be so good. <laughs> None Wait of these... for my turn five. Yeah. Exactly. None of these 30-second infantry are ever going to touch my HQ. <laughs> <laughs> but what is he doing this turn? That's the big question. It's question. a great question. Uh, I mean, four credits, he, he can, of course, populate the board um, with some units. He can play the Swordfish, he can play the Fiat, and he can play the Albacore, um, setting up for a pretty awesome close air support um, in the following turns, especially if he expects to be able to um, do the shelling to take care of the rest of the board. Ops to go for the Finest Hour, take out the Red Devils. I think that's a pretty cool little trick. Um, yeah, it's also going to be... It's going to work also... out extremely well because of the Panzer 35T. They're not going to be able to trade with it. And additionally, Cappuccino cannot play uh, Sherman next turn. So pretty important to take out the Red Devils there. Yeah. And also the shelling clears the whole board right now, which is an additional plus to that play. Flampanzer. There comes the Flampanzer. Yeah. That's, that's Instant shelling. shelling. Instant ever... shelling. Yeah, he has to, especially when your opponent is playing, we can do it. So next turn, Cappuccino could just give all units plus three health, and you really don't want to have that one. Looks like we're going to be seeing a 4-4 into the front line here. I would expect so, yes. Um, pressure being put on. And now Jinlan in a little bit of a sticky situation. Finding the Raft Lightning off the top, though. Excellent pull from him there. Establishing some power on the board and pushing back the 4-4, if he so chooses. I expect so, honestly. Because then he can... He has a potential of next turn... Getting the Flam Panzer, pinning the 4-4. Just giving a little bit more... I don't see any other play here at the moment. Yeah. Keep the swordfish in hand. Good buff for the Empire Strikes later. Yeah. And you don't want to getting eaten by the Flampanzer right now. Yeah. Exactly. You don't want to gift it over for free. Cappuccino found the Sky Train. Really annoying card to deal with. Hmm. He's got also look at the look at the backline control in the hand for Cappuccino there. Stars and stripes and uh, a strat bombing. That oh, man. is huge. Yeah, that is the annoying part about facing US. All these stars and stripes. You cannot really go wide. Usually with Brit Air, you want to establish a wide range of units, buff them with close air support. But knowing that your opponent is playing this order makes it quite difficult to do this. On the gladiator, so a good gladiator swordfish close air support setup here. You can also yeah. think about pinning the flump panzer with albacore and just playing that over the gladiator or over the swordfish. Jinlun uh, wishing that he had the old close air support in hand uh, would have been a plus four plus four onto a, a probably already big body, been a difficult one to deal with, but the new one not quite as effective in creating like that single threat but allows him to go wide but again there is always that backline clear that is waiting in the hand for cappuccino but do expect it to come out in some way or another okay okay also a good line plays around the stars and stripes a little bit better i mean they're still dying but you're not sacrificing three units into it Cappuccino finding the Sherman there um, can opt to draw if they so choose. Um, also has on turn seven the potential combo of first Marines into the front line and then a Sherman. So um, really, you know, a lot of options open there. Can double Panzer 35T clear the back line? Um, pretty much uh, wide open here in terms of what Cappuccino might want to do here. I only expect to... Attack into the Alba core, I guess, with the 35T. Not really too much reasons to get rid of the Rough Lightning. 
other than protecting the four three maybe. But still a lot of stuff left there in Cappuccino's hand. And that we can do it could be pretty big. I mean, if you get a we can do it off on this board, um, you're staring down the barrel of a four six, a four seven, a two five, and a two four. And that's a formidable board to be fighting against when you don't have an established board yourself. Yeah. And also like Empire Strikes is maximum five damage, but then you need four bombers in your support line. And you're still not killing all of his stuff. And yeah, better. But, but yeah, the maximum I can do now is kill one unit. And maybe pin one with the Saxon. Probably going for the Sherman, killing the fifth Rangers. Blowing Gladiator over Swordfish, because Gladiator is dealing damage back. Oh, 99th Infantry Battalion. Excellent pull there for Cappuccino. Allows him to trade really effectively into the Sexton. Um, and keeping and his 35 we can do it if he wants to. Yeah, and play we can do it. That's actually huge. 4-4 four, four in the front line now. That is a dead Sexton and a uh, living 35T. Wow, look at this value. Plus 12 health on your units. And now Jin Lun in all sorts of trouble. Doesn't yeah. have an established board. And looks awful. That is, that is good. I mean, he has the option for a 5 damage uh, Empire Strikes, but... He needs to find the Empire Strikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All these one drops. You don't want to have them now on turn nine. I mean, sure, you need them because this deck consists of mostly one drops. I mean, this makes sense. Uh, Jinlan really had to do something to start clearing some of the threats off the board. There are, of course, two of those buffed units um, that are infantry units or slow to move across the field. But a Hellcat off the top means that uh, Cappuccino is now able to... No, he's not able to trade both because it costs no. four to operate the Sherman. But he's able to um, at least trade out one... Um, potentially push the other two units into the front line, pour on the pressure, and have three units uh, represented there. Also, you know, there are options still in terms of the strat bombing and the stars and stripes, but arguably Cappuccino is just waiting for that final fighter or bomber to drop into the back line so that he can just clear it with a single stars and stripes. But also trade one, drop the sky train maybe, or just push everything. Yeah, put the 99s to the front end. Ooh, sky train's so good. Keeps the bomber away. And Jinnon cannot and kill finds, any of these front end units. And finds a Jasco. I mean, that's not that's not a bad pull. Not at all, no. Cappuccino is just they're sitting pretty right now. They don't. They don't need to worry about anything. Even if, uh, even if uh, Jinlun could go face right now, he would only be taking two damage a turn. Yeah, pretty good find there with the Chesco, to be honest. Wait a minute. Going for the Sky Train for sure. But Wait, why huh? not? Why did he target the? Far right unit. Did he? Did he not? Did not really. He played, he played two close close air supports this turn. Oh yeah, this was a two four gladiator, right? It was. Huh? Maybe um, a misclick there for Jinlun. Makes um, no sense because there's no line for a day where it would make sense. And then really strat bombing now. Dude. That's yeah, that's really strange. Um Oh Monty, good find here. Keep Very good find. Life. Can get for can go for the sky train. 
Stop this constant spawning of new units. Oh, oh my god. Ooh. Double Empire Strikes, that could be big on the and following turn. Still two swordfish in hand. Yeah. Now what do you do? Do you deploy the gladiator, attack with the existing swordfish on board? Um, and then next turn, double swordfish and wipe the board? I don't expect the swordfish to survive on the next turn. But definitely going to kill the sky train. Yeah. Yeah. Two good swordfish, unfortunately, is not enough to get rid of all these four HP units. Can do a little bit of damage, kill three units, but there's that one one that will buff whether the thirty second there or the Sherman. And he another is... Sherman. <laughs> He is able to double Empire Strikes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're right. correct. Yeah, correct. But I mean, that is also putting all your eggs in the one basket. Because there's not a whole lot left of the deck for Jinlun. Yeah, but look at this board. He's kind of forced to do it. He can... No, cannot do Mosquito and then Swordfish. That's also not worth it. Yeah. It, I think it has to be double Empire Strikes. Maybe not double. He can, the Gladiator can still attack, right? Yes. Can leave one Sherman on, maybe. But what do you keep the Empire Strikes for? Like, you don't have any bombers left. This HMS was most... already played, right? Yeah. yeah so. This is going to be the most value that he's able to get out of that. Um, and pushes the Gladiator into the front line. Which is very interesting. He's uh, clearly expecting, you know, something along the lines of a Hellcat, um, and and wants to avoid Cappuccino holding onto the front line. Fourth Rangers, however, will make quick work of that Gladiator. Opens it up for the Hellcat, which will make it across the field and take out one of the Swordfish. Um, expect that to potentially be it. Probably be traded by the Mosquito, um, but. There's also, you know, maybe Raph Lightning Lendlease, but you probably don't want to take the risk of allowing that Hellcat to remain on field. For 20 seconds. Do you even want to bounce this? I mean, it needs to establish a war, right? So it's not just about getting rid of the unit, but also having a body on board. But look at the Stars Thousand Stripes. Stripes. Stars and Stripes really great with Through the Breach. Yeah. I like that synergy. And with this frontline deck, you usually have so much draw with all these Shermans that it's completely worth it. Piracy. No bombers left for the Pharisees. Uh, there's two of them in the deck. None of them have come until now. Well, oh wait, there is the Albacore. There is the Albacore. So you're saying there is a chance. Spitfire will receive Fury um, when it gets deployed. There will be no airplanes on the field from Cappuccino. But also two first marines there left for Cappuccino. Yeah. <laughs> so no attacking HQ allowed. Spitfire is 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 on board there with Fury. Cannot go to HQ. Oh, so this tells me that Cappuccino is only having one Stars and Stripes in the deck. Yeah. And Strat bombing has also been played already. If Brit Air comes back from that again, I'm I'm just mad. I mean, I don't think it's going to Spooz. Do you see Cappuccino is holding on to that Blitzkrieg for next turn? And there's no way. Wait. Really. Kill two units. You can kill two units, yes. Kill two units with the, the second Pharisee proc. Shelling was played, Monty was played. Yeah. Oh, close air support. Ultra. And kill three units suddenly. And yeah, Ultra. And Ultra. Okay. 
So now you can. Okay, so you're saying there is a chance. Maybe. Both players low on cards left in the deck. Jin Lun has a little bit less cards than Cappuccino, I guess. He's attacking first, probably before he puts the close air support, then gets the close air support onto the second pair of C as well. Uh, good ordering there for Jin Lun. Ultra. Okay, okay, and... okay. Both players starting to get low on cards. This uh, this could be a game. This could be a game. I still think Cappuccino, they're yeah. firmly into the in the driver's seat. Um, that's an 8-8 eight, eight into the front line. It's going to be an 11 yeah, attack that's, damage. That's it now. I mean, uh, no. No. Not no. even Ultra is good enough now. It's just enough damage on board. It's exactly 14. He's so, if, if he had like a finest hour and he could blitz out the Spitfire finest hour, make it a 6-6, six, six, make it a 7-7 seven, seven with a Marinostrum and heal for 14, then maybe. You know. <laughs> but hmm. but that's the... not the case nope. uh, unfortunately Jin Lun finds himself getting the short end of that one and Cappuccino they take the lead here 1-0 to zero in the grand finals of the Officer Club Championship for September and we'll see them uh, having to win two more matches in order to clinch the title and the tournament victory Jin Lun undoubtedly preparing how to fight back and how to stop Cappuccino's own Brit Air deck and their uh, their uh, Germany value deck there it is we see Brit Air no no this yeah we see Brit Air from Cappuccino Oh yeah, it's not Germany nope. value. It's no, no. the Germany yeah. super fast Heinz. Sorry, from Cappuccino. Exactly, and Jin Lun's with the Brit Air now. Not the greatest starting end here for Cappuccino. Found the fast Heinz and the Grive, but not any one drop or five hundred fifty fours. And on the other hand, Jin Lun with a decent starting hand here. Double feared swordfish. Oh my god. This should be really hard for beat to beat for Cappuccino. Not that they hard wind. though. Verbal wind because of the whirlwind. Yeah. yeah, the whirlwind and the Grife combo, right? Exactly. That's gonna Verbal be wind can go wind. to the Exactly, it can go to the front line next turn and even attack. And Fiat and not getting plus one, plus one. There's the Befelswagen being procced as well. The Fiat doesn't get the plus one. And every oh. other airplane that's going to get deployed now is going to come in pinned. My god. And then next turn, there's Iron from the North if there's any credits lacking for Cappuccino. But this is just going to be a tough, tough, tough thing. He can't even use the finest hour to do anything. No, he needs to wait one turn. I think the only shot is here to fear Gladiator and hope that he one of them survives and then play Paris next turn. I don't know. It's... Yeah, but I mean, not even then. Yeah, yeah. Like the pin yeah, will come yeah. into effect yeah. and it's going to be pinned on his next turn, right? So yeah. it's going to be pinned as it comes into the field now. And when he plays his next turn, it's still going to be pinned. Yeah, but what else can you do? I mean, he's yeah. I mean, but he's he just has to throw bodies onto the field until Cappuccino has suicided that whirlwind, which is never going to happen. No, and then there's going to be a plus two, plus one on both of those tanks in the front line yeah. right at the start of the next turn. Oh, Actually, make that three one. tanks. Iron from the north, not even needed. I mean, it is needed. The Grife gets buffed additionally now. Yeah. This could be yeah. close to game. This is game next turn. I don't see any out here for Jin Lun. Wow. What Super was fast, Heinz. It's turn three, Spooz. Turn four, lethal. And nothing that Jin Lun can... That was so important for Cappuccino to find the Verbal Wind in the mulligan there. The best card he could have got there. Or they could have got there. Yeah, that's it. 
That is one of the shortest OCC matches I think we have ever seen. Uh, pretty sure, yeah. We had some earlier from Darkness, but that was turn five. That yeah. was a turn three win. And Fast Hines is back, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that start was insane. Grive into Wirbelwind, and from there on, nothing that Jinlun could have done. And now, what do we have left for Cappuccino? The Brit Italy Air. Do we see the mirror now? Or is Jinlun switching? That's the big question here. Do you want to take the mirror? Take your 50 50 shot? Or. Yep, looks yes. like it. Okay. Now, who gets the better starting hand? So uh, Cappuccino, Cappuccino is having three chances now to win with the best deck in the game. If this is not happening, I would be really surprised. Look at that mulligan from, from Jin Lun. He's going first and he has nothing oh, to drop on turn one. What? He's just got a naked heresy and a wrath lightning. Oh, that is awful. Double close air support and not a single airplane. And Cappuccino found Fiat, Gladiator, Paracy, Convoy, everything you need. Yep. Would only be perfect if there would be a close air support in hand. You don't even want to drop the swordfish, really, if you're a Jinlun at this point. I mean, you will do it if you have to. Okay, buffs it with the close air support to try and make it stick a little bit more, but Cappuccino Piracy just comes. responds with Piracy, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, probably you do it. You have two gladiators, but just get rid of this, and your opponent still needs two response to this. Like, every yep. unit that he's deploying now, he just farm it away. Oh, Kitty the Kitty Hawk! That, that is, a good... is a good pull. That is good against the Piracy. Getting rid of the annoying pincer effect. And oh, a Monty as Monty well. Very good here. Could help. It could help them get into the ge the game again, right? Plus an Empire Strikes. That's a decent one to find as well if he's able to pick up some bombers. Um, opting to whether or not he goes for a card draw. I don't know about that. Ooh, close air support found. Yeah, but on curve Spitfire, that's going to be a Fury unit. Yeah, you can. <laughs> what is your. Okay, Lightning is a good way. But there's still. Yeah, now there's, there's the still problem. There's still the pincer. Yeah, that's the problem with not killing the pincer last turn. I mean, I can, I can see the argument that you want to have wider range of cards there that you can choose from. But now you have a problem. You sacrifice your Lightning into a one drop. That is pincered. Just because your opponent is first is, is forcing you to do so. Cappuccino just they just attack with the Paracy into there, the close air support. And now that's seven damage being threatened from the back line. That all just goes face, and then boom goes the dynamite, and just like that. I mean, the Spitfire is going to come out as a, as a bigger unit here for Jin Lun, but it still doesn't change the fact that there's seven damage on board from your opponent. It's all going to go directly to your face, and you're going to have to deal with it. The Kitty Hawk is now absolutely useless because it only hits ground units. Absolutely. And all that Cappuccino needs is one more Swordfish after going face next turn, and then they can finish off their opponent with double Swordfish but and Empire Strikes. The Marinostrum for Jinlun might keep them yeah. alive. It's oh, gonna make okay. it it's so, gonna make it a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's gonna heal for seven. But look, the Ultra. Not with Ultra. He has to read this. He has to read this. If he wants to have yeah. any chance to win this game, he has to first close air support. First close air support, then Marinostrum, then attack. I think the good news is that that is probably the correct way to play this turn. So even if you are not necessarily playing around the ultra, you 
do want to beef up um, that Spitfire more before you uh, Baron Ostrom it. So he's going to be doing it in the correct order. He's going to find the Ultra there. That's going to proc. He's going to sigh, uh, you know, breathe a sigh of relief. Um, Marinostrum, that will take out the 3-3, three, three, I would expect. Second Parasy onto Gladiator Bomber, doesn't matter. Take out the other target. And now the comeback yeah. is on. I'm not sure if I agree with Cappuccino's full going face there. It was lethal anyways. And they could have sacrificed one Gladiator into that 6-6. Six, six. And still had Lethal on board there. And now they just give Jin Nun the comeback chances here. Remember that Spitfire is not going to heal for seven if Cappuccino drops uh, a second pair of C and uh, attacks the Gladiator into it. It is now only when the owner uh, uses it to attack. So Swordfish, that can... Swordfish. Oh, not going for the Empire Strikes. No, he's going to go attack into it. And, and that's probably very much the correct play here. You want to stop the healing from continuing. There's only one Marinostrum in the deck there for Jin Lun. But now the onus is on Jin Lun to keep this up. Yeah, but he had a chance to fully clear the board. Now there's a chance with a lot of close air supports that at least one unit is surviving so far. Mm -hmm. If you Raph Lightning, um, <clears throat> then close air support. No, you 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 Raph Lightning. Uh, so I was thinking, I was thinking, do you want a two three second pair of C, or do you want um, a, a slightly bigger Raph Lightning? Yeah. For a four or five. I mean, since the pair of C is having fury, could I think it was good the way it went. Also have a kitty bar hawk on board now. Yeah. Also found my nostrum here. Cappuccino really waiting for finest hour maybe. And there comes the board clear. There comes the board clear. Down to seven. <clears throat> And... Raph Lightning and Fiat still going to protect the HQ there for Jin Lun. Now we are at the point where whenever Cappuccino top decks Finest Hour, they win. 7 HP is exactly in range of that. Spitfire, Finest Hour is 8 damage. But who needs Finest Hour when you can just... Play that Spitfire and kill your opponent next turn. But that's true. There's it's going to get lightning. bounced, right? It's going to get bounced, but that still means that three damage is able to yeah. slip through. Exactly. The Albacore is not going to hit anything because it can only target ground units. Jinlin going attacking on face here. Yeah, I can absolutely see that one. Because Swordfish is not dying, anyways. And now, you don't want to attack the lightning, so just go face there and... I mean, Mosquito... Yeah, Marinostrum, the Wrath Lightning, that trades effectively into the other Wrath Lightning, or even just going face. Mosquito takes out the other Fiat, now 8 damage being threatened on board, and so much to find here. And Jin Lun does not find it. Cappuccino, they have secured themselves the second OCC victory in their card's competitive career with a decisive... 3-0 victory over Jin Lun, who was not able to find any success and any momentum going with their Brit Air deck. You know, losing against three separate decks on your Brit Air deck, that's a statement from Cappuccino, winning all three games against Brit Air. Pretty impressive. Very impressive. And it showed that Brit Air is not unbeatable, right? Brit Air is, uh, it has its flaws. It can be beat. And Cappuccino just did it three times in the grand finals. Huge props to them. Again, congratulations to Jin Lun, uh, showing uh, consistent performances here in the OCCs, really uh, putting their name up there as, as potential 
uh, competitors nearing the world championship showing that they can hang with the best but just falling short here in the grand finals all right with that <laughs> our matches have concluded today and we'll throw it over to myself and crystal to say your say goodbye to you guys i uh i wow i mean we had such great hard fought height matches leading up to that grand final and then i think you said it best at the end you run into all right here's my bird air whatever it's just gonna go through it's gonna get that win but that's not always the case you can't just assume that it's gonna happen and that that's gonna be good enough and i think we saw a great example there of cappuccino just pulling out all the stops and playing an excellent series to take the win and the september title absolutely um i mean cappuccino they played that finals flawlessly right um I mean, they had fast decks, really fast decks, right? They had the super fast Heinz that was over in super three turns. Heinz. It was over in four turns, right? It was crazy. Um, it was even before, like, an airplane could be established. And I mean, sure, like, running into the Whirlwind there off the Mulligan, but, but that shows the power of the Whirlwind, right? Like, you have the Whirlwind, you can absolutely shut down Brit Air, right? Absolutely insane. Then... They have access to the the uh, U.S. mid-range deck, right? And that was just relentless pressure, and it was able to keep up with the pressure from Brit Air. Again, good draws, you know, all that stuff. But at the same time, it shows that both of those decks have the potential to beat Brit Air. Then in the mirror matchup, um, Cappuccino just um, had way better cards. I mean, like, there's there's no other way of, of, of saying it, right? Jinlun did their best. They, they played pretty well through the different um, through the different draws that they were getting. They were able to uh, mount a slight comeback with that Marin Ostrom onto that Spitfire. But in the end, they had to expend so many resources just to claw back into the game that it was Cappuccino's game to lose at that point, and uh, they did not. So a 3-0 decisive victory for Cappuccino. Jinlun taking second and no one five claiming that third place uh, spot um, after that hard fought series with with Birdo. And yeah, we have ourselves a successful and exciting September OCC championship and a new OCC champion uh, claiming, you know, their stake within the, the high level competitive uh, field. And if we look at the bracket, we can also see that, you know, Cappuccino, they did not take a, an easy path through the bracket. We talked about it at the very start of today's show. You know, this is a, a really powerful field that we had playing here today. Most of these players have been in multiple OCCs before. They've been in, in open finals. And Cappuccino had to take on Vinny, um, barely scraping by that series 2-1. to one. Then had to take on Noen 5, barely scraping through that one 2-1. to one. And then showing up to the grand finals and absolutely wiping the floor with their opponent and playing out of their mind to say you know what i'm not just a first round player i'm not just a second round player i'm a finals player and uh, that is a, a statement uh, so close to the the world championship yeah i think you nailed it there so a couple things first off uh, mark theus is whispering in my ear that this is the uh, second occ finals in a row with uh, a 3-0 with with posting up a, a shutout there. So a uh, strong play by Cappuccino. And I think, you know, we're coming into that time of year. Like you said, you got Darkness coming back, getting warmed up for the World Championships. You have Cappuccino, really, you know, somebody who's been here before, but isn't necessarily as consistent maybe as some of the other players saying, hey, I got a shot at this. I'm here. You had Noen and Birdo both showing why they are top players right now in that bronze match, which was maybe the series of the whole tournament. And then you have Jinlin coming in back-to-back -back OCCs, making it to the finals this time around. That's a great story as well. So I think everybody's absolutely ramping up here at the right time to get to the world championships because that's coming up in, in what, two and a half months at this point? Yeah, um, you know, we got the October OCC, we got the November OCC, uh, we have one more open as well. Um, that's going to be sprinkled in between all the different qualifiers for the World Championship. So, um, you know, to, to get involved in competitive cards right now, it has a lot of activity, a lot of fun, and a lot of excitement coming everyone's way. And I... I keep just uh getting more and more excited about what our players are going to be cooking up uh how they're going to perform and what the meta will look like as we get closer to the world championship right i mean there's there's sure to be a, a couple of uh you know uh, new cards there's going to be some patches and we're going to see if if 
if the meta goes the similar way that it has pretty much always gone as it, we get closer to the world championship where it becomes a little bit more control heavy a little bit more like let's reduce variance and give myself the highest win rate here not just the fastest deck but we have so many highly efficient aggressive decks out there in the game at the moment that you know theory crafting around them and creating control decks that are able to beat them it's going to be tough so uh th that's going to be a battle that that i'm looking forward to see play out both in game in competition and everywhere else leading up to the world championship Absolutely. And I think today was a great example of how understanding, knowing, or even predicting the meta can be to your advantage. You had Cappuccino who figured, you know what? Brit Air is back. People are going to be bringing it. I'm going to be bringing it. That means my other two lists, if I want to win this all, have to be able to get by. And yep. you said it at the, at the start of this segment, right? You've got two decks that can kind of rush in the super fast Heinz. Then you've got that US mid-range deck that can still sneak in underneath Brit Air. So if you can kind of have a little bit of foresight into what that meta is going to be, if you can guess right and you can bring lists that can really take advantage of it, you um, you know, you're, you're in a really great spot. And then, as you mentioned, you have that opposite side of things as well, where you can decide, I want to take a lot of this variance out. I'm just going to go nice, solid control decks that are going to be ready for everything um, and, and try and go that direction. You know, you have the players like J King who are typically going more on that side. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see which players kind of go out there and try and guess the meta and try and get ahead of the game and the other ones that will rely on things that they are very comfortable with, very strong with, uh, to try and push through these final tournaments and lead to the world championship. So it's going to be, I mean, if, if today was any, any indication, it's going to be a phenomenal couple months of competitive cards coming up here to round out the end of the year. Absolutely. Um, I purely, I, I fully expect that to happen fully expect that to happen and we have competitive players we have players that feel like they haven't been posting the results that they wanted to post um they're going to be fighting tooth and nail as well and uh it's all going to culminate there um and the world championship the first weekend of december and i couldn't be more excited Excellent. Well, Ali, I just have one last question for you before we sign off here. Um, so when when are we kicking off this uh, Ali's going to count your tanks segment? Because uh, <laughs> I mean, that that's just it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Send me send me your deck list and I'll, I'll count the tanks. I'll, re I'll, I'll reply to you with how many tanks are in that list. Uh, you know, Ali counts tanks. Spoons counts <laughs> raccoons. It's going to be great. It's going to be the best podcast online. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you all for tuning in to the September Officer Club Championships. Cappuccino, congratulations. The big win. Jin Lin finishing second. No in five, finishing third. That is your podium for this month from Spooz, from Ollie, from myself. Thank you all for tuning in and have yourself a wonderful rest of your weekend.